Good morning and welcome to day two of the Main Ring programme at Crufts 2024. Today we start with part one of the most important and prestigious global finals, the Joe Cartledge International Junior Handling Competition. This year we have 36 finalists from all corners of the world. We have three more than last year. All junior handling champions are in their own countries and we can't wait to see these young handlers showcase their natural handling ability in this fantastic main ring setting. Before we meet each finalist and begin part one, it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce into the ring the organizer and brainchild behind this historic competition, Mrs. Liz Cartledge, and she is escorting our judge, Aroni Dudines, into the ring from the Netherlands. Now, Roni has been involved in the dog world for 40 years and started competing as a junior handler himself with his Finnish Spitz. He awards CCs in 46 breeds in the UK, but is well known as an FCI all-round qualified judge too, and has judged at some of the world's biggest shows, such as the World Dog Show and European Dog Shows. He's used to organizing dog shows with his role as CEO at the Dutch Kennel Club and is also spotted regularly commentating and presenting in the main arena. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, put your hands together for our judge, Roni Dudines. So let's meet this year's finalists in order of the countries they represent, starting with, from Australia, Diana Mussolino. From Belgium, Laura Duvos. Representing Bulgaria, Samuel Bonin. And all the way from Canada, Laurence Giga. Representing the Czech Republic, Sara Malinova. <laughs> Representing Denmark, Sarah De Angelis. <laughs> Coming from Estonia, it's Gerda Wunsch. Representing Finland, Jonas Sotala. The competitor from France is Sarah Duchelieu. And coming from Germany, we have Alexandra Yunov. <laughs> Representing Greece, this is Effie Sezenia. <laughs> Representing Hungary, Greta Straub. Representing Iceland, Freya Rumen Stotia. <laughs> Coming
Coming from Ireland, this is Molly Mullen. Representing Israel, Liri Sokolovsky. And now representing Italy, it's Cecilia De Bella. And in the red, we've got from Japan, this is Yuha Tamura. And now representing Latvia, Alice Semeta. Representing Lithuania, Dia Maxima Vichuta. Representing Malta, Mariah Manicado. Representing Monaco, Nicole Zaza. Representing the Netherlands, Soleil Halkershoven. And coming from all the way from New Zealand, Jacob Ashwell. Representing Norway, Mimi. Indina Nielsen. And representing Poland, Zosia Raboy. Coming from Portugal, we have Maria Flores Ribeiro. Representing Romania, this is Alexandra Ambrush. And representing Slovakia, Daniela Nematova. Representing Slovenia, Nikita Rehak Frisch. All the way from South Africa, we welcome back Anita Schumann. <laughs> Representing Spain, this is Adriana Sanchez Natividad. Coming from Sweden, this is Nelly Podlingski. And coming from Switzerland, our youngest competitor, Nora Sorta. representative from Ukraine, Katerina Velichenko. <laughs> Representing the United Kingdom, it's Paige Hughes. <laughs> and our last competitor is representing the USA, Octavia Stenson. <laughs> so
So what a fantastic lineup of young handlers we have here. Now, while our judge has taken his first look at these finalists, I'd like to take this opportunity to explain a little more about this competition. Junior handling is a competition for young handlers up to the age of 18 years of age. Unlike the rest of crafts, where the judge is assessing each dog in the breed competition against its conformation and movement to a kennel club breed standard, the nature of this competition is slightly different. The purpose of this sport is to judge the handler's presentation and connection with their dog and abilities to cope in a show-like situation. The judge is assessing the handler and not the dog. He will be looking for the handler that gets the best out of the dog's performance, attempting to minimize the dog's faults and highlighting its best features ensuring the dog is gated at the correct speed for its breed and standing the dog in a way that suits the breed of dog. Now what is even more impressive is that these young handlers are all performing with dogs they met just one hour ago. So to keep it fair, they're all in the same situation, a new dog, a large ring, and a big stage to perform. On behalf of Liz and the rest of the organizers, I would like to personally say a huge thank you to the owners of these extremely well-trained and well-tempered dogs to lend them for the final today. Please give our dog lenders a massive round of applause. So that leads us nicely into meeting each and every competitor. This is Diana Mussolino from Australia. She's 17, and this is her first time competing here at Crufts in this final. At home, she lives with two Shetland Sheepdogs, and she started showing dogs at the age of three. And she started going into the all-breed ring when she was seven years old and started her junior handling career. She says she's always had a deep love for dogs and showing dogs has become a major part of her life and she loves every minute of it. As well as the experiences that she's accounted along her journey and she says she's made lifelong friendships. She's recently graduated from year 12 and will be going on with further studies in business and accounting. And when she's not showing her dogs, she loves to spend time with her family and friends, as well as doing some cooking. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Diana Mussolino from Australia. So here's the representative from Belgium. This is Laura De Vos, and she's 14 years old. She's chosen to handle a standard poodle today, but at home she has three golden retrievers. She started showing and handling dogs only just two years ago because her mother was showing her own dog and she wanted to participate with her, her Australian Shepherd from friends at the junior handling competitions. So she loved it so much, it became her new passion, and she qualified for the final today. She's at high school in her third secondary school, and she's doing Latin and maths. And her favorite subject is biology. She wants to be a vet when she grows up. So our judge, Roni Dudines from the Netherlands, in my introduction, I explained he was a junior handler himself. And he's asking the junior handlers to do a triangle. So you can see all three sides of 
the handlers movement. So ladies and gentlemen, that's Laura De Vos from Belgium. Now we come to Samuel Bonin. He's represented Bulgaria. So he's 14. And he's one of only three male handlers that we have in this competition this year. He's handling a Grand Basset Griffon Vendillon. And he says he's really, really proud to be here. He's made it into the final before. And he came to the, he went to the split summer night dog shows in 2021 and reached the final of the junior handling contest there. He has two dogs at home and English Cocker Spaniels. And since the age of 11, he's been attending the Young Dog Handlers Club in Sofia, where he trains every week. He also competes in Canny Cross as well. And at home, he also has a cat, six parrots, and a hamster. He's been playing the piano for eight years and he's also a competitor at a basketball club. Ladies and gentlemen, Samuel Bonin, representing Bulgaria. So this is now Canada. This is Laurence Giga. And she's 18. She's chosen to handle a Portuguese water dog. At home, she has four clumber spaniels. She's been showing for over 10 years and started handling dogs because she saw a junior handling competition and competed the next day and fell in love with the hobby. She's in her last year of college. Her favorite subject is maths, because she says it makes her work a lot. She loves solving maths problems. And she also loves history. She loves learning about Canadian and other countries' pasts. She wants to be a lawyer when she grows up. So that's the representative from Canada, Laurence Giga. So now we have the representative from the Czech Republic. This is 15-year-old Sara Malinova. Sarah has four dogs at home, one medium silver poodle, uh, two toy poodles, and an English Springer. She's handling an English Springer Spaniel here today. We're very thankful to our dog lenders. This particular owner has brought four Springers today. I'm very lucky to have great supporters of this competition. She started to show her dogs at the age of 10 at club shows and junior handling and gradually started to go into breed judging. She says she loves having a special relationship with dogs. And she says every dog is a challenge and an experience that you can't refuse. And she says every dog is different and she likes to look for their sense and feel in each dog. At home, she does do agility with all her dogs and dog dancing or hoopers and canny cross. And she's also training her springers for field trials and she loves that too.
She's in elementary school in the Czech Republic and in ninth grade. Her favorite school subjects is the Czech language, projects and biology. That's Sara Malinová from the Czech Republic. And now here is Denmark. This is Sarah De Angelis. It's Sarah's birthday today. She's 18 today. She's representing Denmark. And this is her second time in the final. She was here last year and she handled a Persenji. This year she's chosen to handle a pointer. At home, she has Persenjis and Beagles. She's been showing dogs for eight years and was inspired by her older sister, Maya, who has also been her mentor throughout the junior handling years. So she's equivalent to year 11 in high school at the moment, and her main courses are biology and chemistry, and her favorite subject is English. And she'd also like to become a vet when she's older. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Sarah De Angelis from Denmark. And here we have on the table the miniature schnauts are being shown by Gerda Runsch. She's representing Estonia. She's 17. She has two dogs at home, an Alaskan Malamute and a Swedish Valand. But one of her choices to handle today was a miniature schnauzer. She's also handled miniature schnauzes in her home country. And little by little, as she was growing up, she started to expand her knowledge of other dog breeds. She's got a cat at home, and she's studying in high school in the 10th grade. She loves studying languages, especially Estonian and Spanish. and also enjoys history, literature, and biology. So it says here that she's also inter interested in producing and production. We'd love to do that in the future. Perhaps we could have her some work experience here at Crafts next year, work in the main arena. She says that she'd love to be involved in the show world as per part of her life. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Gerda Funch representing Estonia. So in front of the table now, we have Jonas Sotala. This uh, is he who's representing Finland, and he's handling this Australian Shepherd. At home, he has one miniature bull terrier and one American Staffordshire Terrier. This is his first time in the final. Uh, he's chosen to handle an Australian Shepherd. This one's called Basil. I think he's got girls on the brain. The dog, I mean. <laughs> and uh, so Jonas's favorite subjects at school are physical education, 
Woodworking and History. When he grows up, he says he'd like to be an entrepreneur in the trade industry. Jonas in his free time, he loves to play football and go to the gym. Representing Finland as Jonas Sotala. I think Roni is really spoilt for choice this year. It would be incredibly difficult to separate all these handlers. Everyone's doing such a fine job. Now on the table we have our representative from France. This is Sarah Duchelieu. So this is her second time in the final. She actually made it into this final six years ago in 2018 and she actually represented Monaco. She doesn't have a dog directly at home, but her grandparents have Shetland Sheepdogs, and that's why she's chosen a Shetland Sheepdog here today. And I don't believe that we've had many Shetland Sheepdogs uh, chosen for use in these finals. We get lots of popular breeds, like Pointers and Australian Shepherds, but it's lovely to see such a beautiful Sheltie here today, so thank you to our dog lenders. So she does agility at home as well. She's got a cat and a horse, and she's been riding as well since she was little. Sarah's favorite subject is maths. And she'd like to open an owner's equestrian center when she's older. And she also likes to go out walking in the mountains around where she lives. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Sarah Duchelieu representing France. Is the ever wagging tail of the Labrador Retriever. So, handling this dog is Alexandra Yunov from Germany. She's 18. She's got two Labradors at home. So she'll feel really quite happy with this happy chappy that she's been lent today. At the age of 11, she started to show dogs. And she really liked to spend time training dogs. And she wanted to learn how to, it says here, expose her dog, but I know what she means. She means just learn how to train dogs and learn more about them. So she's two years into her apprenticeship for her training as a draftsman specializing in architecture. Maths and physics were her favorite subjects. And she says she can solve equations calculate the strength and weight of certain objects. That'll certainly come in handy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Alexandra Yunov from Germany. So representing Greece, this is Effie Sezenia. She's 15 and is showing a border collie. So her parents are breeders of boxers and at the moment they've got five boxers in their house. And dog handling's been a part of her life since 2017. And she says, ever since she participated in dog shows, it's just become a love and interest that she intends to foster. 
She trains dogs and has the opportunity to participate in seminars and talk with experts regarding dog handling and grooming. Her favorite subjects in school are maths and physics. And when she grows up, she, because of her love saw for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, so STEM, she wants to be a mechanical engineer. So that's Effie Cizenia with the Border Collie representing Greece. So back on the table now, we have Greta Straub. She's representing Hungary, and she is 16 years old. She has two miniature schnauzers at home, and she's chosen to handle one here today. Remember, for those of you who have just joined us or are watching live at home, all these handlers only met these dogs at half past seven this morning. They don't live with these dogs, they don't know these dogs, and they're now handling them at the greatest dog show in the world in the main arena at Crufts. They've had to build a bond with their dog. So she's been handling for four years, and she also takes part in rally and obedience. She's in year 10 at high school and enjoys history and Hungarian literature because she likes learning about the past and reading poems. Her main aim is she'd like to be an attorney. Besides showing dogs, she likes hiking and walking, but of course, only when she's doing that with her dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Hungary, Greta Straub. So on the table now, we have the representative from Iceland. This is Freya Grumenstotja. Freya is 17. And this is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final at Crufts. At home, she has one Bichon Frise with her family. Freya started showing dogs when she was nine years old. She's very lucky to have had the opportunity to be around dogs all of her life. Her grandparents breed Tibetan Spaniels and she chose one to use today in this final. She loves horses and going horseback riding and she's in her second year of college with biology being her favorite subject. Her dream is to work with animals in the future. And she says she loves working out, hiking, and also spending time with her friends. And she's got lots of lovely support today. That's Freya Grumenstotje from Iceland. So the representative from Ireland is Molly Mullen. 
She's 14 years old and she's handling a Bracco Italiano. At home in Ireland, Molly lives with seven Cocker Spaniels. And she started handling around five years old at local agricultural shows. And she said she soon got a passion for it. She's loved dogs all of her life. And she started competing professionally about five years ago. And she says she just fell in love with dog showing. She loves to do agility at home with her Cocker Spaniels. And she also has two cats. She's in year 10 at secondary school and her favorite subjects are technology and art. Because she says she loves to create things. She loves to play Gaelic and ride horses in her spare time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Molly Mullen representing Ireland. Now coming from Israel, this is the representative and it's Liri Sokolovsky. She's 15 and this is her first time in the final. And she chose and she asked or requested for a standard poodle to compete in the competition today. But at home, she has 15 dogs. She has Labradors, Welsh Corgis, Pembrokes and a Jack Russell. She's been showing for about 10 years. And she started showing because her mother was showing them and she wanted to. She's also taken part in agility as well. And she's in 10th grade of high school. Her favorite subjects are biology and history, which she says both are very interesting to her. And she wants to be a vet. She loves to bake. She also loves to spend time with her friends and family, and of course, walk or play with her dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the representative from Israel, Liri Sokolovsky. When you gotta go, you gotta go. So, on to our next representative. This is Cecilia De Bella. And she's representing Italy, and she's 16. She's decided to not handle an Italian breed, but a Spanish breed. This is the Spanish water dog. Because she has two Spanish water dogs at home as well. She started showing dogs in 2019 because her dad, who had already shown his boxes, decided to enroll her Spanish water dog to a show. So she said she'd like to thank her dad who opened up a new world to her. I know the feeling. So she trains her dogs at home with her dad and she also learns obedience. She also has a black cat, a Maine Coon breed called Silvestro. She's in the second year of grammar school. 
and a favourite subject is definitely ancient Greek because she says it opens her mind and even relaxes her. And another subject she loves is Italian. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Cecilia De Bella from Italy. Representing Japan is 15 year old Yuha Tamura. She has three dogs at home a standard poodle, a miniature poodle, and a to toy poodle. And today she was given a standard poodle as one of her choices. When she started handling, she was in the fourth grade and she said she got into it because she watched her cousin handle dogs. Her favorite school subject is PE. She says she loves to exercise. And I'm sure she'll need that when she runs around the ring with this lovely poodle. She says she wants to obtain the handling license and grooming license to become a professional and continue to participate actively in the dog shows. It's brilliant to see that a lot of these dogs are having so much fun in this ring because these handlers are performing so, so well with them. So, well done. To all of these handlers, you're doing a fantastic job. Representing Japan, that's Yuha Tamura. Now on the table, representing Latvia, it's Alice Sumeta. She's 15 years old, and this is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final. At home, she has two Basenjis. She said about eight years ago, her first Basenji was brought into their family. And eventually, she said it was her inner passion for dogs and connection to this first Basenji called Panda that made her realize that she wanted to start attending classes for juniors. She does uh, compete with agility and also started attending nose work classes with her dogs. I'm sure nose work, it's written here as nose work, but I'm sure she means scent work. It's probably a translation. <laughs> And she's in middle school in the eighth grade. She says she's really passionate about traveling. Well, that does bode well if you get involved in dog showing. And she loves doing sports such as ice skating, skiing, snowboarding, and swimming. Representing Latvia, Alice Simeta. So we're just over halfway now. We're on handler number 19 of 36. So this is now Dia Maxima V. Tutor. She's from Lithuania and she's 16. She's handling a Portuguese water dog today. This is her second time in the final. She competed in the year 2020 when she was 12 years old. At home, she has four dogs. She's got three Spanish water dogs and a miniature schnauzer. She's been showing dogs 
since she was eight years old. She said her mum was a breeder and was always involved in dog showing. So at one of the shows, her and her sister noticed junior handling competitions and they decided they'd like to try it. And they've been doing it ever since. So at home, she also has a Canadian Sphinx. I think that's a cat. <laughs> and she enjoys taking walks with her dogs, enjoys swimming and teaching them new skills. She's currently in 10th grade at Catholic school. And her favorite subject is biology and maths. And she's interested in becoming a lawyer. <laughs> Representing Lithuania, Dia Maxima Vichuta. And now we have the representative from Malta. This is Maria Manicaro. She's 18 years old. And we saw Maria here in this international final last year. She's back this year, this time handling a border collie. We've got three border collies competing in this final this year. And at home, Maria has around 15 dogs. She has beagles, Basenjis, Border Collies, and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. So she'll feel right at home with this one. I think this one's called Stan. I'm really grateful to all of our dog lenders. So she started showing dogs at the age of 12 has been involved in the dog scene since she was 10 years old. She lives on a farm with her family and also they have sheep, goats, llamas and ponies. And Mariah's brother and her compete in local sheep shows as well. She's in her final year of post-secondary school and then she'll be off to university. So representing Malta, that's Mariah Manicaro. So here we have the representative from Monaco. This is Nicole Zaza and she's 17 years old. This is her first time in the final, and she's decided to handle an Australian Shepherd. I think this one's called Mango. So at home, she has one dog, an English Cocker Spaniel. She's been showing dogs for 10 years, and her first breed was the Pyrenean Mastiff. She's a high school student of human sciences. She's in her fourth year. And her favorite subject is English. Because she says it's a language that fascinates her a lot. For now, she's still not sure what to do when she grows up, but was thinking of enrolling in Criminology University. Nicole really enjoys going out with her friends and listening to music. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Nicole Zaza from Monaco. And so moving on to number 22 out of 36 of these amazing handlers. So this is 
representative of the Netherlands, Solé Halkushoven. She's 13 years old. And at home, she lives with 15 Petit Basset Griffon Vendion, the Grand Basset Griffon Vendion, and Wire Fox Terriers. She said she started showing dogs when she was literally a baby. Her mother would take her to the dog shows, and she started showing as soon as she could walk. She says she looks up to her mother and her aunt, and she doesn't know what's going to happen in the future, but one thing she knows is that she wants to be like them when she's older. She says her own dog's at home. She can do lots of tricks with them. And she has two horses, and she loves doing horse riding as well. And she has cats and chickens. Sounds like a very full life in the Netherlands. And she's in secondary school, year eight. Ladies and gentlemen, handling an Airedale Terrier from the Netherlands, Soleil Halkershoven. So we're now on to New Zealand. This is Jacob Ashwell. Lovely to see another male competitor in this competition. We only have three boys in it this year. I think Jacob made quite an impression yesterday in our lovely afternoon tea. But welcome, Jacob. He's 17. So this is his first time in the final. He's handling a pointer at home. He also has English pointers in New Zealand. He's also got three Dalmatians and two Rottweilers. He started showing at the New Zealand Young Kennel Club handling competition with his Dalmatian called Sid when he was about five years old. Well, he did well at five with a Dalmatian, they're strong. <laughs> showing is a family tradition though. He's a third generation dog show handler with his mum, stepdad, and both sets of grandparents showing dogs. His mum tells him that he attended his first show at just weeks old. He's just finished high school, year 12. He loves business studies, economics, and geography. He, likes, he wants to own his own gym, health, and fitness business. So all the way from New Zealand, that's Jacob Ashwell. He's 17. And now we have Norway. Norway is represented by Mimi Indina Nilsson. And she's 17 years old. This is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final. And here is the English Springer Spaniel that she's handling. At home, she has two dogs, an Icelandic sheepdog and a long-haired miniature sh Daxent. She started showing in junior handling competitions about five years ago. And she's also been involved in blood tracking, so I'm, I'm assuming that's some sort of scent work, and agility with her Daxent. She's in her first year of high school in Norway, and she's studying media and communications. She enjoys English and media subjects. And she says she'd like to become a breeder and work as a journalist. She enjoys mountain hiking, going to the gym, and of course, hanging out with her friends. Representing Norway, Mimi Indina Nielsen.
So here we have Poland. Poland is represented by Zosia Raboy. Zosia is 14 years old. And this is her first time competing at Crufts in this final. She chose to handle a Siberian Husky. At home, she has two Basenjis. She's been handling for three years. She goes to secondary school. She loves maths because in her words, she says maths describes the world. She also likes biology because it helps her understand behavior of dogs. And she hasn't quite decided what she'd like to do when she's older, but she says she'd like to take care of people or animals. I think that sounds like a good career. She usually spends time, lots of time doing her homework, but when she has a little free time, she likes reading a good book or watching an interesting TV series. Well, after this week, she'll have plenty of Channel 4 and More 4 coverage of Crafts to Watch. And there's 15 hours of coverage this year broadcast. That is Poland, represented by Zosia Raboy. So we have 10 handlers left. Let's meet Portugal. Portugal is represented by 14-year-old Maria Flores Ribeiro. She made it into last year's final as well. She was here last year. And this year she's decided to show a English Springer Spaniel. At home, she has 10 dogs, five basset hounds, three chihuahuas, and a golden retriever. She started showing with th around three years old. She says she remember handling a French bulldog. She says her parents are professional handlers, and she's been going to dog shows ever since, since she was a child with them, and her older brother. You might see him. He won this competition a few years ago with an English Springer, funnily enough. She's in public school in, in her ninth year. And her favorite subjects are science and PE. She loves everything concerning animals and she says she loves to exercise. Now this is a new one. She wants to be a sea biologist. I'll have to talk to her after about that. She said she'd like to study and save the sea animals. So off she goes from Portugal. That's Maria Flores Ribeiro. to Romania. This is Alexandra Ambrush. So she was in this final last year. She also handled a pointer and she's chosen to handle a pointer this year. And she's 15. Well, she's 14 actually. I know the screen says 15. We're just slightly out. And she has three dogs at home. She is the Dachshund and Shiba Inu. She's been competing as a junior handler for four years. She's in eighth grade of college. And she enjoys studying about the German language. She also likes maths and physics. She'd like to be a vet when she grows up.
In her spare time, she loves to snowboard and play basketball. So representing Romania, that's Alexandra Ambrish. So on the table now is the representative from Slovakia, Daniela Nemetova. So she's 17 and this is her first time competing here at Crufts in this international final. She's chosen to handle a petit basset Griffon von Dion. And at home she has three dogs, two small dogs and one Brazilian Terrier. She started showing in 2017 when she was 10 years old. She was introduced to shows by her father's long-term friend who breeds and shows American Staffordshire Terriers. And she talked her into trust trying it and giving it a go. And then she became fully committed to shows and learning about the dog community. She also competes in obedience. Although she's not at a professional level right now, she says, but she's getting ready for it. She's in third grade at high school. And her favorite subjects are chemistry and biology. She also wants to be a marine biologist or work in a laboratory as a chemist. She also loves cars and motorsport and is a big fan of Formula One. So that's from Slovakia, Daniela Nemetová. So on to Slovenia. Meet Nikita Rehark Frisch. This is Nikita's first time in this final at Crufts. And she has seven dogs at home, all have a knees. But she requested an American Cocker Spaniel to show in this competition. And this is the one that she has been given and she was met this morning, just like all the other handlers, met their new dogs just this morning at half past seven. We're so grateful to all the dog lenders who have come to the show today. Some of them might be showing on other days, some might not be showing at all and have come all the way to Birmingham to bring their dogs for our handlers. It's, we are so thankful for them. So Nikita, she's loved dogs since she was a little girl. She started showing when she was 11. She's got two cats and a hamster at home and she's in the first year of vet school. She loves studying foreign languages, especially the English language. And perhaps she can teach me a thing or two about how to pronounce her name correctly, but I think I got there in the end. She'd love to be a dog groomer and a dog handler. And she loves riding horses, playing piano and boxing. That's the representative from Slovenia, Nikita Rehark Frisch. So moving on to South Africa. We meet Anita Skuman. 
she was here last year and she competed with a Boston Terrier. She's gone for a different breed and it's a golden retriever. We've only got one golden retriever competing in this final this year. And funnily enough, we, the dog that's been lent, I think is from Croatia. <laughs> so it's not a British dog. But we're so grateful to the lovely dog lender to bring the golden retriever because there's 500 golden retrievers entered today and it was very difficult to get one to come and compete in this final. But this is Anita and she's been handling dogs since she was two years old. And she was in fancy dress with, when she handled her Rottweiler. But she started child handling when she was six years old at an open show. And then when she was eight, she started showing at championship level. She's got other pets at home, a cat and a Jack Russell. She's in year three in her school, going to be in year four soon. She loves studying English at school. It's her second language. Obviously, she's African speaking, and she's a language she'd like to learn for the future. That's Anita Schumann from South Africa. <laughs> On to Spain. This is Adriana Sanchez Natividad. She's 15 years old, and this is her first time in the Crufts Junior Hand of the Year final. And she has four dogs at home, two standard poodles, one miniature poodle, and one dachshund. So she's handling a miniature poodle here. We're very grateful to our poodle dog lenders because there's so much work to put into getting a dog a breed of this breed presented for this final we're really really grateful for the lending of all these beautiful poodles so adriana has been showing dogs for five years because her father is a breeder and a professional handler she loves to go horse riding as well she goes to public school and high school she loves art she says she'd like to continue the work of her father and work with dogs and she likes to go to the gym and have fun with her friends So there is the representative from Spain, Adriana Sanchez Natividad. Just five handlers left with 22 minutes to go. So this is Sweden. Sweden is represented by Nelly Podlinski. Nelly is 18 years old. This is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final. She has three dogs at home. Two that are Bernese Mountain Dogs and one Shetland Sheepdog. She says when her family started showing, she wanted to be part of the fun too. So she started to compete in child with dog competitions. And then she found out there was junior handling instead. And so there was nothing else, there's more she wanted to do. She started handling in competitions at 11. She trains agility with her Sheltie and she's even gone to a few competitions. They've also got a cat. But she says here, there's not, much, not many activities you can do with a cat. <laughs> this is why we have dogs. 
She's attending the second of three years of uh, Swedish school, and she's studying a media program with focus on photography and film. She's another one that says she loves traveling. Well, she's traveled a long way from Sweden, and it's lovely to see her. Welcome 18-year-old Nelly Podlinski from Sweden. And here on the table is the representative of Switzerland. This is Nora Sorter. She's the youngest competitor in this year's final. She's just 11 years old. I haven't seen her anything but smile since she got here. I think she's really enjoying herself. She's handling a black miniature schnauzer. So at home, she has far five barbets and she said that she started becoming involved in dog showing three years ago she's fascinated of animals in general and especially dogs she's seen her mother train in the ring and she said she'd really like to do the same so it's brilliant that she's here She also has three rabbits and two chickens. <laughs> Again, she says here, they are like friends to her, but she doesn't do any sports with them. <laughs> I don't think you probably do much sports with rabbits and chickens. So she's in fifth grade at primary school, and her favorite subjects are German and PE. And she'd like to become a kindergarten teacher and educate little children in how to treat animals. Congratulations, and it's nice to see you. The youngest competitor from Switzerland, Nora Suter. So we welcome Ukraine. Katerina Velichenko, and she's 18 years old and handling this whippet. This is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final. And at home, she has two miniature schnauzers and a long coat chihuahua. She's been involved in dog handling from a young age. She says her mother is a breeder of German Shepherds, and so she used to go to the dog shows with her. She's in the first year of university, uh, studying political geography. And she's interested in analyzing the political problems of different countries around the world. And uh, we really enjoyed her speech at the afternoon welcome celebration yesterday. She says that she absolutely loves dog handling and dog shows, and she says that's never going to leave her life. She also loves to play table tennis. Hmm, I might have to have a match with her sometime. And she loves to spend time with dogs and studying. Representing the Ukraine, Katerina Velichenko. <laughs> so just two to go. And now we see the representative from the United Kingdom. This is 15-year-old Paige Hughes. This is her first time in the International Junior Handling Final. 
So she definitely wins the award for having the most dogs at home. So she has 17 dogs that live at home, 17 Siberian Huskies, no less, and one Dalmatian. She started showing dogs at the age of six, and she started training at the age of five with the help of her mum in the back garden. With her Siberian Huskies, she participates in rallies and treks and covering a certain amount of miles in forests and mountains, and they train them in a, their local forest, and the Dalmatian joins the, the pack for the fitness. She's in year 11 doing her GCSEs at secondary school. Her favorite subjects at school are PE and biology. She likes learning about the human body and doing different sports. She wants to do animal care or even be a dog handler in the police force. Handling the border collie, that's Paige Hughes from the United Kingdom. And here now representing the USA. Here is Octavia Stenson handling a Hungarian Vizsla. Octavia is 19 years old and this is her first time in this international final. At home, she has three dogs, two Norwegian Buhuns and a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. She started showing nine years ago when she got her first Norwegian Buhund. She loved it and she just basically carried on. She enjoys teaching dog tricks in her spare time. And she's currently a freshman in college. She'd like to stay active in dog shows and possibly become a professional handler. She said she's really focused on her studies. Uh, she's majoring in Mandarin in school. She says she's loving learning a new language and the challenges that come with it. She enjoys watching movies and spending time outdoors. All these handlers keeping so calm and collected and being so kind and gentle with these dogs that they, they only met this morning. Well done to the USA, Octavia Stenson. So we have 12 minutes left. What will our judge decide to do? He's judged them all individually. Perhaps we'll see them go out and back one more time. For those of you who have just come into the arena and joined us this morning, where have you been? We've been here since 8.30 and watching this amazing competition, the Joe Cartledge Memorial International Junior Handling Final. All of these handlers are champions in their own countries. And the judge is judging the handler on their presentation and skill and bond and style that they have with their dog. These dogs do not belong to these handlers. All of the handlers are under the age of 19. All of the handlers only met these dogs this morning. And I highly commend them all for doing such an amazing job in the ring here today. We have a lovely team of helpers.
We've got a fantastic ring stewarding team as well. We've got Lisa Moyer, Caitlin Forbes, Faye Matthews, and Min Withyman, all former junior handlers in this country. We're going to see them move again. So come on, let's warm up our hands, please, and say <laughs> welcome to Australia, Diana Mussolino. This is Belgium, handled by Laura DeVos. And Bulgaria. This is Samuel Bonin. Canada, Laurence Gigard. From the Czech Republic, Sara Malinova. Representing Denmark, Sarah DeAngelis. From Estonia, Gerda Wunsch. From Finland, Jonas Sotala. Representing France, it's Sarah Duchelieu. That Labrador still wagging. It's Germany, Alexandra Yunov. Representing Greece, Effie Sezenia. From Hungary, Greta Straub. And representing Iceland, Freya Grumin Stotia. From Ireland, Molly Mullen. From Israel, Liri Sokolovsky. The lady in red, it's Chatia de Bella from Italy. From Japan, Yuha Tamura.
from Latvia. This is Alice Semeta. Representing Lithuania, Dia Maximovic Chuta. From Malta, Mariah Manicaro. And that was Monaco. And we're now on to the Netherlands, Soleil Haukushoven. Monaco was represented in the red by Nicole Zaza. From New Zealand, it's Jacob Ashwell. From Norway, it's Mimi in Dina Nilsson. <laughs> Representing Poland, Zosia Raboy. Representing Portugal, it's Maria Flores Ribeiro. <laughs> and Romania, Alexandra Ambrush. Slovakia is a Daniela Nebatova. And Slovenia, Nikita Rehak Frisch. We've got a full main ring program lined up for the rest of the day. It's now two minutes to 10, and this is South Africa, Anita Schumann. Representing Spain, Adriana Sanchez Natividad. Sweden is Nelly Podlinski. Switzerland, we have Nora Sorta. <laughs> Representing Ukraine. Katerina Velichenko. <laughs> Representing the United Kingdom, it's Paige Hughes.
and from the USA, the Hungarian visual with Octavia Stenson. So what happens now, our judge is going to liaise with our fabulous steward, Faye Matthews, also a former junior handler. In fact, she won the breeders' competition here with her Pomeranian, team of Pomeranians last year. And they're going to take a note of his shortlist. He's going to mentally pick out which ones he would like to see in the final. But all of these handlers we will see in this main arena later on tonight, which is going to be in this arena from 20 past 6 to 20 to 7, so 6.20. Our dog owners and hand, our dog owners will need to be down in the collecting ring by five o'clock, please, in the collecting ring by five o'clock with your dogs in the collecting ring and the handlers too, please, to return to the collecting ring at five o'clock. And then we will see all of these 36 competitors come into the ring and then we will reveal the shortlist. I don't know how many Roni's going to pick. He might pick eight, he might pick nine, he might pick ten. That's usually around the number. And we won't know until this evening. And then he will judge those ten again and pick one, two, and three. So a winner, a runner-up, and third place. He's clapping his hands. Well done to our judge, Mr. Roni Dudines. I think you did a fabulous job. Very experienced judge. Big round of applause to all of our dogs and our young handlers. Well done. You can relax now, guys. And if Min Withy Moon could lead out the handlers from that exit, please. You're going to go all the way round and leave the ring. It's been fantastic to see you all here. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you later on tonight in this main arena for the second part of this competition, 20 past six. trying to take them out the agility exit please thank you all of them out the agility exit lovely to see you all go round enjoy the moment guys
the fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV and Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Škoda. Echo made me feel happier than I ever thought a dog could make me feel. It's like she knew what I was going through as soon as she met me. I think she's my soulmate in a dog. I had um, Wilms cancer, which is um, located in your kidneys. It's normally diagnosed in younger children. It made me feel so poorly. I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. I needed help to even standing up. So before we had Echo, Freya had lots of hospital appointments. She was bed bound, she was very poorly, unable to walk, um, and just a shadow of the girl that she was. Echo joined the family and she brought back the smile to our little girl. She was encouraging her to get out. She did motivate her to walk again and yeah, she gave us back our little girl. So I was looking forward to doing um, lots of things and she made me want to do them even more, like walking, playing with her. She's just amazing. Freya used to watch crafts with me since she was probably about three years old. Freya's objective was one day she wanted to get there. When we found out that she got to crafts on her first show, we were over the moon. Crafts last year was amazing for me. It was um, a once in a lifetime experience. It's just the most wonderful thing you can ever go to. I felt so poorly, but I said, I have to do this, like, it's the only chance I could get. I cried twice because like, I was so happy I was there. It was massive. To know that Freya's got Echo is like, knowing she's got her own support system. They've just got the unbreakable bond, best friends, snuggle buddies. She just syncs perfectly with anything Freya does or feels. They're just perfect together. My life wouldn't have just been as fun as it is now if I didn't have Echo. Knowing that if she doesn't feel comfortable enough talking to us, she's always got someone to talk to. She's always got someone to cuddle with when she's feeling down and in bed and not herself and doesn't want people. She's always got Echo to just be her best friend. She was my motivation to get home. I wouldn't have went through cancer without her. I can't imagine a life without Echo. She's just the most wonderful dog. She's the dream dog you could have. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. So Eliana was suffering a lot from anxiety before we got Gordon. I'm scared to think what would have happened to Ellie if he hadn't come along. We name him G-Dog or our favourite one is the BFG, Big Friendly Gordon. He's my herring dog and he helps me with everything like the timer, waking me up and like being my best friend and helping me mentally and physically. Well, I've got cochlear implants and I'm profoundly deaf. When I take my hearing aids off, my implants, it's complete silence, like you can't hear anything. She's a bilateral cochlear implant wearer, which means she wears it on both sides. We always say that gives her access to sound, but by no means it replaces her natural hearing. Unfortunately, due to her deafness, she has had quite severe anxiety issues. It got to the point where she would wake up and she would just vomit for the whole day. She was pulling out her hair. She wasn't very confident and she didn't have many friends either. Society doesn't quite understand what deafness is. Um, it can be quite isolating. It went from needing a hearing dog for the practical reasons, but also for the emotional reasons and for helping her with her mental health. When Gordon arrived, I think everything changed. 
From the get-go, he slept in her room, he watches over her at night. He gives me like a sense of comfort and just makes me happy. Life is fun. I wake up to pulling off my duvet because he recognises my alarm. He like gives me a sense of safety with the fire alarm because I know he'll wake me up. He's like my best friend. My anxiety problems are like still there, but like I don't really have them anymore. She's super confident. She's deaf and she's proud. Um, and I think that Gordon just helps other people understand that Eliana's deaf. There's so much more than just friendship to it. You can see that Gordon is always checking where she is in the house. He knows that he is there for her. So it's a real friendship, but the partnership on top, it's very special. He has transformed the person that she is. He has supported her mental health so much so that she is a completely different person to who she was before. It's been life changing. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Before I had Phoebe, I had to be with someone who knew me and knew my condition 24-7. She has given me my life back. I wouldn't be able to live as a normal 25 year old if I didn't have Phoebe. Here you go, hold, wait. I have a condition called hypermobile ehlers downlos Syndrome. Now for normal people, <laughs> that means basically my body doesn't produce any collagen and any collagen that is produced is destroyed by my body. But the kicker with um, EDS is that it affects every part of your body. So for me, it affects all my internal organs and it does mean I'm life limited. Um, so I'm living on a shorter timeline than most. Phoebe's main role is as my medical alert dog. So the main thing she does for me is detect when I'm gonna play. Okay. I know. She's just done a heart alert. So my heart rate's just shot up from 80 to 120. It's only her first alert, so it's not a dangerous alert. It's just her first reminder for me to stop. She also alerts to my seizures. She'll lie on top of me to keep my body temperature. Um, if I have a seizure, she'll put herself between my head and the floor um, so that I can't bang my head. I'm a full-time wheelchair user, and with my condition, um, bending down is really difficult because it often triggers um, a fainting episode. So she helps pick things up, she helps me get dressed and undressed, she opens and closes doors. She just generally is both a medical alert and a mobility assistance dog. I'm a sailor. I have been competing since I was about 15 for Team GB. Um, and I now compete as a para-athlete. Before having Phoebe, before her medical alert, I couldn't sail on my own. She normally looks like she's asleep um, or watching the birds, but basically she keeps track of my scent so that I know if I'm gonna faint. Um, that means I have the time to safely get back to shore. For the past two and a half years, I have been able to race and train and sail independently. And I'm sure that sounds like a really small thing, but to me it was massive. Phoebe is not just my assistance dog, she's also a therapy dog and she brings joy and happiness to hundreds of people every week. We've done care homes, we've done universities, uh, we've done working with children with learning disabilities. She's not just my lifeline. She's given so many other people hope and joy. She not only gave me back my life, you know, in the house, she gave me my life back on the water. She gave me my sport back, the thing that I never thought I'd get back to competing. What she gives me, I can never thank her for. She's my hero, but she's a hero to everybody else as well. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Vespa has located live casualties and disasters all over the world and has saved many lives. And she gives not just me, but everyone out there hope. Vespa is currently a four-year-old Belgian Malinois Shepherd. She is a search and rescue dog both in-house for Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service and for UK ISAR. 
So um, Vespa was destined to be a police dog. Um, she was run for our puppy program. Um, unlike her brothers, um, they all liked um, the police side of it, but um, with Vespa, she was um, extremely kind, very, very social. Rather than a failed police dog, we class it as a re-educated police dog. She's gone on to do another role with um, Fire and Rescue, again, saving lives and um, helping people. The search and rescue dogs are vital to the Fire and Rescue Service. The role they play is they work on live scent. They will give a signal, which normally a bark of type, and they will sit in that position so we can identify exactly where the firefighters or the search and rescue technicians then need to go to start their digging. And I can't explain how important that is to families who have people who are buried in rubble overseas, like in Turkey last year. If we can bring one loved one to the surface, our job's worth doing, and Vesper has done this on numerous occasions. So when Neve and Vespa did deploy to um, both Turkey and Morocco, we arrived in country 36 hours um, after the earthquake had initially hit. There was mayhem on the ground and they continued and continued to work with the hope that they was going to find somebody alive. And they was able to make an incredible difference to the team and the people of Turkey. When they work together in very unsafe environments, obviously in quite treacherous terrain, they have to really trust each other, and you can see that with Vesper and Eve. The role of a search dog in a disaster is to quickly as possible give us intel into that disaster as where possible survivors could be. What makes Vesper unique in this role is these dogs have to eliminate things quite quickly, whether that be the odour of decomposition, food, animals, wildlife. They are just searching for the element of life. So she goes through a disaster and identifies the actual unique thing of breeding casualties. She's quite intuitive. She's um, a methodical thinking dog and she's very, very calm. She has a very, very strong nerve strength that doesn't react with stimuluses or environmental factors that most dogs or search dogs would find quite stressful. So she takes all that in her stride and yet has the ability to continue working in some of the most arduous, stressful conditions. Although it is a game to them, to us, it is a life and death situation. She not only gives us those important answers of where live counties are located, she gives me and lots of other people in the world hope.
agility, and that stands for anything but a collie. So you're literally going to see lots of different breeds very successfully doing agility. It's a very, very inclusive sport. We're then going on to the Cruft Singles. We've got heel work to music for you. We've got all sorts of displays, but don't forget the other halls. We know you want to stay with us, and we'd love you to stay with us, but don't forget to take your credit cards, take your shopping bags, fill them up, get all your Christmas presents all in one go, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show as well. So we're just finishing setting up our course. As you can see, it's a jumping course. No contact equipment for this. It's the first heat of the ABC uh, Crufts Agility Heat. And of course, we need a judge. Amanda, please. Our lovely judge done a fantastic job for us so far this week and will continu continue to do so, I'm sure. So please put your hands together for Amanda Lutman, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off with the large height. We've got all of the heights here for you today. So whatever your preference, you will see it all. So like I said, ABC stands for anything but a collie, and we're starting off with a Labrador. This is Kate Fowler from Market Raisin. This is Promise, a three-year-old Labrador retriever. Vargala done and dusted. Agility warrant silver bred by Kate herself. So here we go. Through the tunnel, left turn. Around the back side of the jump with that wing wrap, we call that into the weaves. Look at that, very nicely done. Through the tunnel. She's then got in a blind turn with the dog crossing behind her, back into the tunnel. She's gonna do another blind. We've got a right turn into the tunnel oh they do see that jump there but here we go into the final straight let's give them a big round of applause it's a great start what a fantastic start clear round 36051 on the clock it goes without saying but it goes into the lead okay next to go on the line this is skeeter oh he's cute this is, um, he's just a mix, actually. It doesn't actually say what he's mixed with. But he's a rescue dog. So, um, again, agility is very inclusive. We have uh, our breeds, but we also have rescue dogs and all sorts. So look at that, very nicely done through the weaves. He says, I'm gonna make sure I clear these jumps. Right turn. <laughs> that was cool, actually. He was turning in the air there. Here we go. Round the back. Wing wrap into the final straight. Let's give them a big round of applause. Yes! It's another great run. 34, 7, 6, 4 on the clock. That goes into first place. Okay, next to go, Emma Bryden. This is Sh Shyla, bearded collie, wanting to get on with the job. She's going to bark as well. She's going to shout at Emma, tell her what she thinks of the course. Nicely through those weave poles. Into the tunnel, she's going to get the blind in. No, we call that a front cross when the dog crosses in front of the handler. But she's going to get a blind in after the tunnel. Well done. Through the arms jump. Got to not look at the Crufts jump. There's that wing wrap. Down the line, let's cheer them home, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, yes, another great run. Goes into second, 35, a one, two, three on the clock. Goes into second place, well done. This is gonna put the pressure on for the agility round. All these great clear rounds, they'll have to go for it in the agility as well. So this is uh, Arnie, Amy, I apologize for my reading without my glasses. This is a, a Malinois.
Getting that blind turn in, left turn. Another dog that uh, has a lot to say for herself. Don't look at the cross jump. There we go, right turn, wing wrap. Come on, come on, Grace. Well done, well done, Amy. 38.74 on the clock. Goes into first place, well done. Well done. Oh, look at that face. This is Lorna Kennedy with Drico. Hungarian Vistler. Copper oh. Steel Tempest. Drico is how you say the name. Oh, well done. She says, I'm going to make sure I get it right. Left turn. Well done. Getting the blind in there. We've got to turn right on that Skoda jump into the tunnel. Oh, don't look at that one. Oh, she said no. I wanted to do that one. Here we go. Let's cheer them home, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Well done. Oh, nearly took the cameraman out. Uh, 48.392 on a clear round. Well done. These are so good, aren't they? Very good. Okay, next go. Emma Wallace with Dodger. Australian Shepherd Dog. Stockyard of Rough Stock Rodeo. Round the back. Into the weeds. Have to go into those weed poles with the first pole on their left shoulder. Front cross into the left turn. Getting the commands in early, telling the dog which obstacle to do next. And these dogs really do know which obstacle is which. Here we go, that was a good turn. One more, yeah, lovely. 32685 on the clock. Goes into second place. Okay, next to go, Cassie Whizzle with Rune. Kelpie, Australian Kelpie. Oh, just pulled off that tunnel. Picks up five faults for a refusal. And turned away from the jump, so that is another refusal. So that's uh, another five, so we're on ten faults. But you know what? Remember, it's still all to play for because it really does matter what happens in the agility later on this afternoon. Right turn into the tunnel. She's saying, pay attention to me. There's that wing wrap as we come down the line. Two to go. Well done. Well done. 39, 4, 9, 2. 10 points on the scoreboard. So the last to go in the large. This is Leslie Ann Moore with Murphy. And uh, it, under breed, it just says other. So we're not quite sure. <laughs> not quite sure what, he, what uh, Murphy is, but he picks up five faults for a refusal on the weaves. Got that turn in early, shaping that left turn. I'm going to say Labrador in there somewhere, but yeah. Down the line to the tunnel. Calling, calling, calling. Don't look out. Oh, that was close. Where we were, we could see her eyes, eyes looking over that jump. Well done. Well recovered. Five balls, 44, 990 on the clock. Well done. Thank you. What a great round there for those large dogs. Didn't they do well? I'm going to hand over to Becky. Thank you, Kate. So we're just waiting for our ring party to adjust the heights on the jumps. We are going down to the intermediate height. So these dogs will actually be jumping the 50 centimetres. Thank you to our wonderful ring party. They're all volunteers here today. 
doing a wonderful job for us. And it looks like we are about to start with our first intermediate. Hi, this is Isabella Taylor. She is running Twiglet, a English Springer Spaniel. Isabella and Twiglet competed for Team GB at the Junior Open Agility World Championships. They won both the agility and jumping rounds, so they are now the under 12 intermediate world champions. That is an amazing achievement for such a young age. So they've safely negotiated those turns and into the wheeze and now into the tunnel. Isabella commanding Twiglet where to go, taking that nice left turn onto the Skoda jump. Now we're through the tunnel. Have to say, Isabella's leggings are amazing. Nicely pulled out of there, nice tight turn. We are free from home, we are clear so far. Yes, we are over the finish line in a clear round of 35.764. So Isabella has set the bar so far. On the line now is Cassie Webster. Cassie is running ace, a seven-year-old English Springer Spaniel. This is her second time competing at Crofts. They've clocked up over 3,000 miles chasing these qualifiers. They say a big thank you to all their trainers for getting them here today. So there are five faults at the moment, but that really doesn't matter. It's all to play for. These results are combined with the agility round that is happening later this afternoon. So five faults, call in ace. He just looked at that cross jump, but we saved it. So we're three from home. And we're over the finish line in a time of 36.023 with five faults. So we've reset the course. And next on the line is Janine Coleman from the Isle of Man, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hello. We have some supporters in the house. She's running Ella, a six-year-old Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is the ABC. So these are all your other breeds that are not collies. You can also see all of these out in the halls at Discover Dogs. So if you think there's anything out there that you wish to go and investigate, go into the halls, have a chat to all the people, see all the different breeds of dogs. So, although Ella is a retriever, she eats like a Labrador. Always helping her mum keeping the kitchen floor clean. She loves her tennis balls as well. So we are clear so far. Chasing a time of 35.764. Can we do it? Yes! Oh, wow! Clear! 35.594. And into first place. That was so close. Oh, wow. Look. I'll just lie here. Wait for you to release me. So this is Jasmine Wise running Viva, a four-year-old, mixed breed. Just picking up a refusal there on the tunnel. So Jasmine just making sure she puts her back into the tunnel. We have to complete the course correctly. We're into the weaves. Negotiated the weaves into the tunnel. Down over the Skoda jump. Jasmine just turning there, ready for the left turn onto the next Skoda jump. Indicating the tunnel, blind cross there, turning right. So, corner out the tunnel, ignoring that cross jump, safely over 16 with three from home. And a big cheer, ladies and gentlemen. Five volts and 39.900, which puts Jasmine into fourth place. Here is another different breed. This is Claire Flowers running red, an eight-year-old mixed poodle. This is Claire's first agility dog. She only started training in 2018 after having a go with her club. First competed in 2019 when she was three. Red loves the agility, likes to bark all the way around, which I think we can hear. Just turning into those weaves. Oh, just picking up five holes there from missing the second hole. So Claire is going to send Jasmine back to make Red back to make sure that she completes them correctly. 
moving there nicely. So left turn over the skirt to jump. Move it on off. We're crossing to the right. Have we made it? Have we ignored that cross jump? Yes, we can. Red having a little up there, but we're three from home. Let's give them a cheer, ladies and gentlemen. So, five bolts in a time of 44, 2, 3, 2, and into fifth place. We now have Carl Green running Loxley, a five-year-old mixed breed. Loxley is another rescue. So, ladies and gentlemen, any dog can take part in agility. They can be rescues, they can be purebreds. It really doesn't matter. Apparently, Loxley absolute, absolutely loves everyone and every dog and is a naughty food thief. But we are clear so far, looking to beat a time of 35.594. Can we do it? Safely taking that jump. We're three from home now. And we are over the finish line in 34.851. That takes Paul into first place. Next up is Laura Middleton running Yuna, a seven year old Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Apparently, Yuna is clever, naughty, and impatient. <laughs> she very much resembles an urban street fox, as her favorite thing to do is go up to people's driveways and raid the bins. <laughs> I love the characters of these dogs. They're so different and so unique to everybody. So we are clear so far. Just sending over the Skoda jump. Laura indicating the tunnel. Nice right turn there over the Skoda jump. Down into the tunnel. Can we ignore that jump? We can. Safely round 16. We're three from home. Let's give them a big cheer, ladies and gentlemen. And we are over the finish line in 37, 9, 3, 4. That puts Laura into fourth place. We're now on the last dog of this intermediate height. This is Pam running Danisha, Ooh, a seven-year-old Stavnihan. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, ladies and gentlemen. It's a rare breed from northern Holland, where they were originally used as a multi-purpose farm dog. Oh. So, unfortunately, Danisha just taking the jump the wrong way, which results in an elimination. But it doesn't matter. They've made it to the green carpet on Crufts. They still have their agility round to run later this afternoon. Denisha does not know they've gone wrong. They are enjoying every single moment on here. So we're just going to send around the back of there. We're going to finish. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. Good. Thank you. So the ring party are going to lower the jumps for our next height, which is the medium height, and I will pass you back over to Kate. Thank you very much. And uh, we're on to the mediums. Eight dogs for you in the medium height. So as you can see, our ring party putting the jumps down. Okay, Amanda's ready, I think. Yes, nodding, yeah, and uh, here we go. Georgie Lott is first. This is Edie, four-year-old working cocker spaniel. Apparently she's gonna scream all the way around, so let's see what she does. Oh, there we go. Not wrong. So, backside. The jump into those weed poles. Nicely through there. Let's see what the mediums are going to do with this course. We've had some fantastic times with the other heights, so. Uh, and uh, Edie is eating this one up. So, round the back. Oh, we're okay. Lovely wing wrap. Come on, Georgie. Two to go. Yes. Fantastic. Another great start to the mediums. Well done. 31, 
379 goes into the lead. Obviously. But I think that's going to be a hard one to beat. So, Laura Warwick is on the line with Blossom. This is another working cocker spaniel, five years old. And it's, in fact, Laura's first agility dog, so done absolutely brilliantly to make it to the green carpet of Crufts 2024. Blind turn in there. Left turn into the tunnel, another blind turn coming out of the tunnel. The blind turns keep the dogs accelerating, keeps them going fast. Come on, two to go. Well done. 31771 goes into second place. Okay, this is Blythe Fox with Rue, Cocker Spaniel. Eight years old. Agility champion, Devon Gem Golden Oval. Nice turn there. Through the Skoda jump. Trying to keep these turns as tight as possible. Round the back. Lovely wing wrap there. We're in the final straight. Another lovely run. 31.595 goes into second. Clear round. Well done. So next on the line, Steph Best with Skedaddle. Had a great day yesterday here um, in the championship class. Skedaddle is a Shetland Sheepdog, four years old. Represented GB this year. Did really, really well at uh, both e EOs and the World Champs. So get out, get round that jump. Here we go, we're into the final strike on Steph. Yes, well done. Oh, look at the time. Well done. 30.400 on the clock goes into first place. Well done, Steph. Cracking run. Knocked pretty much uh, a second off the previous leading time. Sue Midgley is next. This is with Zephra, six-year-old Shetland Sheepdog. And actually, Sue has been doing agility for 36 years. I know you won't believe that. She doesn't look old enough, bless her. And uh, Sue's always competed with collies before, so having a Sheltie is a first for her. But again, great job for qualifying to come and compete in the ABC at Crufts. Here we go. Oh, just made it over the jump. Just made it. Two to go. Come on, Sue! Oh, well done. 36, 5, 6, 6 on the clock goes into fifth place. Had a little bit of a blip there, but no faults incurred, just wasted a bit of time. But that's okay. Remember, we're putting this together with the agility run later. And uh, looking for our overall ABC winner. Next to go, Robin Sinclair with Jasper, five year old working cocker spaniel. Breezy Brook Daredevil. Second time at Crufts. And last year was actually in the Novice Cup, so he would have been competing yesterday. First day. Hanging on, we're hanging on on these turns, but unfortunately he's just come through the gap, so picked up five falls. Then right turn, we can hear Robin telling him which way to go. Round the back of the jump. Here we go into the final straight. Two to go. Well done. 34, 2, 4, 3 with five faults. Goes into sixth place. So Tanya Cooper is next on the line Stan from Stanford in the Vale. This is Taxi, an eight year old Shetland sheepdog. Lycosteria taxi in motion. Here's the full kennel now. 
She's uh, eight years old. She said she's the sweetest dog, loves absolutely everything and everybody. So, here we go into the tunnel. Crossing sides, get the nice right turn. And the back into the final straight, two to go. Well done. Clear out of four, seven, four, six goes into fifth place. So. So last to go in the mediums. This is Zico Junior with Nigel Staines. Agility champion Morgan's Golden Eagle, Agility Warren, Diamond. But and uh, Nigel has an impressive crib sheet with this dog. Been here before, definitely. But here we go, into the tunnel. Calling him off that cross jump. Trying to get the speed on the turns as well as the straight. It's a lovely run, well done. 34, 5, 6, 1. Clear round, well done Nigel, goes into fifth place. Well done. Okay, so. So that concludes our ABCs. Um, bear with us. We'll uh, shortly be going on to the presentations. It's 50% stronger for stiffer dogs who may need extra support. This clinically proven formula delivers 50% more power. See a difference in six weeks or your money back. Please can we thank our judge, who's also going to present our winners. Please put your hands together for Amanda Lutman. <laughs> and the winner of the Crufts Medium ABC Novice Final with Zed Atomics, Spice Corey Fage, Stephanie Best. Well done, thank that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the winner of the Crufts Intermediate Novice ABC Final. In the Intermediates, with the legendary outlaw, Carl Green. And the large, the Crufts Novice ABC Final winner, with Kvv Vander, 
Vodek and Shue, Grace Splitmore. Please keep the applause going, make some noise, it is lap of honor time. Well, good morning once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the main arena, day two of the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2024. The fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV. And Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Order.
Well, good morning. It's great to be talking to you again. This is uh, Jim Rosenthal here in the uh, commentary box at the main arena alongside uh, Graham Partridge, welcoming you to the second day of Crufts 2024. They're uh, just walking the course for the Crufts singles that uh, heats throughout the year for this one, scoring points, and that means only the best are with us here today. A three-part competition for dogs in the two highest grades, six and seven. And we're about to see the jumping. Later, there's the agility with the final around about 5 o'clock UK time. And that is an agility round for the pick of the bunch. And that final is a straight competition. They all start from scratch. And we're going to have four dogs from each height. Small, medium, intermediate and large. Graham Partridge, uh, good morning. Graham and uh, a lot of viewers tuned in yesterday for agility and a lot have been asking how can we get into this fantastic sport of agility give them the definitive answer would you the definitive answer is uh, go to the kennel club website uh, look for find a club uh, that's a dog training club uh, find one local to you uh, and then contact them and the reason I say go to a kennel club registered society or, or, or uh, other type of club is they're going to be insured. They're going to have really good trainers. They will set you on the road to agility. Don't worry about how old you are or how young you are. You can be, we've got people here competing this weekend of six years of age. We've got people well into their 70s competing. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Some people are more competitive than others, but the vast majority do it just for fun just to do something with their dog get your dog out of the house and do something with it because if you've got a dog that's mentally tired and physically tired you're going to have a dog which is so much easier to live with so as you say go onto the kennel website find a club contact them and they will direct you from there and before the start of the competition there is one pretty important rule change that everybody uh, should be aware of tell us about that Greg. yep for the regular visitors you'll know that uh, on the dog walk and the a-frame and the seesaw you've got the white areas they call them contact areas on the up and the down well uh, this year starting from the first of january uh, on the a-frame and the dog walk we will not be marking the up contact area so they don't have to touch the white bit on the way up on the A-frame or the dog walk, but they do have to on the seesaw. Graham, thank you very much indeed. We are all set uh, for the Cruft singles, and we're about to welcome uh, our judge for this one. Currently living in Reading, been judging for 22 years. Andrew Dicker competing with one grade four dog. He judged at Crofts back in 2011 as the agility yes, judge at the Young Kennel Club. So Tremendously judges. experienced judge, Jim. Um, been judging for a long time, uh, and this is his reward. We, we only have the top judges judging here, so I hope he, I hope he has a good competition. First to go, Charlotte Baker from Shepton Marrant and Eliza, bearded collie, competing together for nearly three years, our second year competing in the main arena at Crufts, these two. They have worked very hard to get here. The biggest goal of last season was to be appearing here at Cross. Charlotte Baker and Eliza, 10-year-old bearded collie. Great sound effect going through that tunnel. The wheels entering from the right, right in front of our commentary position, that one. Over the Skoda jump. Into the tunnel as well. Good start to this uh, competition over the IAMs. Sadly, uh, taken a wrong course, and the 
first crossed arms that we've seen today. Apart from that, though, a tidy round. Graham. It is. Uh, this course is not a gimme. There's there's lots in it, uh, and unfortunately, she just took the jump from the wrong side. It should have been the other side of that. So because she took it from the wrong direction, it was an uh, elimination. Rick Crofts regular, Handler Dawn Weaver, and Vegas ten-year-old mixed Collie Cross. Ears pricked, ready to go. Slight bit of hesitation, but Dawn uh, got Vegas on the right track. Tight one, that one over the U move. It's a good round, good first 20 seconds. Over the IAMs, back over that U move, but again, another wrong course. And uh, again, this unforgiving world uh, of uh, agility, that is a disqualification game. Yep, it is uh, quite a tricky little section that uh, you've got you can't keep moving forward because that pushed the dog over there You've got to hold your ground and get the dog to come in towards you This is Willow six-year-old working cocker and James Adam winners of the team and individual bronze at the European Championships World Championships team gold and individual silver so a partnership to watch Graham Absolutely, this dog's got two speeds, fast and faster. Uh, and you'll see, if you can see James there, he's leading the dog away, trying to stay as close to the dog as he can, because communication here is absolutely key. So hopefully he'll call the dog in and, unfortunately, just didn't give that real, real clear command for the dog. As you say, it's heading towards that jump anyway. The natural line is towards the backside of that jump. You need to be calling them in. Such a shame. Great partnership. And here we go, you'll see, now he needs to stand his ground, he's still moving forward, pushing the dog over the wrong side. Such a shame. Very tricky part of the course, that, looking at Bliss, seven-year-old border collie, Sammy Pegg, the handler, last time they ran in the main arena, the Novice Cup in 2020. Very excited to be back this time round. Go on, Graham, talk us round this round. So, first two are fairly straightforward into the tunnel. Now they've got to go round the back of the next jump. Very nice. Now they want a sharp turn into the weaving poles, an oblique entry into the weaving poles. Must go to the right of the first weaving pole. Now round the back of number eight as well. Pick the dog up, looking for a tight turn into the tunnel. Fast a bit here, round the back again, pushing. Now this is where they need to just be on the ball here. They're over 13. Oh, she's called the dog the wrong way back, but she's managed to rescue it. So that's just five faults there for refusal. Great long finish here, straight. Well done, Sammy. Great effort, well rescued, I have to say. Very good retrieval, that, by uh, Sammy Pegg. And uh, Bliss, and that's the first on the board. Number one at the moment with those five faults. <laughs> Fia Meta, Rachel Ward from Colville. Little fiery one in Italian, barks like a seal while doing her favourite thing, agility, with a sweet and kind-natured dog. And starting off pretty well, the little fiery one. Good opening 20 seconds. Oh, beautifully handled there, Excellent, excellent through that tricky section. Great work from Rachel Ward. And from Fia Meta, 32 and clear, the best so far. Great time as well, 32-1-1-0. Course time is actually 55 seconds. And there you see here that she's uh, driving the dog on, getting the last ultimate bit of speed out of it. Always guaranteed to be wearing something colourful as well here for the, for the audience. Endeavour, five-year-old Border Collie, last year's winner, and Laura Chapman. Oh, picking up five faults there. Very rapid so far, but again, sadly, wrong course. Sadly, another elimination. That part of the course is giving them problems, Graham. It's, I think that's, well, I have to say, I think that's probably the first one that's gone the wrong side of that particular jump. It's when you get to this section here, which is causing the, the issue. Of course, she's, she's made that look ridiculously easy. Yep. 
but she's been eliminated. But again, it's all done with kindness, um, repetition and reward. Such a shame. This is Goma from Portugal. Carlos uh, Passarino, the handler, first time at Crofts. They have travelled nearly 1,500 miles from Portugal to be here. Portuguese Cup winner won the International Agility Final at uh, as well. The Atomic Ferret, this one known as. Lovely jumping style. <laughs> We warned you. Going very nicely at the moment. Can he pull it in? Oh, dear. Big ask for this pairing for Portugal. It's probably the, the biggest atmosphere uh, and arena that they've been in. I mean, it really is a big ask for some of these dogs. But he's going to finish off on a really strongly. Well done. Unfortunately, another elimination. Yes, that uh, causing problems this morning. An ultimate medium dog, Harvey, nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel, very noisy. Jane Chenery, the handler. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly hear this dog before you sit, Jim. <laughs> that noise signifies maximum enjoyment, by the way. The Yumu safely negotiated. Good so far. How about this part of things? Um, dear. Five faults collected, but it's still it's still going to be quick. 32, 33, 34.4, and the five collected. That's good enough for second place as things stand. It was such a shame. She's very, very conscious here. She's got to call the dogs and almost overcalled it, but uh, better that than the dreaded crossed arms of the elimination, Jim. Absolutely. Last of the medium dogs, Maggie, four-year-old mixed collie cross, and Liz Carpenter, third time at Crufts, an agility champion, won five championship tickets. One of it's the Kennel Club International Agility Festival. The last of the medium dogs. Again, we know that Maggie is in the house. But this is really good. Here's coming up to this tricky technical section. Great roar there. We're looking good here. This is looking excellent. Top class, top class. 29.5 and clear for Liz and for Maggie, the pick of the bunch so far. Yeah, made it look easy, uh, but she, Maggie, uh, she's a very, very experienced competitor, Liz. And she was last to go, so it gave her a chance to see what had gone before. Uh, and she took full advantage of that tactical uh, tactical advantage that she had by going last. Well done, Liz. Yes, very well done, Liz. Last to go, but look at the time as well. 29.5, please. 32.1. Excellent finale uh, to that medium section there. So our judge Andrew just casting his eye around the course, making sure everything's okay. He's happy. The thumbs up. And here we go. This is Desiree Snellerman. First of the nine large dogs, five-year-old Peak, Desiree Snellerman from Sumner in the US of A, Washington State. Loves hiking in those beautiful surroundings in that part of the world. Great to see a competitor from the States here. And starting off with great enthusiasm, great gusto, and great pace as well. The Border Collie come a long way to be here and keen to do the business, but sadly a bit over enthusiastic. I don't need to tell you by now what those crossed arms mean and then pretty much doing <laughs> doing his own thing as well at the end there. Wonderful start, just unraveled as things do, Graham, very, very quickly. It is, but uh, great to see Desiree uh, here from the United States, the American Kennel Club, great supporters of Crufts. Um, and as I say, she's been on the international stage for a number of years now. We definitely won't be the last we see of her. Eclipse, Border Collie, five years of age, Dalton Meredith, last year's winner. They are reigning European and world champions. This has never been done in the same year before. Also won the agility stakes at the XL in London back in December. A really classy combination, this, and we would expect to see them go very deep into this competition. 
beautiful style, great speed. And what about this part? Thing? Yeah, it's good. It's good. A big roar of approval as well. Here's the finale. This is going to be outstanding. 29.4 from Dalton and from Eclipse. Beat that if you can. Yeah, I would expect nothing uh, less from Dalton. He is absolutely on fire now. Handled the section uh, brilliantly. Driving the dog on there. Very well done. Lemon, seven-year-old Border Collie, Nara Cuddy, the handler from nearby Leamington Spa. Team Silver in the European Open, this one, another classy combination, a joy to train. And the Silver individual medal from the Agility World Championships this year in the Czech Republic. Only the very best make it here to Cruft. And uh, hoping to hit the ground running on the second morning of this wonderful canine festival but there's a refusal there five faults picked up but uh, need to be need to be turned up let's have a big finish as well from Nara and from Lemon second place that'll do nicely Super Lemon. yeah well done as you say uh, everyone's really worried now about this little section so yeah. as you say she started to call the dog she wanted to get this big turn in and just over called Ted, nine years of age, border collie, Lisa Duggan, the handler from Stirling, north of the border, was very popular. A large entry from Scotland at Crufts this year, no exception. Best time at the moment, 29.4. Yeah. Through the weeds, over the Skoda jump there, turning into the U move as well. Not the quickest, but it's clean and tidy. Here they come to this dodgy area. Once again, faults picked up. And more faults over the U-move as well. But a fine, a fine finish, 34.2. And those 10 faults for Lisa and for Ted, top three. Yep, well done to Leeson. Uh, great effort there, as you say. Just managed to rescue it, knew it was going to go wrong, uh, and the dog listened to her very, very nicely. Gertie, Border Collie, Tunde Bell, the handler from Watford. They call Gertie Beastie for a reason. Very, very vocal. Right on cue. Gertie doing her own commentary, picking up five faults there. <laughs> Good work. That's a very, very acceptable round from Gertie and from Tunde. A very vocal round, too. Yeah, I don't think I need to say any more than Gertie did on the way <laughs> round. And probably far more succinctly put as well, Jim, but a great round there. Tulip, five-year-old border collie. The handler is Carl Benson from Middlesbrough. So this is Carl Benson. Up in the uh, northeast. That's uh, all the tension. Ready to go, and we're off. So all the dogs are As always, believe in giving you the best sound effects we can going through the tunnel. A little bit of hesitation there from Tulip. Approaching the weaves. Nice leap over the Skoda. Clearing those, it's a lovely jumping dog, this one. Well done. Brilliant work through there. And this will be very tidy, too. Very tidy round from Carl Benson and from Tulip. It's clear, it's 33.2, and it's second place. So this is what it's all about, really. Just keep an eye on the handler if you can. Look at him turning in the opposite direction that he wants the dog to go. Pulls the dog back in. Great effort. Well done. Annette Parker from Northampton with Sage, three-year-old Border Collie, off and running, first time at Crofts. And we cannot overestimate, first time under the bright lights, on the unique Crofts carpet. Thousands already inside the main arena here at the National Exhibition Centre. This is the canine big time. 
Well done. Oh, just clipped, just clipped uh, on the Hugh move there to pick up five faults. That was a shame. It's a good round. The standard here this morning is off the charts, Graham. It is. I can't actually believe it. It's in its first time here at Crufts. Uh, great partnership here, getting better all the time. Uh, and as you say, just unfortunate to be clipping the pole. Penultimate large dog, Alan Bray, the handler, ticket, six-year-old border collie. Alan's so calm, he's part of the Crufts furniture, really. Unhurried, calm, exudes confidence. Been there and done it. And still hungry for more. That's Alan Bray, legendary handler. Ticket to ride. He's off. Good style through the weaves. Allen and Ticket, just the ticket at the moment. How about here? Great work, great work from Alan Bray and from Ticket. Now the flying finish. Alan Bray and Ticket delivering, delivering first place. You never lose it, Alan. Just a little, little glance at the scoreboard there when he finished. He said, yeah, that'll do. He said, I'm happy with that. But look, very unhurried, but very certain. Look, stops, pulls that hand, come here. Well done, Alan. The last of the large dogs is Pip, six-year-old Border Collie, Lisa Duggan's second dog. Look at the concentration. When can I go? When can I go? Now. Good start for Pip and for Lisa. Oh dear. Rob Course and, uh, and the crossed arms from uh, Judge Andrew Dicker. The round, of course, will be completed. Uh, Pip doesn't know that uh, she has been disqualified. And that round is done. Graham. Well done, Lisa, just concentrating at the end there uh, on keeping the dog happy. She just, yep, she was far too late putting her left hand out there. She'll be kicking herself. But still, she qualified after a, a lot of people who didn't. So well done to her. And well done to Alan Bray. Calm, consistent and the best of the section. Well done, Alan. 29.4 plays 29.471. Very close between Alan and Dalton Meredith. So what we're doing intermediate now is we're just putting the jumps down to the intermediate height. It's exactly the same course as it has as it has been for all of our uh, competitors here. Judge will just check that uh, everything's in order, all the jumps are uh, at the correct height, making sure we've got the right elements in the long jump. There will be nine intermediate dogs. I can see the first one is all set to go. Lindsay Spring from Chipping Sodbury and Bam Bam, working sheepdog. Second year competing at Crufts and Bam's another noisy one who loves the atmosphere and generates a fair bit of her own as well. Lovely sight, the tail clattering through the weaves, over the ewe move, through the tunnel. Bam Bam, a noisy, enthusiastic and very effective worker. What an opening round this is. Terrific stuff from Lindsay and from Bamman. 30.204 and clear and deserved applause from Andrew as well. Yeah, I was just about to say it'd be interesting to see how the intermediate dogs handle this tricky section because quite often the intermediate dogs are do better metres per second than the large dogs, but effortless. Zest, eight years of age. Nicola Wildman, the handler. Team bronze at the Worlds, runner-up last year. And looking to go one better this time round. 
tremendous uh, first round, 30.2 and clear to beat for Nicola and for Zest. They're away. Oh, spectacular jump there. Through the weave, that's done. The Skoda completed as well. And the U move. Again, shaping up to a good one. First 20 seconds, quick and clear. And now the finale. Now a big finale. It's going to be very close. 31.8. Excellent. And clear. Nicola and Zest, second place, Graham. I think that little second's just become easier, Jim. I'm sure someone doesn't move to jump halfway through. No, Nicola's a uh, great handler, very, very experienced. She knew what she had to do. Look, again, just putting that arm out, saying, come to me. Very nicely done. Well done, Nicola. Gamble and Stephen Richardson, Team Bronze at the Worlds. Gamble, very sleek and very fast as well. Just a little bit of hesitation there. Won't cost too much time, though. Flying through the weaves. Very good opening 20 seconds for Gamble. Good work. Good work. And Gamble will be right up there at uh, the sharp end. You can put your money on that. Gamble, 30.5. Second place and clear. Well done to Stephen Richardson. Yeah, I would expect nothing less from Richard. He's a tremendously experienced competitor. Uh, he's had numerous dogs, and they all compete at the top level, so well done. Cosmo, five-year-old Border Collie. Kaylee Hewitt, the handler from Sheffield, adores agility. Bit of a goofy, happy boy, apparently. Why not? The standard here getting better and better and better. That is an excellent first 20 seconds. Sadly or wrong, just picking up uh, uh, first the faults, then the disqualification. And again, uh, that tricky section takes a bite out of, out of a, a pairing. I'm sure they're watching on the television backstage and working out how to do this one, Graham. Yep, this is really, really unlucky. That's about the first one we've seen go that side. And then, of course, the dog takes the obstacle from the wrong direction and picks up the dreaded crossed arms, signalling elimination. Otto, five-year-old Border Collie. The handler is Michel War. Sweet boy. Tail, wags his tail and smiles. Maybe not too much smiling the next 30 seconds or so. It's all down to business. Lovely, speedy, effective style through the weaves. Racing towards the tunnel. Brilliant. Brilliantly completed as well. Now put the pedal down for the finish. And this will be top stuff. 28.4 for Michel War and for Otto Numero Uno, Graham. Yeah, this pair on fire at the moment. She's had a massive boost to her confidence. The dog actually won a, uh, an automatic qualification spot to the next round of the Team GB selection process, which has just finished, but well done to her. Iron Man, Border Collie, Danielle Scott, the handler from Charleston in the USA. Looks like the werewolf, but the temperament of a teddy bear is how Danielle describes Iron Man. Good stuff. Well done, Danielle. Maneuvered the Iron Man over that tricky section, and this will be good as well. It's clear, 31.2, and clear. Fourth place. Yep, handled that uh, section really, really well. Uh, although she's from the USA, and although agility is the same the whole world over, jump course styles do change, but she coped with that really, really well. She'll be pleased. Phoebe, five-year-old uh, border collie. Tony Smith is the handler from Nottingham, last year's winner. Five years of age, homebred. Relatively small dog, this one. 
and knowing that the time 28 seconds uh, to be in this particular section. Jump, jump, says Tony, and Phoebe obliges. Good work through there, as good as we have seen from these two. And this is going to be really quick, really quick. 30.0, second place for Tony and Phoebe. Very nice here, just holding her ground, as you say, and then opening up the really, really fast finish. Well done to, well done to her. Penultimate intermediate dog is Zing and Alan Wildman. We've seen Alan's daughter, Nicola. Eight years of age, uh, Zing, five championship certificates. Always gives it everything. Experienced international competitor too. Yeah, Alan's been there, got the T-shirt, nothing phases him. You'll see his calm manner. It's all about communication between hander and dog here. So you can't touch the dog, but it's all done by verbal cues and by body language. And here we go, a really quick finish. Come on, Alan, keep going. Brilliant. 29.962 puts him into second place. Well done. Yes, excellent round uh, from Adam, from Alan, I should say, and from Zing. Gave it everything as they promised. The last intermediate dog, Banana, four year old Border Collie, Nara Cuddy, the handler from Leamington Spa. A fun loving girl is Banana. 28.4 to beat and clear. It's a good start. Over the Skoda, over the U move through the tunnel. Good, quick, clean, efficient. How about here? That's excellent too. This is going to threaten the best. Final, final sprint. It'll threaten the best. 28.9 and clear. Second place. A wonderful effort from Nara and the banana. Really, really great competition to handle that really well. But uh, all the people in this height section have actually had the benefit of watching 20 or 30 dogs go, and they've actually <laughs> learned from that. And people uh, competing at this level, you would expect nothing less. Great competition. Michel War and Otto, top of the pile, very close though. 28.4 against 28.9. Nara Cuddy, we've just seen there, and that completes the results of the intermediate jumping for you we're just setting course here for the small dogs hurdles have been reset at 30 centimeters which is the height they're expected to jump first of nine small dogs then taxi working cocker spaniel samuel sanchez pichum the handler from villirana which is near barcelona in spain Nicknamed Miss Barks a lot, which is nice. Originally from Devon, but apparently prefers the warmer climes of Spain. He'll be kicking himself there. Missed an opportunity. Such a shame. Come all this way, but uh, hopefully he'll make the. <laughs> no, nope, I fancy that tunnel. In fact, let's not bother with the rest of it at all. Let's just go straight yeah. to the end. No, not even the finish. <laughs> I'm out of here, he says, and they're gone. <laughs> Such a shame. Sizzle. And Katrina Hands, the handler from Fourfire in Scotland, represented Team GB. A fabulous dog to live with is Sizzle. Second of those are small dogs. Beautiful sight going through the wheels. Yeah, there we go. Push around the back there, keeping it really tight. Speed is not necessarily everything. It's about having these tight turns and making sure that you make a straight line of the two obstacles in front of you. Oh, look at that. She's right Ooh, with the dog, pulled it in, made that look absolutely effortless. Come on, Katrina, run. I am running, she says. Well done. 32, 3, 9, 0, as you say, for the small dogs, that is going to set uh, the cat among the pigeons. That's all what they've got to chase. It's all very well you sitting up here saying run, Graham. I'm sure she appreciated that. But first place <laughs> as it. things stand. So 
Next to go, Bruce, seven-year-old working cocker. Julie Dunlop, the handler from not too far away from Banbury. Third time at Crofts. And an early elimination. Yep, if you're a cocker spaniel and you can see a shortcut to the tunnel, take it. That, that's, that's how their mind works, I think. So it's probably not helping Julie. Uh, seriously, this is a, a great partnership. You can see this is a dog which is, is bred to work, uh, full of enthusiasm, uh, probably just a bit too much, I think, for Julie at the moment. But uh, she'll, she's been there, done it before, she's got the T-shirt, she'll take it all in her stride. There's a, tomorrow's another day, as they say, Jim. A work in progress, it's fair to say. Bruce, the seven-year-old working cocker, eliminated, but bags of entertainment. Today at Crofts is Gun Dog Day, and uh, Spider, the eight-year-old working cocker, is in the right place at the right time. Lily Woodford, the handler, made up to agility champion last year. Spider. No problems in the first 20 seconds. Let's see what the rest of the round holds. Really good through there, too. This is really good. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Just missed the tunnel. Got to go back there. That will cost precious seconds. Pick it up five forks as well. Billy Woodford and Spider. Such a shame here. I think she was giving herself a mental pat on the back for doing the difficult bit yeah. and then just cut away just a bit too soon, pulling the dog off, constituting a refusal. Okay, next to go, Dawn Weaver with Summer. Summer, 10-year-old mixed collie cross, Dawn Weaver, the handler, a wild dog, even at the age of 10. Just a little flicker, but got it right in the end. Nothing's going to be quicker through the weaves than Summer. That's the way to do the tunnel. Very, very good. What about the section now? Oh, done. Excellent. Now the run for home. Get yeah, cut through the tunnel. Now stretch out and go for home. Good work. 30.2 and clear. The best we've seen so far. Yep. Look at this. Beautifully handled. Even at 10 years of age, this dog's still in the peak of physical fitness. And Dawn's got the experience to help match that dog's speed. Peak on. Four-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Rachel Ward, the handler. Lives life at a hundred miles an hour, this one. And Rachel says, Pecan, she's sweet, but an absolute psycho. And, uh, well, I said it, and that's what she did. Yeah, fortunately, just missed that push round the back. Uh, there's a couple done that. Uh, but uh, you see, there's a lot of work in Cocker Spaniels here. At the I'm having trouble talking here because this dog just amuses me so much. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> what I was going to say was, you'll see we've had a lot of working Cocker Spaniels in this. It used to be Shelties were the uh, predominant breed in Smalls, but as I say, they working Cocker Spaniels are now, I think, probably ruling the world, I think, or attempting to. River, three years of age, and Jane Chenery. This is Jane Sweet little girl, another one we who will up. let us know that she is we here. <laughs> No words needed. I think we'll probably get more sense out of the dog, Jim, but uh, there we go. So you said it, you said it, Graham, not me. Pulls there, oh, yeah, flick away, oh, flick away. Oh, oh, what a shame. What a well, shame. Safety elimination. But just not the circuit eliminate. of the jump, so that's just a five foot for refusal. Well done, great effort, rescued yeah. that perfectly. River was barking and talking a good game, got into the fourth place until that happened and uh, Jane did her very best and at least avoided an elimination that's Robin seven-year-old uh, working cocker Karen Boardman the handler first time at Crofts she's qualified for both the championship and the singles well done Karen and Robin let's see what they can do here
cross country near Taunton. That's good through the weeds. Good over the shoulder too. A real scrambling tight one over the U move. Quickly in and out of the tunnel. Looking good, first 20 seconds. What's going to happen here? Oh, hold your breath. What is going to happen here is sadly an elimination. But right the way through to the finish. Go, 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 says Karen, the penultimate small dog. Yeah, I think Karen knew at that point that she was in uh, a little bit of trouble, and uh, the dog is so quick that it all happens in an incident. And there we are, crossed arms, that signals is a universal signal for elimination. Last of the small dogs, Drift, five-year-old mixed collie cross, Louise Godwin from Gloucester. Last of the smalls to remind you, the time to beat is 30.2 and clear. That will not happen here. But again, you have to tell the dog uh, uh, that uh, he's eliminated. He doesn't care whether he's eliminated or not. He wants to have fun. He wants to complete the course and he wants to have that nice little final run at the end as well. Drift and Louisa Godwin. There we are. Just drifted to the right, pulling the dog with a, making the dog go over the, the wrong side of the jump. And then it says, well, I've done it once this way. I'll do it again that way. And there we are. That was what it was supposed to do. Well done. Great competition. Dawn Weaver winning it then. Dawn with the Summer, the 10-year-old, first in the jumping. Excellent effort. And winning it by a couple of seconds as well from Katrina and from Lily. And please, once again, can we thank our judge, who's also going to present our winners, Mr. Andrew Dicker. Thank you, Andrew, doing a fantastic job. OK, first of all, we present the winner of the Crufts Singles Small with Agility Champion, Galaxy's Dream Summer, Dawn Weaver. And the winner of the Crufts Singles Medium with Agility Champion, Mosley Wood Maggie, Liz Carpenter. <laughs> and the intermediate winner of the Crufts Singles with Manic Jack Summer Dreams, Michelle War. Well done, Michelle. Fantastic. Well done. Well done, mate. Very good. And finally, the winner of our Cruft Singles in the large height, with Devon Jem, Blade Runner, and Up and Over Tigers, Alan Bray! Well done, buddy. OK, please keep the applause going, folks. It's lap of honor time.
Well, a fantastic composition in our Crufts singles, Agility, the very best standard of Agility.
Hello and welcome to the Crux Freestyle Competition. Today... Hello and welcome to the Crux Freestyle Competition. You're going to see the top 10 dogs in the UK fighting it out to become the winner. And it's going to be a great competition with lots of different pieces of music, lots of different themes, and probably quite a few different props as well. Because in the freestyle category, we're really able to use our imagination. We're able to perhaps sort of take a theme, run with it, but you'll see some themes, you'll see some sort of dancey type routines. It really can be quite varied. But we're looking at three areas for every routine. That is content and flow, accuracy and team performance, and musical interpretation. Each of those sections uh, carries 10 marks, so you'll see that uh, the total is out of 30 points. Now, some of the teams were in the Heelwork to Music final yesterday and did very well, so they've had a bit of a warm-up. And we have uh, three judges who will be looking at them. And here's our first judge. This is Jan Devon. They're all very experienced judges, been judging for a very long time. And our uh, head judge this year is uh, Christine Hodgson. And she has the honor of being head judge who makes some of the final decisions if they're needed. And then we also have our international judge, Bridget Van Gessel, a uh, very uh, experienced international judge as well. They've all had experience of being out there in the ring, and so they really can appreciate what it's like to be a competitor here, the nerves that might be uh, going on with some of the competitors. Now, each of these handlers have uh, worked their way up through the classes, and in advance, they will have competed last year at one of the qualifying shows and got a golden ticket, as we call it, to go to the Crufts semi-finals in January. They then uh, try and get one of the top 10 spots at the semi-finals to get here onto the big green carpet. So they've had quite a journey and it uh, takes many hours of training to get so these dogs to get to this now, level of training. So the judges have a very important role here. They won't have seen any of these uh, routines before, so they're coming to it with a fresh pair of eyes. So So the stage is set for our first competitor and uh, the nerves will be starting backstage, I assure you, at this stage because there's nothing like it in our normal competition world of uh, being at an event like this and the arena is packed today. It is uh, one of the busiest I've ever seen it on a Friday and that will add to this atmosphere and uh, some of the dogs will bring their X Factor game to this. And here is our first dog. This is Helen with her lovely nine-year-old border collie called Cara. Cara was in the Hewitt's Music Final yesterday, did very well. And they're performing today to a song called Take a Look at Us Now. So I expect we're going to see use of that suitcase. So we wish them well. What was that? That is an ambulance. What was that? That was a car tire. What was that? I have no idea what that was. You 
can pack your bags and start skipping town. Hang up that hat when the show shuts down. But when the world says you ain't quite world renowned, don't count yourself out yet. When you hit that lonely and lowest low, well, that's the only way left to go. You're meant to reinvent the show. So ain't you glad we met? Turn that dull and dusty solo to a dazzling duet. La 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 Maybe we started pretty small, but take a look at us now. Take a look at us now. Suddenly standing ten feet tall. Take a look at us now. Take a look at us now. Though we had no way to stay afloat, we were scared they'd say it was all she broke. We're ending on a sky high note somehow. But if you were all it took, so take a look at us now. When that perfect plan's going off the rails, a heap of trouble is on our tails. It's time to polish up those scales and give it all you got. If you're out of step, if you're out of sync, if you care too much what those critics think, well, when you find your missing link, they don't get a second thought, cause in the center of the spotlight, we just smile about our spot, shine our luck with every leap, take a look at us now, take a look at us now, the world could be steady, could be steep, take a look at us now, take a look at us now. We might be some compound first class Well, who would have thought that we had a chance A life could be a song and dance somehow But if you were all it took So take a look at us now So even when you're terrified Just by the smile a mile wide Cause but when you and I collide Standing side by side We're gonna Lovely routine there to kick off the final and Cara really enjoying herself out there doing some lovely moves there in time with the music and the judges will be looking at the accuracy of these moves how well were they performed and also, also the difficulty level so uh, if the dog is away from the handler at a, quite a distance then that is obviously much harder than when the dog is quite close to the handler and if the dog is facing away from the handler that is again quite difficult because the dog can't see any visual signals from that handler so uh, that is a way that these handlers who are all advanced handlers can make their routine sort of stick out from the crowd and that is what these handlers are trying to do they're trying to make their routine stick out um, from the rest of those in the competition and uh, they will many, have many tricks up their sleeve from using different props to using some humor and uh, we might see a little of that in our next competitor but the judges are now making their deliberations as to uh, what score they're going to give uh, they will be looking at how well the, the handler used the ring and this is a big ring here for the handlers to use but they'll be looking at how well did the handler use the actual ring did they stay in one area and that is just one of many points that the judges will be looking at
So the scores will be in shortly. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a good score to kick off this uh, this final, which always attracts a large audience due to really the diverse nature of some of the routines that we're going to see and uh, the trick nature. And all of these moves you see will have started off being taught individually to the dogs and then be linked together. So there was our first dog. We'll catch up with the score for that dog later on. And we're going to be moving on to our second team. And as I said, I think this is going to be a little bit of comedy. This is Kim Lydon with her pet dog called Rio. Rio is seven years old. They're going to be to be performing to The Boy Does Nothing. And uh, Kim is taking the role of a cleaner, complete with mop and bucket. And uh, he's going to be dancing here, Rio, for his second time. So we sort of wish them well. Now, here comes the music. I got a man with two left feet. And when he dances that to the beat, I really think that he should know that he's with the Never wash up, does he clean up? No, he never cleans up, does he brush up? 
Wow, some funny little moments there with uh, Kim and Rio. And uh, you can see the diverse nature of freestyle. It really can be one minute you've got somebody performing a very sort of dancey type routine through to there, a little bit of comedy, somebody taking on a role there of a cleaner and uh, using the music in a sort of almost like a general way, um, taking that theme with the, the mop. So. We have Cara's score coming up. And Cara, the lovely nine-year-old border collie. Here we go. 26.27 there. Some good ranges of eights and nines. And uh, I sometimes get asked, why do we see a 10? Well, a 10 means, you know, 10 out of 10 in each of those sections being it's, it's perfection. And uh, that's very hard. The little deduction there is to say that there was a little bit of noise um, because that's the only deduction the judges can deduct for in uh, the rules and regulations. And so there might have been a little bit of barking, a little bit of noise, and uh, the judges have obviously poised there right in front of it, um, and so they can hear it if there is anything there. So there we go, uh, Kim and Rio are second pairing. And uh, Rio there has also been on uh, Team GB as well. Uh, as of many of these dogs, they represent Great Britain uh, around the uh, Europe often in these finals. And that brings really good experience for them when they're here with sometimes, I think there must be about 6,000 people sitting around watching. The whole music is very loud. The dog has to keep focused the whole time. And that's something that some of the dogs struggle with because the music is so loud that they're not used to that. And the handlers have to make the dog aware of what they want. Um, and sometimes that's through the vocal commands, but also it will be through the physical signal. So when uh, Kim's dog there bounced in the bucket, she was using a visual signal of what she was doing with the mop to get the dog to do his little bounce in the bucket. So we're going to be shortly going on to our third team, and we're going to see something again completely different, and much more of a dancey type routine. But as you can see there, we've got now into uh, first place, there is Kim's score. And uh, Kim's score, look at that, some good nines there. 27.30, which is an amazing score. And that is going to be the score to beat. Look, 9.4 for interpretation there. So on to our third team. Uh, Mira Hitikash with her lovely border collie Zaya. They're going to be performing two beautiful ghosts. And uh, this is, I think, Zaya's first time here this year. She loves chasing squirrels, apparently. And uh, she's a very lovely girl to live with. So let's wish them well. There is 
on her game. She's just she was having a little bit of a look around there, and it is very daunting for these dogs to come out here. And there's not a lot we can do sometimes just to get these dogs used to coming out with all of this noise and everything there. And and uh, Mira did the right thing, taking her dog out. It's always the dog is at the top of our thinking when we're working with the dog. And, you know, she was quite happy. Her tail was up, but she was obviously concerned. And, and Mira thought, right, let's not sort of persist here. The dog was clearly sort of perhaps not focusing as much as she, as Mira felt. And so she did the right thing. So uh, it's unfortunate, but I'm sure that we will see them back again. Uh, doing their stuff so they've retired and we're going to be on to our next dog shortly but you know these uh, themes and music these these uh, handlers have a real choice to decide what to use and one of the things that the judges will be looking for is whether or not this music actually suits the team. And music interpretation is worth 10 marks. So they will be looking at whether or not the whole phrasing and the timing is being used within that music. Now, uh, the handlers are obviously dressed up and it's often thought, well, you know, why are the handlers dressing up like that? And the handlers should be there to really showcase the dog but shouldn't distract from the dog so if the handler is trying to gauge their costume so that it really sort of shows off the theme and it assists the dog in conveying that theme and that's the same with the props and the props as you can already see just within the first few dogs can be wide and varied and these props allow the handlers to develop sort of almost unique moves that they wouldn't normally be able to do if they didn't have those props, which adds to their variety of content, which the judges will be looking at as well. Uh, I've just been asked to once again remind you folks there's a lot of people waiting to come into the arena. It's very busy out there today. If there are any spaces on your road, please move along. If there are any gaps next to you, please move along and fill all the gaps. So as you can see, the dogs really love this sport and that's because they always know at the end there's going to be some food or a toy and this young dog next is going to be making his second appearance at Crofts because he was in the finals yesterday. He's only three years old, he's performing to Uptown Funk, he's called Bakersfield and he has a very famous father called Skiffle who Lucy uh, did pilot to being a, a Crufts winner many times in the freestyle and the heel work section. So uh, Baker's field is taking his dad's name and we wish them well. Just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. 
What a lovely dog Bakersfield is, and uh, really enjoyed his time out there. Very expressive dog with his, those prick ears there, and some real novel little moves going on. If you notice at the start, and this is what I was saying earlier about props: is that they can open up other opportunities. And so look here, he's pushing that glass with his nose. And you might think, that's quite simple. I can promise you to get that nose on that glass, push in the right amount. Um, it takes many uh, hours of work to get that. And it might just be a simple nose touch, but getting it in the right place on the glass so that the glass moves forward. He's just like his dad. He's very fast and furious, but then he can also do those more technical moves. And uh, going forward, they're into a high and that would be classed as a nice, uh, difficult type of move because the dog was going forward, standing away from the handler, then up on its hind legs. And as this dog gets older, Lucy will build on those techniques that the dog has learned and will probably develop much more advanced wow moves, as we would call them. So the judges will have analysed the, the content and the flow. Was it good enough? Was it accurate enough in our next section, which is accuracy and team performance? And uh, obviously, did that music, did it suit the team? And uh, here you can see the scores are just going in there. And already there, some good scores in interpretation, some nines there, all around the nine mark, 26.60 is into second place. So it's uh, looking like it could be quite a high scoring uh, day today because we've still got many more quality teams to come. And our next team is uh, Lucy Heath with Strike. And Lucy has actually got two dogs in this freestyle final. So she's got to do a quick change in a minute. Now, she's performing with Strike to the Grease Mega Mix. So this is a good one for getting the crowd going because you always want to get the crowd on your side a little bit. If they're enjoying it, then hopefully the uh, judges will be enjoying it. It's making his first appearance at Crufts, even though he's five years old. And uh, I'm sure they're going to do a nice performance. Here we go. Why the Grease Lightning?
I thought that was going to be a clap crowd pleaser, and it was. Strike really enjoying his time out there. Lovely little bit of choreography. I'm sure we're going to see a little bit more of that where the dog was uh, telling her more, and so she there was representing it with the dog whispering in her ear. Those are the things those judges are going to be picking up on. And there was a nice, in that music, there was fast, there was slow. She was choosing her moves accordingly. So I think the judges might like a little bit of that. And Strike, he's an experienced demonstration dog. Lucy does uh, a lot of display work around the country during the summer um, uh, for various audiences. And uh, they uh, are really experienced at, if it's not perhaps always going wrong, we would never know because uh, they just pick it up and they'll go into another move because these routines, they don't have to be submitted to the judges beforehand. They don't need to stick to them. So if the dog has gone a little bit off, which, you know, they're animals, they do these things, it's up to the handler to be a bit quick and make it look like it was all meant to happen in the first place. And a lovely ending from Strike and Lucy there. So, uh, as I said, uh, Lucy's got a quick change because she's got her next dog, which is the very last dog to go. Here we go, 26.10 into fourth place. A little bit of a deduction there for the noise. But that's uh, still some really nice marks there for interpretation and uh, content there all around the sort of nines mark. So, we've still got uh, our sort of leading dog on 27.30.
So, our next hand line is running order number six, and it's Heather Smith with a lovely dog called Google. She is eight years old, and they are performing to My Immortal. And uh, this will be a totally different from Lucy and Strikes. So this is going to be more controlled, a quieter piece of music. So uh, Heather is from Scotland, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people cheering for her today. Well, a totally different routine from Lucy and Strike. Very emotional piece there. And uh, Google enjoying her first time in the ring there. It's a lot for these dogs to take on because uh, often during the year we're, we're at much smaller venues. And so 
it's a lot for these dogs to, to take on with the environment and all the noise and everything. And sometimes they can't hear the handlers quite so well. But Google there doing some nice synchronization and uh, the rolls as the handler walks away. So creating distance from the dog. Heather, yeah, very experienced handler. Uh, having worked many bearded collies, she's always worked bearded collies in these finals. I'm just going to welcome Christine, our head judge. Hi. Hi, back from, um, back from yesterday. Can I ask you just to hold the microphone Sorry. up there? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so just a quick question. How do the competitors decide what to include in their routine? Okay, so once the competitors have chosen the music, they need to choose the music that suits them and the speed of their dog. Uh, and then once they've chosen that music and then they can start to choreo choreograph it. And, and then um, they'll, so they'll, sometimes the music, when you listen to it, says something to you and you think, yeah, I can, I can do a twist in there, or I can do a leg weaves in there. Or, so they'll listen to it and then they'll decide what they like to include and they need to try and tell a story at the same time. Okay, and is there a set number of moves? No, no, no they can put, and as long as they don't do too much repetition and they do a variety of moves, that's what we're after. Brilliant. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. A big round of applause for Christine, our head judge. Thank you. Okay, so we've had uh, six competitors up to now. And uh, here we go with uh, Google's score. And Google's score, 24.07 into fifth place. So we're on to running order number seven, which is Nikki with Elsa, who won the Heel Work to Music final yesterday and has won this freestyle final uh, a few times before. So they're a very experienced team. If you've never seen Elsa before, this is going to be a bit fast and furious because Elsa loves to do everything at high speed. Uh, both ex very experienced and... Um, both very used to performing in this sort of atmosphere because they've also represented Team GP at various finals in Europe. So they're performing to seize the day.
Well, I said it was going to be fast and furious if I knew what Elsa was like, and it certainly had that in it, but also had some very nice moments of excellent timing uh, with Dog and Handler working really well together. And one of the things the judges are looking at is team performance. It is Dog and Handler, although the judges will be placing emphasis on the dog's move, the handler is there to showcase that dog and aid it. So just a very simple move like we see there where the dog and handler turn together. That synchronicity of the dog and handler turning together or doing things together really presents to the judges that team performance, which uh, hopefully will score them well. Some nice little elements there of the dog holding the hat, um, and that would make a move that's perhaps basic a little bit harder because the dog is holding something and performing the move as well. So the judges will take that into account. Some nice little bits of distance work and facing away. But the thing with this team, I always feel, is you can see when Nikki says Elsa's her soulmate, you can really see that. They have a brilliant relationship. And well, already scores coming in there are looking quite good into the nines, um, which is really good. I don't expect there'll be too much deductions. I didn't hear any barking. So uh, that's looking quite good. So in and oh, look how close is that? 27.10 into second place. So I believe still in first place is Kim with Rio on 27.30. So that was pretty close. So we've uh, got seven down and we're on to number eight. And that is Lorna with the lovely Blue Mill working sheepdog called Nora. They're performing to a song called Into a Fantasy. And they made their first appearance last year, did very well. So hopefully they will repeat it this year. They say you can't do it. They tell you that you're dreaming. Give up. Touches you, you're way up high. No more worries, no more fears. You have made them disappear. Sadness tried to steal a show, but now it feels like many years ago.
Can the next competitor please come to the stage? Well, again, another different type of routine there with an excellent advanced section at the end there where the dog backed away, ran, went forwards, uh, but the handler was quite a distance away. And, and you can see that the handler had a, an idea to create a routine about a first violin contest, and that's what they were going down. It, it might not be what the song was exactly about, but they were playing out a story. The first violin contest, and then the dog reveals at the end that uh, Lorna and Nora have won. And uh, Nora, very enthusiastic. You can see that uh, this dog, I believe she loves a frisbee. So <laughs> she gets that as her reward at the end. Look at that happy face, wagging tail. Some nice little elements of um, uh, interpretation, but also, uh, timing. Uh, there was the moment where the dogs gripped her leg to pull her back into the, let's say, the ring. So that smiley, happy face of Nora. And uh, the scores are looking quite nice here with a 9.4 and a 9.5. They, Those judges are obviously liking that advanced section. Now, this looks pretty good, doesn't it? 27.53. Gosh, right. Well, there we go. We've got another two. Are they going to beat that? So you can see why the judges thought that that was a good routine. Had some nice little elements, a bit of flow going on, which the judges will have liked as well. Bit of a story. It sort of took you on a journey, and that's what you sort of want to do with the uh, routines. So... We're on to number nine shortly, and uh, this is uh, going to be their first time in the big ring. And it's always a very daunting thing to come out here for the first time. I'm sure the nerves are going to be sort of going a little bit. But uh, this is going to be Andrea with Bria, her five-year-old Border Collie bitch. And they're going to be performing to Mulan Leaves Home. Loyal, brave, true. So, really hope it all goes well for them today, because they will have never experienced anything like this before. Some nice focus to start. That's great. Off they go. It is an honor to protect my country and my family. So you'll die for honor. I will die doing what's right. But if you... I know my place. It is time you learned yours.
Andrea's going to be over the moon with that first performance for the dog. <laughs> and uh, the, it, yes, Bria had a little bit of a look round, but you were, it's understandable. The dog is very new to this sort of environment, and uh, she will come back, I am sure, in the following few years with that dog. And she'll come back stronger because she's been in the environment, but she didn't let her mum down, she was working her socks off there, trying to keep her focus, very enthusiastic little bitch. Some nice elements of uh, control as well during the uh, routine. The sword there being used several times, which will go down well with the judges because you're looking at whether that prop was being used. Um, and the dog did a very nice big circle out. We're just going to see it here. A nice big circle out holding. And that's not an easy object for the dog to run around with uh, because of the length of it. And uh, you've got to have a dog with a good solid hold. But that would have upgraded just a dog running around in a circle to something much more. Now, would you believe Andrea was watching this from her hotel bed? Uh, ho hotel hospital bed last year, this time last year, having a, a total hip replacement. So she would have been very pleased to get out there this year, I tell you. And uh, they did a really good performance there. So some good marks there. Um, some eights. Um, in, ooh, into uh, eight and uh, nine there in the interpretation a very nice emotional piece so uh, perhaps a little bit of noise obviously one judge heard something 25.77 so they i'm sure will be pleased with that they they ticked off their first appearance at crufts so we're on to our final competitor and this is lucy heath again you saw her with the lovely strike and now she's with the tiniest dog you've ever seen in this final, I, I tell you. He's a very 
charismatic cross street called Trip. He's nine years old and he knows he is it. He's uh, actually appeared in many adverts. He was in Silent Witness finding a dead body just recently. And uh, he's such a character. They're performing to the circle of life and I just can't wait to be king. And uh, he is such a cutie, this little dog. This routine is, I think, guaranteed to go down well with the audience just because it's so lovely to see a dog of a different breed out there, this tiny little charismatic dog. Great variety of moves there with little trip with his little crown at the end. 
It just fell down a little bit, I think. So, but he's going to do it there. There you go. Holding his little crown. So really brought the Lion King to life there, didn't they? And he's such a fun little dog, that. And it opens up different moves because he is small. He could, you know, get underneath the legs around there and etc. And uh, he is a, a bit of a character now. He was joining in with the singing there. And um, so I'm not sure whether the judges, how, how the judges are going to mark that. Because on one hand, there was lots of variety. But then on the other hand, he was having a little bit of a bark and getting a bit, a little bit of over excitement there. But I think the crowd are really ap <laughs> appealed and, and really loving this little dog. Um, and... Uh, I really uh, hope that the scores do well for this team because he's such a cracker, this little thing. Lovely little comedy there, lying on his back with his legs in the air. So, uh, he's nine years old now, uh, so he's an experienced dog at this level. And doing all the film and display work that Lucy does with him means uh, he's not phased at all by this environment. So, uh, 27 points, 5 5 is what's to beat. So, he needs some good scores here. Look, a 9.5 there. But I'm waiting for that deduction section. Please don't be too much. Jump at 6. Look at that. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. What a shame. 27.20. So uh, into third place. So uh, what a shame. But there we go. The, the dog is uh, having to uh, be deducted for that little bit of noise that was going on there. So we have our winner, which is the lovely Lorna with Nora. Uh, in second was Kim, that funny little uh, uh, doing the sort of uh, all about a boy or something, and Trip Hazard there in third place. Well, wasn't that a fantastic competition? A brilliant, brilliant effort from all of our handlers and their dogs there. The amount of hard work and dedication, the hours of training that goes into putting those routines together, you can only imagine. Uh, if you want to catch up on any of the heel work to music routines that you've seen, you can catch up on the YouTube Crufts channel where you can check out all of the routines from today. But now, please welcome back our three judges who've done an excellent job. Please welcome Jan Debnam, Christine Hodgson, and Brigitte Van Gestel. Thank you to our judges. Give them a big round of applause everyone. Excellent work from all three of our judges. And now it will be presentation time. Please give a big round of applause for all of our heel work to music freestyle handlers and their dogs.
And to present our top three, please welcome Angela White from the Kennel Club Board. Thank you very much, Angela. Okay. First of all, I can tell just how emotionally is. We've got tears down here. That's how much this means to our winner. Ladies and gentlemen, your Crufts freestyle competition heel work to music winner with Nora of Beacon, Lorna Sirrett. And Lorna will be back tomorrow representing her country in the freestyle heel work to music competition. In second place, with her border collie, Rio. In second place, Kim Linnan. <laughs> and in third place, what a routine it was as well, with nine-year-old trip hazard, Lucy Heath. Please keep the applause going, folks. It's lap of honor time. Isn't that amazing? A fantastic heel work to music freestyle competition. It's international tomorrow. Right now, we are going to be taking a very short interval here in the main arena. A perfect chance for you to head back into the halls and to do that all important shopping. Go and spoil yourselves, go and spoil your dogs, and go and explore all that Crufts 2024 has to offer. We will be back here at just after 1.30 this lunchtime. The fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV and Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Škoda. Echo made me feel happier than I ever thought a dog could make me feel. It's like she knew what I was going through as soon as she met me. I think she's my soulmate in a dog. I had um, Wilms cancer, which is um, located in your kidneys. It's normally diagnosed in younger children. It made me feel so poorly. I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. I needed help to even standing up. So before we had Echo, Freya had lots of hospital appointments. She was bed bound, she was very poorly, unable to walk, um, and just a shadow of the girl that she was. Echo joined the family and she brought back the smile to our little girl. She was encouraging her to get out. She did motivate her to walk again. And yeah, she gave us back our little girl. So I was looking forward to doing um, lots of things and she made me want to do them even more, like walking, playing with her. She's just amazing. Freya used to watch crafts with me since she was probably about three years old. Freya's objective was one day she wanted to get there. When we found out that she got to crafts on her first show, we were over the moon. Crafts last year was amazing for me. It was um, a once in a lifetime experience. It's just the most wonderful thing you can ever go to. I felt so poorly, but I said, I have to do this, like, it's the only chance I could get. I cried twice because, like, I was so happy I was there. It was massive. To know that Freya's got Echo is, like, knowing she's got her own support system. They've just got the unbreakable bond, best friends, snuggle buddies. She just syncs perfectly with anything Freya does or feels. They're just perfect together. My life wouldn't have just been as fun as it is now if I didn't have Echo. Knowing that if she doesn't feel comfortable enough talking to us, she's always got someone to talk to. She's always got someone to cuddle with when she's feeling down and in bed and not herself and doesn't want people. She's always got Echo to just be her best friend. She was my motivation to get home. I wouldn't have went through cancer without her. I can't imagine a life without Echo. She's just the most wonderful dog. 
She's the dream dog you could have. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. So Eliana was suffering a lot from anxiety before we got Gordon. I'm scared to think what would have happened to Ellie if he hadn't come along. We name him G-Dog or our favourite one is the BFG, Big Friendly Gordon. He's my herring dog and he helps me with everything like the timer, waking me up and like being my best friend and helping me mentally and physically. Well, I've got cochlear implants and I'm profoundly deaf. When I take my hearing aids off, my implants, it's complete silence, like you can't hear anything. She's a bilateral cochlear implant wearer, which means she wears it on both sides. We always say that gives her access to sound, but by no means it replaces her natural hearing. Unfortunately, due to her deafness, she has had quite severe anxiety issues. It got to the point where she would wake up and she would just vomit for the whole day. She was pulling out her hair. She wasn't very confident and she didn't have many friends either. Society doesn't quite understand what deafness is. Um, it can be quite isolating. It went from needing a hearing dog for the practical reasons, but also for the emotional reasons and for helping her with her mental health. When Gordon arrived, I think everything changed. Come here, Gordy. Come on, Ellie. From the get-go, he slept in her room. Come he on. watches over her at night. He gives me, like, a sense of comfort and just makes me happy. Life is fun. I wake up to pulling off my duvet because he recognises my alarm. He, like, gives me a sense of safety with the fire alarm because I know he'll wake me up. He's, like, my best friend. My anxiety problems are, like, still there, but, like, I don't really have them anymore. She's super confident. She's deaf and she's proud. Um, and I think that Gordon just helps other people understand that Eliana's deaf. There's so much more than just friendship to it. You can see that Gordon is always checking where she is in the house. He knows that he is there for her, so it's a real friendship, but the partnership on top, it's very special. He has transformed the person that she is. He has supported her mental health so much so that she is a completely different person to who she was before. It's been life-changing. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Before I had Phoebe, I had to be with someone who knew me and knew my condition 24-7. She has given me my life back. I wouldn't be able to live as a normal 25-year-old if I didn't have Phoebe. Here you go. Hold. Wait. I have a condition called hypermobile ehlers downer Syndrome. Now, for normal people, <laughs> that means basically my body doesn't produce any collagen, and any collagen that is produced is destroyed by my body. But the kicker with um, EDS is that it affects every part of your body. So for me, it affects all my internal organs and it does mean I'm life limited. Um, so I'm living on a shorter timeline than most. Phoebe's main role is as my medical alert dog. So the main thing she does for me is detect when I'm gonna play. I know. She's just done a heart alert. So my heart rate's just shot up from 80 to 120. It's only her first alert, so it's not a dangerous alert. It's just her first reminder for me to stop. She also alerts to my seizures. She'll lie on top of me to keep my body temperature. Um, if I have a seizure, she'll put herself between my head and the floor um, so that I can't bang my head. I'm a full-time wheelchair user, and with my condition, um, bending down is really difficult because it often triggers um, a fainting episode. So she helps pick things up, she helps me get dressed and undressed, she opens and closes doors. She just generally is both a medical alert and a mobility assistance dog. I'm a sailor. I have been competing since I was about 15 for Team GB. Um, and I now compete as a para-athlete. Before having Phoebe, before 
her medical alert. I couldn't sail on my own. She normally looks like she's asleep um, or watching the birds, but basically she keeps track of my scent so that I know if I'm gonna faint. Um, that means I have the time to safely get back to shore. For the past two and a half years, I have been able to race and train and sail independently. And I'm sure that sounds like a really small thing, but to me it was massive. Phoebe is not just my assistance dog, she's also a therapy dog and she brings joy and happiness to hundreds of people every week. Come on then, go say hello to everybody. We've done care homes, we've done universities, uh, we've done working with children with learning disabilities. She's not just my lifeline, she's given so many other people hope and joy. She not only gave me back my life, you know, in the house, she gave me my life back on the water. She gave me my sport back, the thing that I never thought I'd get back to competing. What she gives me, I can never thank her for. She's my hero, but she's a hero to everybody else as well. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Vespa has located live casualties and disasters all over the world and has saved many lives. And she gives not just me, but everyone out there hope. Vespa is currently a four-year-old Belgian Malinois Shepherd. She is a search and rescue dog both in-house for Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service and for UK ISAR. So um, Vespa was destined to be a police dog. Um, she was run for our puppy programme. Um, unlike her brothers, um, they all liked um, the police side of it, but um, with Vespa she was um, extremely kind, very, very social. Rather than a failed police dog, we class it as a re-educated police dog. She's gone on to do another role with um, Fire and Rescue, again, saving lives and um, helping people. The search and rescue dogs are vital to the Fire and Rescue Service. The role they play is they work on live scent. They will give a signal, which normally a bark of type, and they will sit in that position so we can identify exactly where the firefighters or the search and rescue technicians then need to go to start their digging. And I can't explain how important that is to families who have people who are buried in rubble overseas, like in Turkey last year. If we can bring one loved one to the surface, our job's worth doing, and Vesper has done this on numerous occasions. So when Neve and Vesper did deploy to um, both Turkey and Morocco, we arrived in country 36 hours um, after the earthquake had initially hit. There was mayhem on the ground and they continued and continued to work with the hope that they was going to find somebody alive. And they was able to make an incredible difference to the team and the people of Turkey. When they work together in very unsafe environments, obviously in quite treacherous terrain, they have to really trust each other and you can see that with Vesper and Eve. The role of a search dog in a disaster is to quickly as possible give us intel into that disaster as where possible survivors could be. What makes Vespa unique in this role is these dogs have to eliminate things quite quickly. Whether that be the odour of decomposition, food, animals, wildlife, they are just searching for the element of life. So she goes through a disaster and identifies the actual unique thing of breathing casualties. She's quite intuitive. She's um, a methodical thinking dog and she's very, very calm. She has this very, very strong nerve strength that doesn't react with stimuluses or environmental factors that most dogs or search dogs would find quite stressful. So she takes all that in her stride and yet has the ability to continue working in some of the most arduous, stressful conditions. Although it is a game to them, to us, it is a life and death situation. She not only gives us those important answers of where live counties are located, she gives me and lots of other people in the world hope.
wherever you are watching Crofts 2024. A very good afternoon to you from the National Exhibition Centre just outside of Birmingham. Jim Rosenthal here alongside Graham Partridge in the main arena. We're gearing up for the continuation of the Crufts singles. Heat throughout the year, scoring points. Only the best are with us today, a three-part competition. We've seen the jumping, now it's the agility, and they crunch the numbers for the final at five o'clock for the pick of the bunch. They'll all start from scratch in that. Four dogs from each height, small, medium, intermediate. And first of all, we are going to see the large dogs. I, I cannot tell you how many people are here. This arena is packed already. Tremendous on the second day of Crofts. Here comes our judge, Amanda Lutman, judging for the last 23 years, owned six dogs, competing for 31. Competes at the highest level as well. And she has done the arena party, she has competed, and she has judged. That is a very, very decent history, Graham. Yep, we only have the best of the best here, Jim, as you would expect. Uh, so she's absolutely thrilled to be here, and it's a great reward for a number of years judging for the Cow Club. And we await our, our first dog, the first of, of nine large dogs coming into the arena. Lisa Duggan with Pip. Six-year-old Border Collie. The first of, uh, of nine large dogs. And it'll be a tremendous final this round about five o'clock uh, UK time. All starting from scratch, but plenty of work for them all to do before then starting with Lisa, so Lisa well, uh, and Pip and so Pip's ready Lisa is nearly all set look at that concentration and away we go with Pip it's a tight right hand over the shoulder great sounds going through those successive tunnels over the IAMs towards us, far end of the course, up and down over the A-frame, makes good contact with that white section at the bottom too. How about the seesaw? Oh dear. Have to re-jump re that one. But all OK, all OK, just lost a bit of time. Retrieved that pretty well over the dog wall. Good speed as well, enters the wheeze from the right. Tail flapping. Another seesaw, that's another good contact. And a tight, tight turn to finish. 37.5 and clear for Lisa and from Pip. A good start. Was a good start. As easy as that, Jim? <laughs> says he. Uh, no, it's a, actually quite a tricky course, and Lisa there made it look really, really easy. To, uh, had a little bit of a fumble uh, before one of the jumps, but not enough for it to be marked refusal. Great round. Peak five-year-old Border Collie and that entry from America. Desiree Snellman from Sumner in Washington State. Remember this dog from this morning, really quick and eager to go. Can't wait for the next obstacle. Bit of an unorthodox way of taking the irons, but it's OK. It's still, it's still clean and it's still good. Fine 15 seconds work. Just touched that barrier, didn't go down there. It's all looking good so far for Peak and for Desiri. Over the spread, tight one at the top of the course, back down towards us, over the dog walk. Where do I want to go next? That's the way to go, through those weaves. And again, this is going to be a good time. If it keeps going, good contact at the end of the seesaw. Tight one, tight right hander at the top. That's good too. 38.9 and clear for the USA, Desire and Peak. Would expect nothing else from Desire in this partnership, but it's a great bit of distance handling there during the course helped her out of a little bit of a hole. But uh, another clear round, and um, as you say, that puts her into second place. Lisa Duggan from Sterling, second dog in this competition, of course. It's, no, it's, it's all right. It's not deja vu all over again. No, but she's walking quite slowly because I think she's still trying to get her breath. Well, so you I can't can blame her, really. I, I'd have walked a bit slower, probably, Jim. I was going to say, I'm sure a lot of you have said, all right, haven't we just seen her? Well, yeah, that is a very, very quick turnaround for Lisa and Sterling. Oh, Lisa from Sterling in Scotland and the nine-year-old Border Collie Tet. So we can forgive her, Lisa for just uh, taking her time a little bit. I don't know how you feel getting this this round underway. Well, I'm ready. What about you? And we're ready to go again. So Lisa with a clear round already under her belt. Let's see what uh, Ted can do. Good, good work, Ted. Lovely 
jumping style. That's Ted too. Over the shoulder, over the irons, and misses the spread up and have to come back and take that again. So just the five faults. Dog walk just missed the white section at the bottom of the dog walk. Five more. Seesaw good. And that tunnel at the top end and a tight right hand at the finish. Ten faults. 41.9 for Lisa Duggan and for Ted. Yeah, just a shave. She needs to call the dog here. Just the dog thought, I think it was heading towards the other jump, and the dog ran past it, which gets, uh, gets her a refusal. This is Lemon Border Collie, seven years of age. Nara Cuddy, the handler uh, from Leamington Spa. Team Silver in the European Open. Individual medal from the Agility World Championship this year in the Czech Republic as well. So these two, we've admired Nara's work many times here. At and that's a good start too. Round that Skoda jump up to the far end of the course. Confidently over the spread. The time is looking really good as well. Lovely work over the dog walk. Look at that through the weeds. Seesaw, terrific. And now the, this will be the pick of it so far. This will be the pick by some distance. 35.7, two seconds ahead. Nara Cuddy and Lemon, number one. There we go. You see she opted to take the dog round the left-hand side of that jump. The natural side is to the right, but it, the, the going round the other side is safer. Sage, three-year-old border collie, Annette Parker, the handler. First time at Crufts. Very happy to be here, both of them. I'm looking forward to a great future together, but now it's all about the present and the next 30 seconds or so. And sadly, uh, an elimination there. Amanda Lutman. Not the first we've seen today, but the course will be completed uh, by Sage, just three years of age big future and, and a first-timer picking up a, a valuable canine experience here and Annette very understanding completing the round as they have to do here the dogs have to get maximum enjoyment out of it no matter what has gone before So this is where the mistake comes. She actually wants to be on the other side of the dog. She had to cross behind, and therefore the dog's further away from her, and she loses that contact and that communication. Such a shame. Gertie, three-year-old Border Collie. The handler is Tunde Bell from Watford. Called the Beastie in agility. And this one is vocal. <laughs> Almost contact between the handler and dog there, not quite. Over the shoulder, it's a tight left-hander up to the irons. Beautifully over the spread, that's real class. Dog walk, terrific sight coming our way. Very good and it's quick as well. The tunnel up there, then the tight right-hander. This is going to be up there right in the mix. 36.0. Second place. Very nice there. Lovely shot, the dog going over the long jump. The long jump now actually is uh, a padded rubber. So uh, just safety is everything we do here, Jim. Tulip, five-year-old border collie, third in the jumping this morning. The handler from Middlesbrough is Carl Benson. So that's a, well, that's a terrific sight. Terrific. <laughs> She's ready to go, and off she goes, Tulip. Such an elegant style, too, but sadly, the wrong way. And uh, one misstep equals uh, a disqualification. Go on, Graham. Yeah, such a shame. I think just a bit of, just a moment's lack of concentration there. It's almost, almost as though it's brain freeze, and I mean that in the very nicest possible way. There's nothing but pressure out there, I tell you. Uh, running on the green carpet in front of the TV cameras and the lights and his almost capacity audience. But uh, I'm not sure how many times he's been here before, but he hopefully will take uh, a lot away from this um, uh, and learn. Uh, he just needs to make it a positive experience now for the dog. 
There we are, very nicely coming up for a finish. And you'll get a great round of applause from the uh, this almost capacity audience, as I say, Jim. Did well this morning, of course, Carl Benson Tulip finishing third in the jumping. Last year's winner, Eclipse, Border Collie, five years of age, and Dalton Meredith. Fantastic credentials, too. Second in the jumping this morning, reigning European and world gold medalist. Unprecedented, that. And a classy combination who will be expected to go very deep and have started very well. <laughs> Faultless so far. Through the weaves. Seesaw. Excellent. Tunnel no problem. Tight right hander. Right up there. Right up there. Inside the best as well. Just outside the best, I should say, by a couple of hundredths of a second. Dalton Meredith and Eclipse. Never write them off. Yeah, class, I think, is the only word to describe this. Pure class. Uh, just opted to do uh, slightly different uh, handling on the uh, IAM strap, which worked for him, and he'll be very pleased with that. Ticket, age six, Border Collie, Alan Bray, the handler, not age six. Part of the Cruft furniture and a calmer character you could not hope to find than Alan. First in the jumping this morning. Loving it. Knows every centimetre of the green carpet here at Crufts and an absolute role model. He said to me after the jumping this morning, life in the old dog yet. Plenty of it. Just picking up five faults at the end of the dog walk. Shame. But it's still going to be very good for Alan and for Ticket. Tight turn. Time is good right up there. Right up there. 37.6 and those are five faults for Alan Bray. And here we go. Yep, fairly easy decision for the judge. Perfectly positioned as always. So now that's uh, the end of the large competition. So Nara Cuddy, first in the agility. Uh, absolutely fantastic performance from, from Nara. We will see them later. We'll see Alan later as well, I am sure. Yes, here's the overall standings. A lot of number crunching will be going on this afternoon to decide the lineup for the grand final. Cosmo, Border Collie, five years of age, first of nine intermediate dogs. Kaylee Hewitt, the handler. Excessive tunnels and the IAMs really flew over that IAMs, had to make a tight, tight turn there. Good on the A frame, lovely contact at the bottom through that Skoda jump. I'm going fine, is the messenger from Cosmo. Good contact, end of the dog walk. Oh, yes, through the weeds. Setting the standard for the intermediate dogs, very, very quick and clear. Tremendous. Cosmo and Kaylee Hewitt. 34.7 and clear ground. Yeah, great bit of distance handling, a lot of layering there. Very, very nice round. Zest, eight years of age. Nicola Wildman from Preston, team bronze at the Worlds, and this combination runners up last year. A fast ball of fun. Away goes Zest. Successive tunnels ahead. No problem. Well done. Brilliant bit of handling there from Nicola. Keeping Zest on the right path. Devouring the jumps, really. I am clearing it by miles. No problem. And that Skoda at the far end. What a standard we got here. Good on the dog walk. Nicola pushing and pushing Zest. Excellent. The seesaw. Now the quick right hander. Good work. Good work from Nicola Wildman and from Zest. 38.9. Clear. Second place at the moment. And very, very nice there from Nicola. Uh, it's going to be a really, really good competition. It's shaping up nicely. Absolutely striking dog. 
Di Danielle Scott from the United States. Keep a close eye on the Iron Man, the dog. Very unusual. See why. Why they call him the Iron Man. Five faults picked up by the Iron Man. That will not deter his enthusiasm and his strength. A little bit slowly on the dog walk, though that will not to help them particularly. But don't forget that we are sorting things out after this to see who gets through to the grand final later on. And my gut tells me that the Iron Man will be there. 40.8, third place at the moment, Graham. Yep. Uh, having had five faults, uh, you've got to start pushing on. You've got to be one of the fastest five faults if you want to be considered for this evening's final. Gamble, six years of age, border collie. Stephen Richardson from Cumbria, the handler. Team bronze at the Worlds, these picked up, so this should be something special. It's good at the moment. Absolute in tandem. Handler, an animal. Stephen doing an impeccable job at the minute. Fine display, this. Just missed that white at the bottom of the dog or flew down it, and now the, very, very quickly the weaves don't work either. And all of a sudden, the bronze medalists at the World Championships probably have it all to do. They'll finish well, though, they picked up those 10 points. Not what they wanted, Graham. Yep, uh, from zero to ten faults in the blink of an eye. And there we are, coming in the second pole. Got to come in between poles one and two. Bam Bam, working sheepdog, Lindsay Spring from Chipping Sodbury, second year here at Crofts. Bam Bam loves the atmosphere, and it is brilliant. It's a noisy one. Oh, a bit of hesitation, but OK going over the A-frame. Precious seconds lost there, perhaps. The Skoda and the IAM successfully negotiated, but not this time, losing it at the far end of the course. And that means for Lindsay and Bam Bam elimination, but the course will be completed. I just enjoy the visuals. So just before the uh, elimination, we had uh, a bit of a detour towards the tunnel, but got away with it, didn't go past the entrance to the A-frame, so it was only a uh, well, no faults at all. Last year's winner, Phoebe, Tony Smith from Nottingham. Third Crufts appearance. And Phoebe and Tony retain their title. Animated from Tony. Phoebe doing well. 20 seconds gone. All good according to plan so far. Okay, excellent. High pitch squeal, but it works from Tony. Phoebe understood it. Coming towards the end now. This is really good too. Big right hander at the end. 36.3 seconds for Tony and uh, for Phoebe. Second place. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This really is a class field. Uh, if you've qualified for Croft singles, you've done very, very well. Zing, eight-year-old, Alan Wildman, the handler, third in this morning's jumping. So a partnership that is bubbling along nicely in form. International competitors. She gives it absolutely everything, but unfortunately, that wasn't according to plan. And Amanda Lutman, you can almost sense the judge's reluctance at making that signal. And a lot of the uh, oxygen sucked out, really, of this uh, massive arena, the main arena here at Crofts, packed to the rafters again. Sorry. 
So he really wanted to be on the other side of the dog as he'd made that turn, just lost the connection and the dog picking up the tunnel entrance for an elimination. Banana is the penultimate intermediate dog. Nara Cuddy, the handler from Leamington Spa, runners up in the jumping this morning. Just about over that with a little bit of hesitation, but it's okay for Nara uh, and for Banana. Oi, oi, you better come back round there. Seconds lost, perhaps. Fine style, though, at the top end of the course. And good contact with the wide at the bottom of the dog wall. Not the quickest, but it is clean so far, and that is very, very important. Seesaw successfully done as well. Up through that tunnel, a little tight uh, at the top of the course. That's really good. 37.1. Up in the top three go Nara and the yeah, banana. Very, very nice range there. She had a bit of a close moment earlier on, but it is the people who react the quickest when there's an issue who win the day. Otto, five-year-old border collie. Michelle War from Gloucestershire, the handler. These two first in the jumping earlier today. Can they repeat that now in the agility? Remember the time to beat 34.7 seconds and clear as well. And this is this is quick, this is accurate, this is confident work from these two. Excellent star. My goodness me, that's quick up that top end of the course. The time is top class. How about the weaves? Whoa, through we go. Lovely, lovely, no problem at all. Seesaw, stop the middle at the bottom, of that's fine. Tight right hand, it's going to be really, really close, this one. 35.0 place, 34.7. What a spectacular performance. Second place, though. Yeah, as I said earlier on, this pair just, have just found their form. They are on fire at the moment. Really, really pleased with them. So Cosmo and uh, Kaylee Hewitt, the first 34.7 seconds, and Michelle, who just uh, seen a 35.0. A lot of clear rounds, terrific competition, and we will see quite a large number of them later in the grand final. Louise Godwin from Gloucester Drift, the first of nine small dogs, mixed collie cross, this one. Like all the handlers, and I dare say all the dogs as well, absolutely delighted to be strutting their stuff in front of a packed arena at the National Exhibition Centre. 7,000 plus in here already. Pretty good this looks to me. We'll set a very, very acceptable standard. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. Absolutely. 35.7. Well, first of the smalls, and that could take some beating, Graham. Hey, good. You said pretty good. I say really good. Uh, great, great round. That's going to take some beating, as you say, Jim. Robin keen to go, seven-year-old working cocker. Karen Boardman, the handler, first time at Crofts. Qualified both for the championships and the singles. Let's see if uh, Karen can keep this cocker under control and keep it keep her quick and keep her accurate as well. Lovely so far. Graham, you really enjoy seeing those cockers run, don't you? Uh, yeah, I love these, mate. absolutely love them. But uh, this dog is flying, almost lost it behind her just now. Recovered it really, really well. Great end of the dog walk there. A bleak entry into the weaving poles, picked up really nicely. Must steady down now for the seesaw, makes a touch to white bit. Very nicely done. This is shaping up for a round. Is it going to take the lead? Oh, not quite. quite. Not quite. Very close. Gum dog day today. Seven Cocker Spaniels in this uh, competition. How appropriate that is, and a fine performance from Robin and Cara. Pecom is off and running. Rachel Ward, the handler, lives life at 100 miles an hour. Distinctive handler as well is Rachel. 
Great animated work from Dog and Handler. Lovely over the dog walk. What a sight that is. Brilliant pictures. This will be close to the best. This will be really close. 33, 34, 35, 36.0. It's not close. They have smashed it. Another great round there. Look at the enthusiasm in this dog. If anyone ever tells you that dogs don't like doing this or are forced to do it, they don't know what they're talking about. They're having a ball out there. Seven-year-old Bruce and Julie Dunlop from Banbury, third time at Crofts. And the more Bruce screams, the more he is enjoying it. We are reliably informed. Quality in the small section continuing here with Bruce from Banbury. 25 seconds gone. All clear and all shaping up very well. They want to hang around for the, the final shootout later on. Great work, absolutely great work. 37.3 for Julie Dunlop and Bruce. Top four. Amazing, they had a few problems in the jumping this morning, so uh, that round here on the green carpet across will more than make up for it. Julie will be very pleased with that. Off and running from Spain, Samuel Sanchez Peacham with Taxi, four-year-old. Now remember, they started off very well and got an elimination in the jumping this morning. They would be hoping for better in this afternoon's agility through the Skoda. And over that... Uh, that spread at the far end of the course. This is much better from Samuel. But sadly, as I was saying, they pick up another elimination. Come a long, long, long way to get here. Taxi, taxi for Samuel. Again, not what they would have wanted, Graham. No, such a shame there. Uh, but a really, really nice seesaw. It's got to be touching the ground before the dog gets off it. Yes, met that criteria nicely. Three-year-old River's ready to go. Jane Chenery is the handler. Sweet little girl away from agility, where River shows all her competitive qualities and loves a scream. I rest my case. <laughs> That's good over the A-frame for the River Screamer. Bit of hesitation, but in the end, five faults picked up. Going over the shoulder. Good contact at the bottom of the dog walk. Again, where, what about now? OK, time uh, ebbing away, and a, a few faults picked up as well for Jane and for River. 42.4 into the top five. There we are, dog turning away from the jump when it was in the position to do it, so that picks up the refusal. Spider, eight-year-old working cocker, Lily Woodford, the hand, the fabulous little dog. This one made up to agility champion last year and come here in good nick, third in the morning's jumping session. There goes Spider. Both tunnels absolutely fine. What a beautiful looking little dog this is, Brad. It is, but she is so tight on these turns. Just look at it. Now, hopefully, this is going to be a running dog walk straight into those weaving poles. Yes, nicely picked up. In out, they must complete to the end. And then we've got the control section. Slow it down a bit. Yeah, and now they've got to get a tight turn around 18. There we go. Very, very nice round. 36, 8, 7, 9, Jim. Fourth place uh, for Spider and for Lily. Very impressive, and everybody here, and I'm sure no matter where you are, watching all over the world on our YouTube channel, would have loved that. Sizzle, six years of age, Shetland Sheepdog, Katrina hands the handler north of the border, second in the jumping this morning. So they, too, had a taste of the carpet and have enjoyed it and want more. They will expect to be here for the grand finale later on this afternoon. And looking good 
in the first 15 seconds of this round two. Katrina working really hard. It's, it's a long way up and down, up and down the green carpet. And this is really, really good. 30 seconds. 35 the time to beat. It won't be far off it, I don't think. Just a couple of seconds. 38.7 and most importantly clear for Katrina and for Sizzle. Yeah, puts her into sixth place. Uh, very nice at all. You see the dog just keeping its eyes on its handler, doing everything it's asked for him. Great round. Last of the small dogs. Winner of the jumping this morning. Summer, 10 years of age. Very wild 10-year-old. Dawn Weaver from Portland, the handler. And Summer, a dog that just eats up the ground. It's almost just a little blink there. Well done, Dawn. Rectifying that one. Good work in the middle section of the course. 20 seconds gone. It's clear. Time to beat 35.7. Won't be much in it there. They're going to have to push hard now to beat that time. Good work on the seesaw. Up there. Tight right hander. It's very, very tidy. 38.5 into the top six for Dawn and for Summer. Yep, Con this pair continue to compete at the highest level, say 10 years of age now, uh, and still doing remarkably well. So then, a double for Louise Godwin and for Drift. First in the agility this morning, and uh, uh, I should, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, my apologies, no, winning this one was not first in was not first this morning but a good performance from louise godwin and from drift all those numbers by the way will be whirling through computers to get the best of the best for the grand final in a couple of hours time first of nine medium dogs carlos passarino first time for goma four-year-old working cocker and for carlos from portugal Good to see them here. They've travelled nearly 1,500 miles to get here. Elimination in the jumping this morning. And another elimination here. Taking the wrong, wrong side of the third jump. What a shame for these two who have worked so hard and travelled such a long way to get here. Picking up a, a couple of eliminations on Gundog Day here at Brooks. So here we go, over one, over two, and then it should be round the back of the next jump. Unfortunately, it comes over it from the wrong side. Away they go, Endeavour, five year olds of age, and Laura Chapman, last year's winner, very successful last year. Didn't go so well in the jumping this morning. We'll look to rectify that this afternoon in the agility and a flying start, as we would anticipate, from Endeavour. Great skill, speed, accuracy. Good contact, great contact, and barely a pause at the end of the dog walk. Look at them eating up the weaves, Laura and Endeavour. This is really good. Excellent time, too, for Laura. Tight turn at the end of it. Fantastic. Last year's winners, 35 and clear. And number one as things stand, Graham. Yep, last year's champion actually showing her class now. She'll be really pleased with that. Great performance from this bear. Willow, six-year-old working cocker. James Adams from Ettington, the handler. And an early fault. Picking up an early five faults, these two. Great pedigree, but uh, almost from nowhere those uh, faults can occur if you're not careful. But to remind all of you watching here that uh, uh, we'll see the very best back when everything is sorted out after this. The very best will come back for the final later on this afternoon, and that is well worth watching. Second place so far, Dan. And there we are too, just mistiming the jump, the plastic poles very easily dislodged so there's no chance of the dog hurting itself. 
for Vegas. And Dawn Weaver. One of the regular handlers we see here at Crofts is Dawn. progress through that uh, middle part of the course and then taking a long course and heading for the tunnel instead of the Skoda jump and that's they were eliminating the jumping this morning another elimination uh, for Dawn and for 10 year old Vegas yeah such a shame I, I think it took Dawn a bit by surprise really she assumed the dog was coming with her and it's just like where are you going well, I'm going to the tunnel I don't know where you're going mother is it <laughs> Eliza, bearded collie, Charlotte Baker, the handler from Shepton Mallet. Competing together for nearly three years. Second year in the main arena here at Crufts. And they've worked tremendously hard to get here, as indeed has everybody, no matter what the activity at Crufts. Striking looking dog as well. Though. Really distinctive dog. Oh, it is, but as I say, this is a round of tight turns, um, good lines, uh, yeah, very nicely handled as well, so she's shaping up to be a great round. Just keep my fingers crossed for her. Yeah, it is. Rapturous round of applause from this crowd. Second place at the moment then for Charlotte and for Eliza, very acceptable and probably good enough to ensure that we will see them again. Bliss, seven-year-old border collie, Sammy Pegg, the handler. Really excited to be back here, these two. Low to the ground, making rapid pace, though, Bliss. Well, Bliss, keep this going, and you will be right in the mix in the next 10 seconds or so. Have to really push on now, push on hard over the seesaw, push hard through the tunnel, take that right hander really quickly, and that's a good clear round 38.8, three seconds off the pace. Third yeah, place. They've got to make contact with that white bit at the end. Judges in the perfect position. Very nice. Well done. An ultimate medium dog, Harvey, nine-year-old uh, cocker spaniel, Jane Chenery is the handler. A noisy one, first cocker. And now uh, Jane has his daughter and son as well. If she, if she knows how noisy it is, I'll probably be her last one as well, Jim. I don't... <laughs> Yes. But this is shaping up for a really nice round. They're a great partnership, this. As a Cocker Spaniels now. Oh, bit of confusion reigns there, so... And still reigns, but just picking up the one refusal there. Three refusals anywhere on the course. Counts as an elimination. A lot of time lost. Ten faults incurred as well. But they never know what's going to happen. You never know how those numbers are going to fall. So Jane will have to complete the round and to complete it as quickly as she can. Jane Chenry and Harvey, 44.9 and the 10 faults. Fifth place at the moment. Oh, yeah, just taking that pole off there before the elimination, such a shame. Fia Meta and Rachel Ward underway. Splendid work in the first 20 seconds from Rachel and uh, Fia Meta from Colville. We know they are in the house, and this is again going to be really, really good round from Rachel and uh, Fia Meta. 38.6 and Fia, third place. Round. Yep, very nice. Lots of vocal encouragement through the weaves. You're allowed that. The only thing you can't do in agility is to touch the dog. 
Maggie, four-year-old Colby Cross and Liz Carpenter. So, first in the jumping this morning. What can this pairing do in the agility? As our enthusiasm builds towards the grand final, and they can't do much is the answer to that question. Uh, because Amanda Lutton crosses her arms, and that means, sadly, an elimination. For Liz and for Maggie. Again, the course will be completed. And uh, as ever, Graham will point out to you where it all went wrong in just a few seconds' time. Liz Carpenter and Maggie. Just to say, just a little bit of miscommunication there. I think the dog took it as a cue to go round the back. In actual fact, it wasn't, and that's where they picked up the elimination for going over the wrong jump, and uh, the right jump in the wrong direction. Gotcha. So, Laura Chapman and Endeavour, last year's winners, first in the agility this afternoon, and looking really, really good as we wind up towards the grand final in a couple of hours' time. I hope that has whetted your appetite for it. And to present our winners, we are delighted to welcome Angela White of the Kennel Club Board and Fiona Hope, the CEO of You Move. The winner of the Crufts Singles Small with The Fate of the Furious at Vamonalu, Louise Godwin. <laughs> and the winner of our Crufts Singles Medium with agility champion, leave their dream come true, Laura Chapman. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the winner of the intermediate cross singles with agility champion, Manic Jack Summer Like a Sauna, Kaylee Hewitt. And the winner of the last. Cross singles large winner with agility champion Lil Hayes Dark Pleasure, Nora Cuddy. Please keep the applause going, folks. It's lap of honor time.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen some fantastic agility here uh, in the last two days, and not least um, led by our international team, GB. So please put your hands together for the GB Agility Team 2023, and also cast your eyes to the cube. So here we go, we have a parade of uh, our senior international teams. I can tell you that we have had the most successful year in the international competitions that we have ever had. Uh, in total this year, uh, counting the World Championships, the European Open Championships and the Junior Open World Championships, we've actually won 23 medals. So the, uh, we won uh, six medals at the European Open, two gold individual, two bronze individual, one team silver, one team bronze. And at the World Championships, five medals, one gold, two silver, one team gold and one team bronze. We top the medal tables in every championship that we've competed at. So there we go, uh, the guy on the right there with the uh, flag raised, that is Greg Derrick. He's the international team manager for the senior and junior teams. He has made the most difference to our team. We have a professional approach now to selection, coaching and motivation. Uh, a lot of our success is down to him, but there we go. Yeah, sorry. So included in that group, we've had a guy called Dalton Meredith, who actually was the individual gold medalist at both the European and the world. I could go on for about another 10 minutes about how good a year we've had, how brilliant they've been, but uh, they've had a fantastic uh, ovation here from this crowd. Very, very well deserved. The fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV and Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Škoda. Before I had Phoebe, I had to be with someone who knew me and knew my condition 24-7. She has given me my life back. I have a condition called hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It affects every part of your body. Phoebe's main role is as my medical alert and a mobility assistance dog. She's also a therapy dog. She's not just my lifeline. She's given so many other people hope. She not only gave me back my life in the house, she gave me my life back on the water. She's my hero, but she's a hero to everybody else as well.
And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. I'm scared to think what would have happened to Ellie if he hadn't come along. He's my herring dog and he helps me with everything. Well, I've got cochlear implants and I'm profoundly deaf. Due to her deafness, she has had quite severe anxiety issues. It got to the point where she was pulling out her hair. When Gordon arrived, I think everything changed. He has supported her mental health so much so that she is a completely different person to who she was before. It's been life changing. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Vespa has located live casualties and disasters all over the world and has saved many lives. She is a search and rescue dog, both in-house for Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service and for UK ISAR. So when Neve and Vespa did deploy to um, both Turkey and Morocco, they was able to make an incredible difference to the team and the people of Turkey. Although it is a game to them, to us, it is a life and death situation. She not only gives us those important answers of where live counties are located, it gives me and lots of other people in the world hope. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. I had the Wilms cancer. It's like she knew what I was going through. I think she's my soulmate in a dog. So before we had Echo, she was bed bound, unable to walk and just a shadow of the girl that she was. She did motivate her to walk again and she gave us back our little girl. To know that Freya's got Echo is like knowing she's got her own support system. My life wouldn't have just been as fun as it is now if I didn't have Echo. She's the dream dog you could have. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA.
Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge welcoming you back here. We're all set for the medium, intermediate and large ABC final. Oh, these are all ABC dogs, anything but a collie, if you're not up to speed with those initials, by the way. Three height categories, large and intermediates for grades one to five, medium right across the board, that's grades one down to the top grade seven. Points gathered over the last 12 months. We had the jumping first thing this morning. Now everything online in the agility and it is the medium dogs going first we welcome our judger Andrew Dicker judging for over 20 years Andrew last judged at Crofts as the agility judge at the YKC so first to go is going to back be in 2011 Sinclair. we await our first competitor first of eight medium dogs Robin Sinclair from Spalding and Jasper five-year-old working cocker Otherwise known as uh, Jasper Carrot, famous comedian from around these parts in the Midlands. Five years of age, second time at Crufts, competed in the Novice Cup final last year and came runner-up overall. Looking at Jasper, who will get the first of eight medium dogs underway, and that is Robin, Robin Sinclair. Off we go. You'll get Graham to talk you around the course as the competition progresses. And he's had a little look at what uh, what awaits uh, uh, what awaits the dogs. And sadly, we the first dog of eight mediums. We have our first elimination on course. Robin and Jasper. Yeah, and as I'm fond of saying, Jim, uh, once it starts to go wrong, it continues to go wrong, and that's because you're thinking about the original fault and you're not putting everything into the dog. Uh, not quite going to plan here for Robin, but this is a great partnership. Uh, love watching them run together, and they've had a fantastic year so far, and they've done exceptionally well just to qualify for Crubs, Jim. That was good to see Jasper at the bottom there of the seesaw. You have to make contact and ensured that contact was made. Zafira, six-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, and Sue Midgley, doing agility for 36 years, has Sue. First competed at Crofts over 30 years ago. Sensational, long-standing performer. Just losing a little bit of time there, but it's all okay thus far. Just made contact at the end of the dog walk. Good work through the weeds. This is good from Sue and good from Zafira. Well done, Sue. Keeping in close tandem. Where do you want me to go next? Again, precious time lost there. And then we look for the seesaw at the far side of the course before the final obstacle is cleared. Good effort. 38 and clear for Sue Midgley and Zafira. Yep, a little bit of an argument halfway round the course between dog and handler, but they got it sorted out in the end. Well done to Sue. Been competing for a lot of years and a great competitor. Taxi, eight-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, and Tanya. Go on, Graham, talk us round. So we're on jump to jump four now already. So this is a long, straight piece. They've got to send the dog away from, and it's just a nice left turn here. Really is a nice course. It's up and over the dog walk. Only need to touch the down contact these days. Into the weaving poles. Must go to the right of the first pole and continue in and out until they get to the end. They must be completed correctly. Sending on now. They're, now they've got to pull in. And now it's into that tunnel, 
And this is a fairly straightforward run in now. Jump, seesaw, the seesaw must be touching the ground. The dog must touch the up and the down on the seesaw, but a great round there. Clear round, 34, 6, 7, 2. Good work from Tanya and Taxi. Tanya calls her Taxi because she would take me places, taking her to top place as things stand. Zico Jr., Nigel Staines, one of those Kelpies, eight years of age. Nigel has been there and done it. Enthusiasm unbounded. Go, 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 says to Zico. Tight right hander over the U move. Through the tunnel is fine. Two or three in quick succession on the far side of the course. The dog walk just hopped off the edge of it, as Graham has pointed out, missed that uh, white section at the end, and that means an outstretched arm, and it means five faults. Good work from the Kelpie, though. Love seeing these dogs run, and Nigel driving, driving Zico Jr. towards a grand sand finish over that uh, cross jump at the end. Third place for Zico and Nigel. So this is it. Zico actually fools Nigel completely here because he thinks he's coming down the end, just hops off the side as well. So uh, well done, Zico. Away we go with Laura Warwick and Blossom, five-year-old working cocker, first time qualifying for Crofts, these two. A working cocker. With a huge appetite for this uh, agility course here on the second afternoon of Crofts 2024. Spectacular jumper. This is a good round. Very impressive work. 30, 31, 32, 33.2 for Laura and for Blossom. That's number one. Yeah, really nice course this by Andrew Dicker, giving these uh, ABCs every opportunity to strut this up and show you just how good they are, Jim. You're looking at Rue, eight-year-old uh, Cocker Spaniel, Blythe Fox from Bedworth, the handler. Eight years of age, qualified as a two-year-old for Crofts. An agility champion and a proper barker as well. The louder Rue barks, the more the enjoyment. <laughs> Come on, what's next? What's next? What's next? Great sound crashing into the tunnel, but sadly, a wrong course ruins the round very deep on for Blythe. And Rue's round is ruined. Yep, she'll be ruining that mistake, Jim. Oh, good one, Graham. Well done, mate. Well done. You're sharp. You're sharp. So there we are. I think the left arm stuck out by the handle. I think you just saw it there. Just the dog took it as a cue to go round the back, uh, and it's easily done under this pressure. ED, working cocker, another noisy one, Georgie Lott from Worcester. A really talented dog, a really talented. And you can see that not lacking in speed, that is for sure. Quick left-hander, dog walk, look at that, in a flash, blink of an eye. Excellent. That's the way to go through the weaves as well. Hardly touching any on. This will be right up there with the best if they keep it going, it's if. Always a big word in the chin, a little hesitation, a little flutter. It's OK, though, it's really good. Little touch on the end of the seesaw, 31.3. First place, first place at the moment for Georgie and Edie. Well done, Georgie, great round, great partnership, well handled, lovely course, brilliant. Last medium dog, Skedaddle, four-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, Stephanie Best, a really good combination, these two. Won at Crufts last year, team's bronze medal at the European Open and a gold medal at the Worlds. And they know in front of them 31.3 and clear is the target. Oh. oh, dear, dear, dear. Dear, dear, dear. It's the target, but they will not hit the bullseye. Skidaddle. Sadly eliminated. Oh, thank you. And again, as ever, as ever, despite her disappointment, Stephanie completes the round and will get the normal warm ovation from a packed house here in the main arena at Crofts.
So there we go. The dog just took the jump before, just at the wrong angle, putting it at the, at the wrong presentation for, for the seven. But uh, great, great job. Georgie Lott and Edie, the best by uh, almost a second. Tremendous work, but do not forget they will all be back later on. The best will race against the best in the grand final. First of the intermediate dogs, then Pam Mayhew and Danica, seven-year-old. First agility dog, this for Pam. Danica's second appearance in these finals. And an appearance that will not last very long because uh, Andrew Dicker are reluctantly crossing his arms for an elimination. Yeah, such a shame there, as you say. Uh, but as you said, what you need to remember is these people have beaten hundreds and hundreds of other people uh, throughout the year just to qualify for this. So, and it's really great that this is an ABC. So just remind you, it's anything but a collie or a cross collie. So great for them to have the opportunity to strut their stuff without uh, having cocker spaniels or, um, or no, sorry, without having border collies in the way. The final continues then. Claire Flowers and Red, eight-year-old mixed. Graham, talk, about, uh, talk us through this one. Yep, they've got to push around the back of three into the tunnel. This is the fast bit of the course now. They've got to keep them on a straight line towards the next jump. Oh, a little bit of a twist there. Looking at our judge, I think he's got a, she's got away with that one. Did turn a circle, but uh, wasn't judged in a position to be able to do the next obstacle. Just making sure they get the contact at the end, that's what you're after. But she turned away from that jump there. So that is classed as a refusal. So now into the weaves, must enter from the right side alternately, and they must be completed correctly before you go on. Sending the dog away now, calling it through the gap into that tunnel. And a push on now, real push on out. Now she'll want to get a good start going down this line onto the seesaw. This is where we are for the control for safety reasons. And a very nice finish there. 45.8 and a few faults along the way for Claire and for Red. Viva, four-year-old mixed. Jasmine Wise from Crickowl in Wales. Apparently in the first year of university studying veterinary physiotherapy. Is Jasmine. Also take part in scent work and uh, man training, search and rescue training, these two. But this is all about agility. Straight final we are watching here, to remind you. Not the fastest, but it is all clean and all correct. And a very acceptable performance is from, from Jasmine and from Viva, Viva. Still a very respectable time there, Jim, 37.508. Uh, and look at that, two footing through the weaves, absolutely brilliant. That dog is having a ball. Cassie Webster and Ace underway already. Se Seven-year-old uh, Spaniel and English Springer. It is gun dog today and there are quite a few gun dogs on view here in the agency. Just picking up uh, five faults there, Ace. And another few failed to complete the weaves as well, and uh, we'll have to go back to the start, and that will uh, compromise Cassie and Ace's time as well. But no matter what happens, uh, Cassie made it very clear before she competed, we take the best dog home, one in a million, and dedicating this run to our special boys, Ben and Charlie. <laughs> Just say, what, you, did, what did you want me to do then, Mum? Can I go yet? So, and we've got a mistake in the weaves here. They've got to complete them correctly in and out. And you see, he comes out before he's finished and just said, what are you doing? I want to get on with this. You're watching Yuna, seven-year-old uh, retriever, Nova Scotia, duck tolling, another gun dog, Laura Middleton, the handler. Distinctive uh, dog. And, uh, the, full, the full circle, but it's uh, OK. But... Um, that young forgiving clock ticks away. Just about all right at the, at the end of the dog walk as well. 
daintily, but not especially quickly through the weeds. Still clear in this final. Now the big finish down the far end of the course. Over the season, over the cross jump, the front finale, 40.7. Good enough to be second at the moment. Yep, kept it clear. Crept into second place there. But you can see that both of those handlers are having an absolute ball. The dog's saying, have I done good, Mum? And she's going, you bet you have. Really nice shot. Isabella Taylor and Twiglet, four-year-old Spaniel, another of our gone dog breeds, just made contact with the bottom at the A-frame there. Twiglet, good work. A little pause to make sure there was contact at the end of the dog frame. Others have gone over that quicker. But it is clear and it's clean. Graham? It is, but while you're watching this young lady, I should tell you that she is the under-12 junior world champion. What, what a performance. Remember the name, Isabella Taylor. Little pause, little come pause. On, come on, come on, come on. There's 7,000 people saying, go on, go on. <laughs> it's still clear, 41.6. Well, we won't forget that. We won't forget Twiglet. We will not forget Isabella Taylor, under 12 world champion. Such a shame. Such a shame. The dogs are taught to. She's obviously taught the dog to stop on it and then not to go till it's uh, called. Probably didn't hear her with all the noise that's going on. This is Ella, penultimate intermediate dog, retriever, Nova Scotia duck tolling, one of the retriever breeds. Janine Coleman from the Isle of Man, the handler. Nicknamed. Dozer, short for bulldozer. She will not want to be bulldozing any of the obstacles uh, here today. Gives an amazing scream, apparently. We'll listen out for that if she gets super excited. Not yet very calm and going about uh, her work, Ella. Very confidently and very competently as well. Good left-hand turn. The tunnel rattling through there. What about the last piece of the course? This is really good. 31, 32, 33, 34.3. Screams of delight from Janine and from Ella. Number one, the penultimate intermediate dog. One to go. Do you think she's happy, Jim? I think she is. Look at that. And quite rightly so. This is a remarkable achievement. Last dog underway. Carl Green, Loxley, a rescue dog. The rescue dog knows 34.3 and clear is the target. Up to pace, up to speed at the moment. But that is an awesome target over a second quicker than the rest of the field in this final. And the round compromised there to such an extent that there is an elimination for Carl Green from Colchester and from Loxley. So Loxley loves his bread and his reward for doing anything as a sandwich. He'll get his sandwich at the end of this, Graham. I know you fancy one as well. Yeah, he will. Um, but uh, I think that's what they call taking a liberty sometimes, so he won't be too pleased about that. But he's still smiling, and that's what it's all about. So Janine Coleman, first in this final. Amazing performance with Ella. And, uh, well, the difference, three seconds to the rest of the field deserve those screams of delight at the end of it. <coughs> You've heard him. It's Rune, four-year-old, another Australian Kelpie, Cathy Withal, the first of eight large dogs, a joy to train this one. This is Cathy, first time at Crofts. Run as fast as they can down the Such honest, genuine dogs, the Kelpies, but uh, a little bit of miscommunication there. Picking up five faults, refusal. Uh, and, yeah, just made contact at the end of the dog walk. Nip and tuck that. Cathy from uh, Holsworthy down in Devon. Starting off the eight large dogs that we're about to see in this final. Good work, good work. Five faults, 36.4. Very nice round, just the, just the five faults there. The refusal going past the jump, heading towards the next one. 
This is Murphy, nine years of age, Leslie Ann Moore, the handler from Newry in County Down. Tail wagon enjoying it. Just about, no, I thought it was going to say just about got away with it, but Andrew was spot on. Just failed to make contact with the white section at the bottom of the A-frame. That'll be five faults. Over the dog walk. Again, we've seen one or two go slightly quicker than that. But it is a walk. I'll go at my pace. Five more faults, just clipping that, uh, that barrier. Hushed crowd watching this, willing Murphy to uh, get round in his own time. Yeah, they're absolutely loving it, the crowd, because, as you say, they're seeing all sorts of different breeds, which just means that, that you don't need a collie or a, a working cocker spaniel to compete in this sport. Very well done. She's very pleased with him. Second place as things stand, then, for Leslie and Moore. Great to have an Irish entry here and Murphy. Drico, try, handler is Lorna Kennedy from Edinburgh. Drico named after the Irish... Uh, uh, rugby legend Brian O'Driscoll on the basis always finds a gap to run through like the great rugby player did but unlike uh, Brian O'Driscoll does everything in slow motion <laughs> uh, motto slow and steady which is probably not a great motto when it comes to the speed of agility no, <laughs> he's excited believe me he's having but he's having a great time <laughs> and that is but you see Jim this is what it's all about Brilliant. it's about going out having fun with your dog and he's having a ball and so's hopefully so's Lorna Drico going for the gap that's the touchdown that's a try for Drico well done well first as things stand my gut tells me there might be just a couple of slightly quicker dogs to push Drico down the list promise three-year-old another gun dog a retriever Kate Fowler the handler from Market Raisin picking up an early five faults in this round home two-year-old home bred Labrador first year of competition wonderful jump that full circle great to see a lab out there as well Brad. yeah I'm, I'm a lab man I'm afraid it's uh, love love to see these dogs doing what they're bred to do as I know they're not working in the field but they are working and that's what they're bred for and they just love it coming up now John to the seesaw must touch the white bit they do very nice well done and she's very happy as well Third place, 38.2, just picking up a couple of faults on the way, but um, everyone here mesmerised almost by the sight of the lap. Charlotte, five-year-old bearded collie, and Emma Bryden from Kilmarnock. First competitive agility dog for Emma. Childhood dream to get here. This is a noisy one. Such a shame, picking up the wrong side of the U-move jump there constitute an elimination but hopefully she will collect herself and just make sure the dog finishes on a positive note here I'm going to say as a handler there must be a really sinking feeling when that happens so early in the round but you've got to just get on with it and complete the round. It is but you've got 8,000 people here watching <laughs> and how many millions on the on, yes. on the on the net you've got to smile yeah sizable numbers watching Crofts on on YouTube and, uh, and indeed on uh, terrestrial television already. But I keep making the point that there are probably two or three hundred other people who are going, I wish I'd qualified. Absolutely. <laughs> Emma well Brown and uh, Charlotte complete the round. Such a shame that happened early on. Skeeter, six years of age. Julie Ann Darlington, the handler from Garstang in Lancashire, rescue dog, and came to live with uh, Julie and seven other rescue dogs as 11 months. So six years of age and taking an early five faults there. And another five as well. So ten faults very early in the round and, uh, and Skeeter slightly unsure where Julie Ann uh, wanted him to go next. Lovely jumping style though, Graham. Really good. 
Yeah, he's having a great time. Look at the way he went through those weaves. So hopefully they're just picking it up quite nicely now. She changes the side. Make sure she's got the dog on the left because there's a right turn coming up. You always want to be on the inside of any circle. You make with the dog. And a very nice round appreciated by uh, this near capacity crowd. But as I say, 10 faults. Fourth place at the moment. Did well to make that correction heading for the dog walk to Julianne Darlington and Skeeter. Wonderful images as ever in the main arena at Crufts. Dodger, six years of age, Australian Shepherd, Emma Wallace, the handler from Castleford. And uh, Emma saying that handlers often say their dogs owe them nothing. Dodger owes me a new coffee table, a skirting board, an HDMI cable, a solar panel, caravan awning, and approximately 12 toy boxes. Every day with Dodger is an adventure, and they will have an adventure here and hopefully won't smash the place up. I hope so, because we're going to need this equipment later on. But uh, <laughs> no, he's fully focused here, I think, on job in hand. Very nice as well. But you're going to have to work to stay on top of him, but coming up here for a nice finish. Can he get this seesaw? Yes, he can. Oh, great finish. Well done. Really Just good. Five faults. Really good. Just the five faults. Second place, and they were runners up last year as well. Well done, the destructive Dodger. The last large dog, Amy, from East Grin from East Grinstead. Amy, I should probably pronounce that one. <laughs> Doing these runs in uh, memory of Grace's first uh, ever Malinois, Kia. Clear so far, <laughs> waiting where to go. Big hesitation. Sorry, there is an elimination there. Missed those crossed arms. I mean, sadly eliminated, but still full of running, Graham. Absolutely, yep. She'll carry on. Oh. She'll put him back on there. Yeah, he's going to go back on anyway. <laughs> is that what you wanted in the first place, Mum? Yes, I think it was. So, picked up a fault. She touches the equipment, which, uh, strictly speaking, would have been five bolts, but they've already been eliminated. He says he wanted me to go back on it. He's gone back on it, and now they can finish and have a laugh about it. <laughs> well done. Fantastic. Slow and steady. Won the race. Lorna Kennedy and Dricko running for Brian O'Driscoll. Took their time, but got the result. Got the valuable points in the end. Well done to Lorna and well done to Dricko.
Well, it was a fantastic novice competition here at Crufts 2024. A huge thank you to our judge, Andrew Dicker. And now for our presentation to present our winners, please welcome Angela White of the Kennel Club Board and Andrew Smith, the Chief Marketing Officer of UMove. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as we first of all present the individual winners of that particular heat, the Crufts Medium ABC Final Heat winner with Pickthorn Holly, Georgia Lott. And the winner is a novice ABC final heat in the intermediate with Red Velvet, Janine Coleman. And the large novice ABC final heat winner with Copperstill Tempest, Lorna Kennedy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And now we present the overall winners of the Crufts Medium ABC Novice Final. The overall winner in the medium with Pickthorn Holly, Georgie Lotts. <laughs> and the reserve. It goes to, with Midnight Bloom, Laura Warwick. <laughs> and the overall winners in the inter intermediate, Novice ABC final, your overall winner with Red Velvet, Janine Coleman. <laughs> And our reserve with Tarnock Forever Fancy, Isabella Taylor. <laughs> and our winners of the large novice ABC final, the overall winner with Copperstill Tempest, Lorna Kennedy. And our reserve with Stockyard Roughstock Rodeo, Emma Wallace. Please keep the applause going, folks. It's lap of honor time. Well, once again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to Crufts 2024, day two here in the main arena. As you can see, we are in the process of building our course because coming up next here in the main arena, it'll be fly ball time. Oh, yes. It's going to be quick, it's going to be loud, and flyball is so exciting and so exhilarating. Outside this arena, there are lots of people who want to come in and watch the flyball. So please, can I ask, look to your left, look to your right. If there are empty seats on your row, can you please move down? Please fill in the gaps. We want to fill every single seat in the arena. There's a huge queue of people outside. We want as many people as possible to come in and enjoy the flyball. So please, any empty seats, even if it's just one empty seat on the end of your row.
remember, ladies and gentlemen, the louder you cheer for these teams, the faster these dogs will go. That is how flyball works. We have the run set, our judges are in position, the line judges are ready, the boxers are ready. We're going to bring the teams out in just a couple of minutes. When we bring the teams out, we will also be live on Channel 4, so make sure you are making lots of noise for these teams. We've got Ta the teams Jim Rosenthal today. and Graham Partridge welcoming you back. We are all set for the fly ball, the round of 16. We lose uh, four teams here today. We lost four teams yesterday. They will go through then to the uh, uh, quarterfinals on uh, Saturday and Sunday semifinals and the finals. You're looking at our judge, Craig Burrows. Spent the last four years with his team focused judging here today and was a very effective judge on the opening day of Crufts as well. Graham Partridge, what an atmosphere building up here. A bit of sweet Caroline we've had. Everyone ready to rock with a fly ball. It is electric, Jim. I mean, the place is just absolutely rammed to the rafters. Everyone's just expecting some fabulous fly ball racing, and that's what we want to see here this afternoon, Jim. And uh, if you're watching for the first time, do not move a muscle, no matter where you are watching anywhere in the world. We've had a lot of reaction, a lot of reaction to our fly ball coverage. Messages coming from all sorts of countries, Portugal included, and uh, great fans. And this sport is getting a worldwide gathering now. It's unpredictable. It's a sport for all. Wide variety of dogs. Fly ball, one big family, but when they compete, my goodness. Goodness me, it is a really sharp-edged competition. We had all sorts sure of drama yesterday. We had balls good. flying that all over the place, like didn't we, Graham? Dogs running in, in one leg. Work it out I if you can. One thing is so certain, this sport is not predictable. Uh, uh, the word of the day yesterday was mayhem for a couple of the races. They asked me to pick the, pick the bones out of it, and I couldn't. But I think we're That's getting ready better. to go, Jim. What do you think, Becky? Getting ready to go, so then... Uh, we have uh, eight teams here today where there are going to be four races, the best of three, and uh, we will lose four. It's unforgiving. We lost four yesterday. Uh, the reigning champions uh, went through those road runners from Belgium, but uh, they weren't, didn't have a perfect day by any means. And uh, today we wait to see who will survive and who will exit the building. And the first teams are about to appear, and they will get a massive reception as well. Those two teams are uh, North Hans Falcons and Tails We Win. And uh, here they come. Northampton Falcons from Northampton will, will head towards uh, the blue lane. The Falcons established in 2006. Two YKC members in the lineups for this team as well. 12 year old Sienna and 14 year old Izzy. Fa family based and very, very consistent as well. Tails we win on the red on the far side. Well, they also have a, a, a young loader, uh, Meadow, Meadow Bannard House, 12 years of age, in for the injured Louise Messenger. Fantastic. Runners up to the road, runners last year, the UK record holders are tails we win. And, uh, and really, really keen to impress. North Ants Falcons, Sienna Mabbott. And Izzy Coleman Meller, the youngsters in that team. This will be a practice run, this will not count, so they'll get them all warmed up and, 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 and ready to go. North Ants Falcons will start, will start running out with Finney. There, the youngsters from the Young Kennel Club, look at them all set to go as well. And uh, there is a uh, Meadow Banana Hounds, the box holder. We are all set. It's a practice run for the opening heat. North Hans Falcons in the blue lane, that being the near lane, established in 2006. A, a real family base, and uh, with a 14 year old Izzy. Coleman Meller running Lola, the third dog, and 12-year-old Sienna Mabbitt running Fiddy, the opening dog. Moose will run second, Lola third for Northampton's, for Northampton's Falcons. Tails, we win. 
in the red line. What a consistent team they are. They will run Kaniki first, Arlo second, Nico third, and Bruce fourth. And they have a 12-year-old box loader as well, Meadow Bannard House, who's come in for the injured Louise Messenger, 12 years of age. They will expect to go deep into the competition, provided they go through today. That is Tails We Win in the red lane. That is the far side lane. Tails We Win, the UK record holders. Best of three as ever. Tails We Win in the red lane. North Ants Falcons in the near. A packed arena, and the fly ball is underway on the second day of Crufts 2024. Hold your breath, hold your breath. Here we go. It's a good start by the Falcons in the blue lane, but Tails we win, fine run from Kaniki on the far side, it's just with Tails we win, a drop ball in the blue lane on this near side, a fault on the, on the near side, so this is going Tails we win's way, and uh, Bruce completes Tails we win in, in that uh, red side, surely that's going to go to the Tails on the red as, 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 as another doctor run of course for the Falcons on the near side. And, uh, well, tails we win, one to the good, the UK record holders. Very clean and efficient, Graham. So, there we go. Here we go. Ball take, misses the ball, fumble, but then it doesn't come back over the four jumps, constituting the fault, and it means that another dog had to run again. So, tails we win, one to the good. Another win here, and they go through, and North Ants, it's not a long journey. They will be heading back home. The UK record holders, Tails, we win. Expect to go deep in the competition. They made a great start. It's a fine start on that far side as well by the first dog of Tails, we win. It's with Tails, we win on the red lane. Still with Tails, we win, looking really, really impressive. One more dog to run for Tails, and they have this in, but it's a fault on that. It's a fault on that red side. They'll have to run another dog. They will have to run another dog. And this could well square things up. Tails we win, having to run a... It's one apiece, and we're going to have a decider. Drama early on, Graham. It was North Ants Falcons uh, evening it up there. We love a runoff. And I believe it's a crossover fault, so meaning they had to rerun the dog. Makes it one all. One all. Everything on this one. Everything on the next 30 seconds or so. It could be an early exit, it could be a shock exit. For last year's runners up, Tails we win. Can Northampton Falcons upset the apple cart here? There's a fault in the blue lane early on though. An early fault for the Falcons, and that will do them no good at all. Tails we win, have this one in their grasp, providing it all goes according to plan on that red lane on the far side. It looks pretty good from where I am sitting. It looks pretty good. The extra dog having to run on the near side uh, for the Falcons. And the form team come through, the UK record holders come through. Tails we win, oust North Ants Falcons. So, Tails we win, take it. Such a shame for North Ants Falcons. They went through the beam before they were supposed to, so that's effectively a false start, which means that they needed to rerun the first dog again. But they had no chance to uh, win it uh, with Tails we win having a clean run. Confirmation then. Tails we win, British record holders, runners up last year. They are on their way.
takes some doing, Razzy, that as well. Yeah, the junkyard dogs. Junkyard Dogs formed in Yorkshire in 2018. This just a practice run. Junkyard Dogs in that red lane. 16 members, 36 dogs. Start dog, Mac, six-year-old. Next up, Shuffle. Looks small, mighty with fast feet. Third up, Rival. And anchor this year, Can I? No stranger to Crufts and the powerhouse of the team. And Junkyard Dogs fancy their chances of going deep in the competition. Aces will uh, lead off uh, with Vendetta, then Rampage, then Icon, and then Venom. Uh, good time, high to mid-14s. In their ranks, the brilliant Hustle, a personal favourite of mine in their squad. Hustle, now 10 years of age. Eighth year here for the Aces, and they will expect in that blue lane to be up there in the final shake Blue Lane Aces, the Junkyard Dogs in the red. Teams, are we ready? Let's race! Off and running and a fine start by Junkyard Dogs. Excellent, that first dog. Mack still with Junkyard Dogs in the red lane, but Aces are closing up on the blue, and it's with Aces now in this opening leg. Aces to win this. With Venom, and Aces, Aces get it. Great Burrows points our way, but Aces have it. So round one to Aces, what a great run. I don't think there was probably about more than half a second in this. That's the sort of races we like to see, Jim. Close, tight, clean. So... Junkyard Dogs, that mixture of Yorkshire and Manchester, one down, looking to pull it back. Aces looking to confirm their superiority here. Previous winners of this competition, the Aces always give a great account of themselves. A family team, proper contenders. Aces showing their quality again in the blue lane. Away they go. It's a good start about that first Aces dog. It's just with Aces, but it's very, very close. This is exceptionally close, still with Aces in the blue lane, but very close racing here. Aces only just now stretching away with a bit of a lead, a bit of a daylight between them. Can the fourth Aces dog bring it home? Yes, he can. Aces, confirmation, blasting the junkyard dogs out of the competition. Through go Aces, looking to make a big impression. What great racing there. Dogs one and two uh, were neck and neck. And then the third dog for Aces just managed to pull out another couple of yards. And then the fourth dog for Aces pulled out another couple of yards. But great, great, great racing, Jim. Fantastic work by Aces. Team captain Jeanette Shelley, the box loader, Maya Stapleton, ball collector Regan Stapleton, and the whole team as well. Look at the elation there from the Aces. They are not going away quickly. They've got plenty more cards to play in this competition.
We're all set then. It is the third heat here today. Cambridgeshire fly ball in the red lane. Now, Cambridgeshire fly ball has supplied the lights to this competition for the last 11 years. They are hugely important as well from Cambridgeshire fly ball supplying the lights to light up this arena for fly ball. And they are up against Storm Chasers in the blue lane run by Vicky Dore and Daryl Ogden. Second time here, best time in the high 14s. They got a 15-year-old Emma Wagg in their squad as well. Cambridgeshire fly ball in the red lane and the Storm Chasers in the blue. On times, this could be very close indeed. Cambridgeshire, a big team in the red lane who train really hard. They will run crying first, Tristan second, Vegas third and Kylo fourth. Meantime, the chasers run Glimmer first, Jeff second, Opal third and Hashtag fourth. And they are off and running. And Glimmer's run a good opening leg for the Storm Chasers in the blue lane. It's with the Storm Chasers at the moment. Opal the third dog and the last Storm Chase dog, Hashtag, to bring it home. Well done, the Hashtag. Very close race, though. Storm Chasers blowing their way to victory there, Graham. What a great race. Cambridgeshire Flyball were a really quick out of the blocks there. Um, and in the end, Cambridgeshire Flyball uh, maintained their lead uh, and took it by two or three yards. Good racing. Well, high quality competition we have seen here. Cambridgeshire Flyball team captain Anita Howard, the box loader Kelly Reeve, the ball collector Channing Smart. Cambridgeshire Fireball knowing they're going to have to pull this round. The Storm Chasers, Tony Kane, the captain, the box loader, Abby Brown, ball collector, Sue Allen. The Chasers are looking to finish off this round here. Near side, it's looking good again for the Chasers, it's very close indeed. Two faults on that red side mean things are looking very, very good for the Chasers to go straight through here decisively, providing they keep it clean and quick. Fine turn by Hashtag again for the Chasers. And that, to me, looks like job done for the Chasers. We will wait for the, the final dog uh, to finish for Cambridge a fly ball. It is job done. That is effective. That is impressive. Watch out for those Chasers. They look a very effective, well-drilled team, Graham. Yeah, they're in ominously good form here. I mean, the, the, the standard of fly ball and the teams just keeps going up and up, and I'm not quite sure how we go. I mean, wouldn't it be great some stage if we could break the 14-second mark? Tremendous action, great pitches. I hope all that emotion is coming crashing through your screens as well. Hashtag finishing it all off, new kid on the block. He's got the looks and he has got the speed. A commiseration to Cambridge, a fly ball. Keep an eye on those chasers. Okay, we are ready for the fourth and final leg on the second day of the fly ball here at Crufts. Yorkshire bouncers in the red lane. First time they've qualified for Crufts. They are celebrating their 25th anniversary as well. Wisp will go first. 
hyphen second, quota third, and Urban will run fourth in the blue lane. Brick, Muttley, crew, regulars, very consistent. And they run Lollipop first, now all second, Stevie third, and Jeff fourth. First completed in Crux in 2014, and always make an impression. That is the Muttley crew on the near side, and they are neck and neck at the moment. It's really close. There's a fault on the red side, on the red lane, a fault for the bouncers. So this looking good for for uh, Brig Monthly Crew on the near side. A couple of faults for the red lane, the Yorkshire bouncers, who haven't got off to the start they wanted. And indeed it comes Brig Monthly Crew's way on the near side. It turned out to be quite a straightforward win there for Brig Monthly Crew. There were two faults there. Uh, quite clearly there was a, a changeover fault there. And then coming back there, coming back over the jumps, great shots, and that's how they're supposed to do it. Ball in the mouth over the four jumps. Looking very good for the Muttley crew then. Box loader Lucy Dab, 12 years of age, first time box loading at Crux of the adult team. And off to a, an excellent start too. So the Muttley crew then in the blue. One more win here of the next 20 seconds, and their job is done. Very close at the moment. Lollipop, a good start. It's still very close, just with the Muttley crew on the near side with Nell. Stevie, just, but it's, they made up ground really well. This is so close. This is so close, this one. Very, very close indeed. It could well have gone to the bouncers. It has. They bounce their way back into contention of the bounces. What a close race that was, Graham. Closest race we've had in the last couple of days. Right up to the nail, you weren't quite sure, but the Yobos pulled it out of the bag, kept their composure. Really great and exciting racing there, Jim. Brilliant battle between Urban and Jeff. And the bouncers, Yorkshire bouncers, pulled it back. One apiece. Another decider. Everything on this. Who is going to go through? Will it be Yorkshire Bouncers on their 25th anniversary or Brig Monthly Crew? Cruft Records, very experienced with a 12 year old uh, box loader or Lucy Dab. Away we go. There's a fault on the blue in the blue lane. A fault for Brig Monthly Crew. That will hurt them. Two faults indeed for Brig Monthly Crew in the blue. So this is set up for the Bouncers. Yorkshire bouncers will surely be going through. There's one fault on the red side. They're going to have to run an extra dog now. But I think it's only one fault for the bouncers and two uh, for the Muttley crew. This is surely going to go the way of the bouncers, isn't it? Confirmation? It is. It is. The Yorkies have bounced back into contention. They have bounced back and they stay alive at Crump 2024. Brilliant performance from the Yorkshire bouncers, Graham. Yeah, it was. Three faults for Brig Muttley Clue, one for Yobos. They were on the ball, they realised that they had to run an extra dog, which they did do, and uh, I say Brig Muttley were in, uh, in a bit of a bit of a tangle there. They had no chance of winning it after that. There we go then. First time at, at Cross, as that confirmation of what Graham was saying, that ball getting dropped. First time at Crufts for the bouncers of the team. They got a YKC team, a young kennel club team competing as well. And the bouncers have bounced their way into contention and we will see them again in the quarterfinals. And just take our breath and confirm Tails We Win, Aces, Storm Chasers and Yorkshire Bouncers, the four qualifiers from day two of Crufts 2024.
So now the fly ball action continues as we decide the Friday champions. Tails we win in the blue lane on the near side and aces in the red. This, the runoff to decide who is going to get bragging rights to be Friday champions. Very, very close, but there's a, an interruption. There's a hurdle. Yeah, one of the jumps has been knocked over, so they will rerun this particular opening leg. Just confirmation of what happened there, and of course the dog's safety is of paramount importance. A yeah, ball yeah. got so dropped we're there, just going to rerun and, dog three and, and four, and it got to uh, clatter. Dodgy it, dogs, mate. We're just going to do dog three and four. It got yeah. clattered. So just dogs three and four rerunning. Did I hear that uh, correctly uh, from Craig Burrows, our judge? Just dogs three and four. Uh, tails, we win in that blue near side. By the way, just, just, just the two dogs. To run, but that would be a little practice run on that far side. Go on, Brent. And that's just for a safety reason there, just to make sure that the dog's actually got it and not going to knock it over again. So. Tails, we win. For Jays, line. In the blue lane. Aces in the red. Just two dogs to run because of that uh, collision. It's a rerun of the whole thing. I apologise. I thought he said just two dogs to run, but it's the whole it's the whole race being run. So tells we win in the blue lane, trailing at the moment. Fine work from Aces on the far, but there's a fault with Aces on that far side. There's a fault, but even so, they come right back up Aces. And I'm looking towards the judge, but it's that fault. Cost them dear, tails we win on the win. near side. I go one to the good as we seek to decide Friday champions, Graham. Yep, so a fault on behalf of Aces there, uh, basically gifting the, the win to tails we win. And giving them no chance to catch it up. Just, just, just confirming, tails we win are one to the good. Ignore that caption. Tails we win, one to the good in the blue leg. Tails we win making a good start as well. This could be a deciding leg. Still with tails we win in the blue lane. Tails. And there's a fault on the tails we win, I'm hearing, so they will have to run an extra dog, and that will mean that aces will square things up. Red lane win! A win for the red lane, and one apiece, and another designer ground. Yep, wait, aces squaring it up uh, just adds to the tension. If you could get any more tension in this arena, Jim. So, all to play for. Bragging right says to see who can win today's. See why they see where that uh, that fault occurred. So one all the deciding one. Tells we win in the blue lane. UK record holders, don't forget. Runners up in the world expect to be here on Sunday against Aces in their squad. The brilliant hustle weather reruns. We shall see. It's with Aces in the red lane. Only just very very close. Still very close. Just to my mind with Aces in the red line. There's a fault in that red lane though, so they will have to run an extra dog. So it's looking good at the moment for Tails We Win. It is looking good. They're punching the air are the Tails We Win team. Megan Lamont, Helen Welsh, Joe Lamont, Gareth Hutchings, Caroline Bernard, Paul Morgan, Meadow Bernard Howes, Natalie Horgan, and do not forgetting Meadow Bernard Howes, the 12-year-old box loader. Well done, Tails We Win. Yeah, it was uh Two clean runs there for Tails We Win, uh, and the fault with a drop ball uh, by the Aces, uh, basically forfeiting the leg. No practice runs here as we strive to decide the identity of uh, Friday's champions. We know Tails We Win 
are going to contend the final and now we will find out storm chases in the blue lane second time here running the high four teams normally a really good team and yorkshire bouncers who've made a terrific impression so far enjoying their 25th anniversary year yorkshire bouncers shaping up in the red lane Teams, we ready? <laughs> You're on the telly, by the way. I like seeing her face on the screen. <laughs> Here we go then. Yorkshire bouncers in that red lane. Storm chasers in the blue. The chasers have it at the moment with that opening dog. It's going the chaser's way in the blue lane. Really quick and really clean. Third chaser's dog stretching the lead. Keep this steady, keep it fine, and it'll be the chaser's victory. Very comfortable, very competent. I'm winning by a sizable margin there. The Storm Chasers. Storm Chasers got off to an absolute flyer, faultless run from them, uh, and there's probably almost uh, three or four jumps different come the end. They just basically took them apart, Jim. A destructive performance by the Storm Chasers then. Blowing up an absolute hurricane here at the NEC of the Chasers. And Yorkshire bouncers, well, they scrapped back before and they will have to fight back again, will the bouncers. What have they got in them now? Can they retaliate? The first time as the debutants here at Crofts, the bouncers from Driffield in East Yorkshire. We're away and running. Bouncers trailing at the moment. The Chasers well up with that second dog, well up. The Chasers are in immaculate form here, it looks. But there's a fault, there's a fault from the Chasers, so that has given the Bouncers some hope. Two faults in the blue, so the Bouncers have pulled this one round. They have indeed. One of those runoffs looming, Graham. It is, but uh, a couple of faults there for the Storm Chasers, very unusual. They were looking in really, really good form. So I think we had a, a, a fault on the change over there. Just looking to see whether we can see the other fault. Dogs come back without the ball, so uh, I think he's probably dropped it on the way through. One all. One all. The decider looms. Emphatic performance from the chasers, and then it unraveled a bit. And the bouncers have clawed their way back in. Bouncers in the red lane, chasers in the blue. The chasers from Littlebrook, we're away. Chasers trailing at the moment. There's a fault on that red side there, so it's looking good for the chasers in the blue lane. Second dog up and down in a flash. Here goes the third chasers dog. They are strolling to victory here as things stand. And completed surely for the chasers on the near side. It's the chasers are going to go through. We have to wait for the final dog to run, of course, for the bouncers. And the bouncers, well, pretty much summed up, uh, summed up their afternoon. They dropped the ball. But there's a fault in blue. There's a fault in blue as well, is there? Hold on here. And they're going to have to run another dog on that on that red side. I think I am right in saying that this is going to go the chasers' way. I would imagine. I think this is going to go. Let's just wait for the confirmation and then, Graham, you can sort it all out for us. As Judge Craig ever. Burrows is just inquiring with his stewards. Just explaining to the teams what happened. Yeah, so we, just to be safe and be fair, I'm just going to rerun the leg. Yeah? Okay, we have a rerun. My ring party don't know whether he swapped the ball, so we're just going to rerun it. Yeah? All right, got to keep it fair, got to keep it straight. Was that a question of the ring party not knowing whether the ball had been uh, been dropped, Graham, or something like that? But anyway, we have another rerun, and they are both very much at the party and hoping to go through to the final to face Tails. We win to decide Friday champions. And so we go again with Storm Chasers in the blue lane. Teams, we ready! And the bouncers from Yorkshire in the red. Not much between them when there are no faults, it has to be said. Very competitive, very close. 
team captain Yorkshire bouncers Lindsay team, Atkinson, the chasers led by Tony Kane. <laughs> The Chasers on the near side getting away best. It's with the Chasers at the moment in the blue lane. Chasers stretching their lead. But there is a fault in the blue lane. Would you believe it? They're going to have to run an extra dog. Clean turn from the Chasers. Well, they might just do it even by running an extra dog. We shall see. No, they won't. No, they won't. I don't think so. They're going to have to run that extra dog. The Chasers... A bit. It's the Bouncers who have done it. The Bouncers have pulled this one round in the red lane. Well done to them all. To the Whiteleys, Magda and William, Isla Bukok and Adam Bukok, Sarah Robinson and Lisa Bukok, the very family team, the bouncers. Great effort from them, Graham. Yep, Storm Chasers having a, having a few problems here. Dropped just before it crossed the line. There we go. That means that that dog would have to run again, and that effectively gifted it to uh, the Yorkshire bouncers. Beautiful images from the fly ball. I hope you are all appreciating them wherever you are. And so we now have our final. Yorkshire bounces in the final against Tails. We win. They will probably just need a little bit of a breather, I would imagine, the, the bouncers, wouldn't they, Graham? And it's slightly unfair to thrust them straight into the final. They've got to have time for a little bit so of a wash teams. and brush up, haven't they? Uh, no, no, Jim. Is the, is the answer? No. OK. OK. You're in it to win it. They know, They know. as I say, with only eight teams in it, they know they're going to have to uh, have a very short break. Uh, but they're in the groove now, hopefully, so it, it will benefit them all to, to run quickly. Once again, they will go straight into the action. And, uh, and no great surprise that the uh, tails we win are out and are ready to go in the blue lane, the near line. Uh, the team run by Joe and Megan Lamont. Runners up to road runners uh, last year, runners up in the world, expecting to be in the last four on Sunday. The British record holders as well. The bouncers are ready to go on that uh, far side too. What a great fillip it would be for them. First time qualifying as a team if they manage to pull it off and become the Friday champions. That's the bouncers in the red lane. Tails we win have to be favoured for this one. Teams, are we ready? In the blue. Immaculate control from Craig Burrows, our judge. He knows this game backwards. They're off and running. It's with Tails we win just on, on the blue side. Still with the Tails. Second dog keeping that advantage. There's a fault on that bouncer side as well. So looking good for the Tails. And two faults for the red. In the, in the red lane, two faults for the bouncers, Yorkshire bouncers. Again, there's a bit of hesitation from our judge. Which hole is it, Doug? Oh, Outer or in? Outer. Every, every team, Graham, you explain this about the boxes. They have to bring their own loaders, don't they? When you're loading, bring your own push, loaders, push bring your own boxes. Yeah. Uh, okay, the the box should be capable of actually spitting a ball at least 24 inches. That's the that's the criteria. Um, and if there's a the judge deems that there's a fault on the box, he might well rerun it. Uh, so he's just uh, carrying out an inspection. As you say, Craig knows this, this job back. He's, he'll make a decision. So they just like to keep us on our toes here, Jim. Yes, it's good. Look, this, 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 uh, this is very, very important. Let's just eavesdrop, shall we, if we can? Running repairs carried oh, out it, I can't bend down. <laughs> to the Yorkshire Panthers. <laughs> no, no. And, and Craig. He's cracked it. He says, you better do it, mate. I can't bend down. You can identify with that, can't you, Graham? I can, mate. He's got his yeah. best suit on as well, so... Yeah. Bit of running repairs. And I guess we're going to start from scratch again after that. that we have yeah. to rerun the whole thing, don't we? But Craig will confirm. Yeah, we'll just, there we go. That's the rerun signal. Be a rerun. Finger over finger. Simply indicates a rerun from scratch. It's the Friday final, it's a rerun. It is Tails we win in the blue lane, Yorkshire bounces in the red. This to decide 
Friday's champions. Tailsby win with a smart start in the blue lane, just with Tailsby win at the moment, but making up ground on the in the red, other bouncers, but it's still with Tailsby win in the blue lane. Fine turn and great last dog going through here. It's with Tails in the blue, Tails in the blue. Have it. So, two, two clean runs, tails we win with just that little bit quicker, simple as that. Still looking a class act to me, Jim. The dog will be turning to the right, picks up the ball that's in the right-hand side of the box. Each dog likes to turn a different way. Tails we win, win this one, and tails will be the Friday champions. The bouncers, though, Immense courage, immense stickability. The Yorkshire bouncers, they have the ability to fight back in that red lane. The bouncers have it just at the moment. It's with the bouncers in the red lane. Bouncers lead getting eaten up. It's now with Tails in the blue. Tails in the blue lane have it as the third dog completes it on. It's very, very close indeed. It's still just with Tails in the blue lane. But a hesitation there as the bouncers oh. nicked it. Did the bouncers come back and nick it? They did. They did. Oh, amazing. What a recovery! We said they had massive recuperative powers. What a comeback that from the bouncers. How tight was that? You thought that Tails would win a good. Look at the speed that, and the distance that dog for Yobbo's made up. It's just absolutely amazing. This is the one that counts. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant recovery. Gives us the climax that we want to decide the Friday champions. One apiece, Yorkshire bouncers. What an amazing recovery to take this to a third leg. Tails we win. Fourth they have it in the back. Who's going to get it now? It's the bouncers starting well in the red lane. The bouncers have it in the red lane only just, but Tails making up ground in the blue. It's neck and neck at the moment, just with Tails. Third dog with Tails, third with bouncers. So close, just with Tails. It's still with Tails in the blue lane. Can they bring it home? Oh, yes, they can. Oh, yes, they can. Tails, we win. The UK record holders bring it home after a monumental battle. Monumental with Yorkshire bouncers. And Tails, we win, are the Friday champions. Runners up last year, hoping to go all the way this time. Spectacular fly ball racing again, Graham. They, they did win, but I wasn't holding my breath, you know. When that last, last dog ran, I thought he was going to catch him again. Just shows you that the overall quality, Jim, of the dogs that we're seeing this year, uh, these races, are, I know they've been littered with a few faults, but, as you say, the dogs are getting quicker and quicker. So, Tails, we win, are the Friday champions. Brilliant fly ball, two more brilliant days to come. And I know wherever you are watching, you will be here to enjoy it with us. Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge saying bye-bye to you all. Thanks for watching. presentation. Please welcome Jonathan Wilson's home, Pro Area Business Manager at Royal Cannon and Angela White of the Kennel Club Board to do our presentation. Please give them a round of applause and please can we thank our judge who's done a brilliant job today, Craig Burrows. Thank you, Craig. And now the winner of the Crufts Flyball here on this amazing Friday afternoon. Please go crazy for Tails We Win! They deserve every second of their big moment. They are such a brilliant team. They have done so, so well today. Huge congratulations. Our winners, Tails We Win. And can we get a big cheer? Their first time at Crofts, and boy, have they done well. Your runners up, the Yorkshire Bouncers!
Don't forget to join us tomorrow for more Flyball on Super Saturday. We'll see you for the quarterfinals. Right now, make some noise because it's lap of honor time. Okay, now you can make some noise. It's lap of honor time, everybody. consider just how different dogs are to us? Puppies grow up six times faster than them. Well, there is still plenty to come here in the main arena. Day two of the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2024. Earlier today was our heel work to music freestyle competition. And what a competition it was. We saw the action continuing in the arena here. Reasons. And after all uh, the hurly burly and the excitement uh, of the fly ball, we are going to have a spotlight performance now the of the freestyle oh, heel work oh, to music oh, final, which took place earlier today. Uh, we're going to see 31 year old Lorna Sirrett who won with Nora of Beacon, her five-year-old working sheepdog, and she will go forward to Saturday's international freestyle final, representing the UK then, uh, alongside competitors from all over the world.
So here is Lorna Sirrett with Nora. So this is Laura, five-year-old working sheepdog, Nora, and their routine really is something magical indeed. They're taking us into a fantasy. Your heel work to music, freestyle winner. They say you can't do it. They tell you that you're dreaming. Give up. Touches you, your way up high. No more worries, no more fears. You have made them disappear. Sadness tried to steal a show, but now it feels like many years ago. Can the next competitor please come to the stage? fabulous performance that was full of emotion and if you think that Lorna is a first-time dog owner and came to Crufts uh, last year and picked up a bronze she was amazed by that and in January 2019 she was in a wheelchair with arthritis and says that Nora gave her a goal and a focus 
saved her life through dark times. And here she is back at Crufts with Nora, just showing that anything is possible despite her arthritis. Congratulations to Lorna and to Nora. Plenty more action still to come, of course, in the main arena, culminating in the group judging of the gun dogs uh, later this evening. But in the meantime, we will be shortly bringing you a display by West Midlands Police, so don't go far away. Find him. The fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV and Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Škoda. Before I had Phoebe, I had to be with someone who knew me and knew my condition 24-7. She has given me my life back. I have a condition called hypermobile ehlers downlos Syndrome. It affects every part of your body. Phoebe's main role is as my medical alert and a mobility assistance dog. She's also a therapy dog. She's not just my lifeline. She's given so many other people hope. She not only gave me back my life in the house, she gave me my life back on the water. She's my hero, but she's a hero to everybody else as well. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Move, 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 move. Go, grab him, grab him. I've got him, I've got him. Please do the dog, stand still. Stand still, get him. Well, we will be shortly Welcoming into the arena, Inspector Leanne Chapman from West Midlands Police, who will be your compare for one of the most popular displays here at Crufts. Uh, West Midlands Police, the dogs and, and their handlers are always hugely popular. And here is Inspector Leanne Chapman, so Good stand by for I'm plenty Inspector of action. Chapman from West Midlands Police's dog unit. I, I must stress that all of the dogs that you see here today are either trainee police dogs or operational police dogs. And all of the people that you see here today either work for us or are volunteers for us. All of the uh, handlers that you will see today have given up their free time in order to show you how fantastic our police dogs are. So I think we will kick it off because today we're going to show you the journey of a police dog right from a puppy all the way through to when they retire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Puppy Vixen and Police Dog Stark. Vixen already showing how confident she is, only four months old. Into the arena now, we've got some of our dogs that are going through our puppy development program. So all of these dogs are around six months old. And we're just gonna show you what we do with our dogs in order to develop them as they come through our breeding program. So our breeding program is Kennel Club Assured. We have our own breeding program as part of West Midlands Police. And all of the dogs that go through that program then go on to be operational police dogs or they work for other government agencies. So here we've got them winning the toys. We want them nice and focused, complete, come back onto the decoy and then a nice fixed grip onto the toy when they get it. Again, we're gonna get the dogs barking up. When we get the behavior that we want, we're gonna give them a reward. All of what we do is around play. We make sure the dogs absolutely love what they're doing. If they're not enjoying it and they don't love it, then they don't go on to be police dogs. These are absolutely fantastic dogs. We're gonna move it on now to one of our sleeves. Get the dog nice and focused. And a nice straight chase. 
what we're doing is building the foundation so that when they become operational dogs, they hold on to that nice fixed bite and they don't let go. We're going to move on now to some of our um, dogs that are on their initial course. So an initial course takes around 12 weeks. Here we've got Norbert. It's going to show you that it doesn't matter what we put in a dog's way. Nothing will keep them from their criminal. There he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Norbert. So like I say, Norbert is six weeks into an initial course. In six weeks, he will be out there operational, taking down criminals across the West Midlands. And a release back to the handler. Next into the arena, we've got Maggie. What we're going to do now is what we call a hold and bark. So we want the dog to run up to the, uh, the helper, bark, 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 bark. When they give us the behavior they want, we'll reward them with the toy. There we go. And then moving on, we've got Pax, and here we're going to do a straight chase. And that's for a pillow, lots and lots of play. The dogs won't release that until the handler tells them to do so, and that's just building up then so that they can be fantastic operational police dogs. Moving on now to a sleeve. There we go. They're only six weeks into a course. Imagine what they're going to be like in six more weeks' time. <laughs> so these are our um, dogs that are on, currently on their initial course, but what we're doing is building the foundations to make them into fantastic operational police dogs so that they can deal with whatever it is that they face, including a crowd like this. like this, I think we're going to need some support from our operational support units. So let's bring them out into the arena. See if they can uh, sort this rowdy lot out. It doesn't look like they can actually sort this crowd out. I think we're going to need some help from our police dogs. Attention, attention. This is a police warning. Disperse immediately or police dogs may be used. Attention, attention. This is a police warning. Disperse immediately or police dogs may be used. RSU, withdraw. If you are ever involved in any disorder and you see people start kneeling down, know that trouble's about to start. Uh, next, we're going to show you a little bit of control with our police dogs. So we expect them to be able to do stuff like that, but we also expect them to show ultimate control. So we're going to show you a couple of exercises with um, our police dogs. Into the arena, we've got PD Zaf. PD Zaf and PC, sorry, PD Zaf and PC Collier have been operational now for two weeks. They are already proving to be a fantastic team. In that two weeks, they have already detained somebody for an attempted rape who has since been charged and remanded in custody. <laughs> so what we saw there was a hold and bark. We're going to do that again, and this time we're going to get a little bit of movement from the criminal. And then when he makes a sort of movement, the dog is going to engage. back into a control position. Doesn't matter whether our criminals are standing up or sitting down, we'll expect the same behavior. Nice little bit of pressure putting on, getting him to bark straight in his face. And back into a control position. 
And now we're going to do the same again, but we're going to get the dog to down in front of the criminal. Ladies and gentlemen, PD's are. We're going to bring into the arena PD Stark now. So PD Stark is one of our firearm support dogs. We're just going to show you the uh, progression from a dog that is brand new in service to one that has been out operational now for five years. I'm sure you will see that the, uh, the difference is not that great, but let's show you PD Stark. So we're going to do the same. He likes to put them under a little bit more pressure. And back to the handler for a ball. Now we're going to get the dog to stay in a down position while the handler goes up to the criminal in order to search them. This is really hard for our dogs. That suit means that it's playtime. So the fact that they are just completely focused, but doing exactly what they're told to do. So we're going to swap over. Dogs are really sociable around all of our other you are my And then a recall back to the handler. Now we're going to get the decoy to go up to them, shake their hands, and then both the officers are going to walk back away from the dogs, leaving them in that control position. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, PD Zaff from PD Star. Let's get back into a little bit of a scenario. So we're going to have uh, somebody skulking around. what he's up to. Doesn't look like these are very happy in this car. I think we're going to need some support from the police. Ladies and gentlemen, that little lucky hurt. PD Biff! <laughs> so our general purpose police dog has just taken down the criminal. Now we need to find the evidence. So what happened there was what we have simulated a stabbing. So now we need to find the evidence in order to uh, convict that person at court. So our newly trained victim recovery dogs are trained to find dead bodies, but they're also trained to find blood. So into the arena we've got Lula. Lula is going to search the arena and find... Um, they give me heart attacks with this dog and cars moving in the arena. Um, so we're going to get her to search the arena, uh, locate um, blood or a tooth, which has actually um, been knocked out of the, the uh, victim's mouth. Our victim recovery dogs have already been successful in convicting somebody of murder. So the dogs went in to search a shed. The shed was, had got lots and lots of tools in there all of which appeared to be clean. 
When the dogs went in, they've indicated on a hammer. The hammer didn't appear to have any blood on it. It was sent off for forensics and came back with the victim's blood on it, ensuring that, that the offender was convicted at court. Once the dog locates what they're looking for, they will do a nice freeze indication and reward with a ball. And she's going to keep working around the arena just to locate the weapon. As you can see, Lula absolutely loves her job. She's as keen as mustard as that tail is wagging a thousand miles an hour. And then a nice freeze indication. And a reward for a ball. Ladies and gentlemen, and newly trained victim detection dogs. I always get a bit worried when we see people in these big suits coming into the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Birds. Oh, this is taking a turn for the worse. Was that a firearm I heard? I think we're going to need some support from our firearms colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, our dogs are deployed with our firearm colleagues and all firearm citizens across the West Midlands. Here we are, Peely Gunner, taking down the criminal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got something a little bit special this, evening, this afternoon. So two of the dogs that you've seen in the uh, display today are actually retiring at the end of the month. So Peely Gunner and Peely Hans are both due to retire Let's just roll a video just to show you what they've been up to during their policing careers. Ladies and gentlemen, these dogs have been operational police dogs in the West Midlands for seven years. They're eight years old. Let's give them some of their final bites of their policing career here in the arena at Crufts. Let's hear it for P.D. Gunner and P.D. Hands. I actually do feel like we've let you down. We haven't really had much from uh, Mr. Angry, so let's bring him into the arena. Let him lose his voice. I think we should use both dogs to take him at the same time. I don't think Hans is ready to hang up his harness just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude our demonstration. I do hope that you've enjoyed it. Can we hear it for all of our police dogs, all of our handlers, especially PD Gunner and PD Hands. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a massive round of applause. The incredible work, the important work of the West Midlands Police Dog Units.
Brilliant to see the work from West Midlands always Police. So that demonstration is just always packed full of action. Of course, all those police dogs trained at Specialist Centre at Solihull, not far away from where we are uh, at Crufts. And, uh, of course, saying a fond farewell to PD Hands and PD Gunner retiring after seven years as firearm support, uh, support dogs. There's plenty more still to come at Crufts. We'll be taking a short break in the arena now until ten past five. Uh, we've got agility, finals still to come, the breeders' competition final, the gun dog display, gamekeepers' competition final. It's all culminating tonight into the group judging of the gun dogs, which is at one of the biggest days here at Crufts. So don't go far away. We'll have a short break now while the arena is getting set up once again for agility. And then this is more of the action that we've got to come for you on day two at Crufts. Echo made me feel happier than I ever thought a dog could make me feel. It's like she knew what I was going through as soon as she met me. I think she's my soulmate in a dog. I had um, Wilms cancer, which is um, located in your kidneys. It's normally diagnosed in younger children. It made me feel so poorly. I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. I needed help to even standing up. So before we had Echo, Freya had lots of hospital appointments. She was bed bound, she was very poorly, unable to walk, um, and just a shadow of the girl that she was. Echo joined the family and she brought back the smile to our little girl. She was encouraging her to get out. She did motivate her to walk again and yeah, she gave us back our little girl. So I was looking forward to doing um, lots of things and she made me want to do them even more, like walking, playing with her. She's just amazing. Freya used to watch crafts with me since she was probably about three years old. Freya's objective was one day she wanted to get there. When we found out that she got to crafts on her first show, we were over the moon. Crafts last year was amazing for me. It was um, a once in a lifetime experience. It's just the most wonderful thing you can ever go to. I felt so poorly, but I said, I have to do this. Like, it's the only chance I could get. I cried twice because like, I was so happy I was there. It was massive. To know that Freya's got Echo is like, knowing she's got her own support system. They've just got the unbreakable bond, best friends, snuggle buddies. She just syncs perfectly with anything Freya does or feels. They're just perfect together. My life wouldn't have just been as fun as it is now if I didn't have Echo. Knowing that if she doesn't feel comfortable enough talking to us, she's always got someone to talk to. She's always got someone to cuddle with when she's feeling down and in bed and not herself and doesn't want people. She's always got Echo to just be her best friend. She was my motivation to get home. I wouldn't have went through cancer without her. I can't imagine a life without Echo. She's just the most wonderful dog. She's the dream dog you could have. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk 
forward slash HDA. So Eliana was suffering a lot from anxiety before we got Gordon. I'm scared to think what would have happened to Ellie if he hadn't come along. We name him G-Dog, or our favourite one is the BFG, Big Friendly Gordon. He's my herring dog and he helps me with everything like the timer, waking me up and like being my best friend and helping me mentally and physically. Well, I've got cochlear implants and I'm profoundly deaf. When I take my hearing aids off, my implants, it's complete silence, like you can't hear anything. She's a bilateral cochlear implant wearer, which means she wears it on both sides. We always say that gives her access to sound, but by no means it replaces her natural hearing. Unfortunately, due to her deafness, she has had quite severe anxiety issues. It got to the point where she would wake up and she would just vomit for the whole day. She was pulling out her hair. She wasn't very confident and she didn't have many friends either. Society doesn't quite understand what deafness is. Um, it can be quite isolating. It went from needing a hearing dog for the practical reasons, but also for the emotional reasons and for helping her with her mental health. When Gordon arrived, I think everything changed. Come here, Gordy. Come on, Ellie. From the get-go, he slept in her room. He watches over her at night. He gives me like a sense of comfort and just makes me happy. Life is fun. I wake up to pulling off my duvet because he recognises my alarm. He like gives me a sense of safety with the fire alarm because I know he'll wake me up. He's like my best friend. My anxiety problems are like still there, but like I don't really have them anymore. She's super confident. She's deaf and she's proud. Um, and I think that Gordon just helps other people understand that Eliana's deaf. There's so much more than just friendship to it. You can see that Gordon is always checking where she is in the house. He knows that he is there for her, so it's a real friendship, but the partnership on top, it's very special. He has transformed the person that she is. He has supported her mental health so much so that she is a completely different person to who she was before. It's been life-changing. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Before I had Phoebe, I had to be with someone who knew me and knew my condition 24-7. She has given me my life back. I wouldn't be able to live as a normal 25-year-old if I didn't have Phoebe. Here you go. Hold. Wait. I have a condition called hypermobile ehlers downlos Syndrome. Now, for normal people, <laughs> that means basically my body doesn't produce any collagen, and any collagen that is produced is destroyed by my body. But the kicker with um, EDS is that it affects every part of your body. So for me, it affects all my internal organs and it does mean I'm life limited. Um, so I'm living on a shorter timeline than most. Phoebe's main role is as my medical alert dog. So the main thing she does for me is detect when I'm going to faint. I know. She's just done a heart alert, so my heart rate's just shot up from 80 to 120. It's only her first alert, so it's not a dangerous alert. It's just her first reminder for me to stop. She also alerts to my seizures. She'll lie on top of me to keep my body temperature. Um, if I have a seizure, she'll put herself between my head and the floor um, so that I can't bat my head. I'm a full-time wheelchair user, and with my condition, um, bending down is really difficult because it often triggers um, a fainting episode. So she helps pick things up, she helps me get dressed and undressed, she opens and closes doors. She just generally is both a medical alert and a mobility assistance dog. Well. I'm a sailor. I have been competing since I was about 15 for Team GB. Um, and I now compete as a para-athlete. Before having Phoebe, before her medical alert, I couldn't sail on my own. She normally looks like she's asleep um, or watching the birds, but basically she keeps track of my scent so that I know if I'm gonna faint. 
Um, that means I have the time to safely get back to shore. For the past two and a half years, I have been able to race and train and sail independently. And I'm sure that sounds like a really small thing, but to me it was massive. Phoebe is not just my assistance dog, she's also a therapy dog and she brings joy and happiness to hundreds of people every week. Come on then, go say hello to everybody. We've done care homes, we've done universities, uh, we've done working with children with learning disabilities. She's not just my lifeline, she's given so many other people hope and joy. She not only gave me back my life, you know, in the house, she gave me my life back on the water. She gave me my sport back, the thing that I never thought I'd get back to competing. What she gives me, I can never thank her for. She's my hero, but she's a hero to everybody else as well. And if you'd like to vote for any of the four Kennel Club Hero Dog contenders, go to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Vespa has located live casualties and disasters all over the world and has saved many lives. And she gives not just me, but everyone out there hope. Vespa is currently a four-year-old Belgian Malinois Shepherd. She is a search and rescue dog, both in-house for Mersey Sci-Fi and Rescue Service and for UK ISAR. So um, Vespa was destined to be a police dog. Um, she was run for our puppy program. Um, unlike her brothers, um, they all liked um, the police side of it, but um, with Vespa she was um, extremely kind, very, very social. Rather than a failed police dog, we class it as a re-educated police dog. She's gone on to do another role with um, Fire and Rescue, again, saving lives and um, helping people. The search and rescue dogs are vital to the Fire and Rescue Service. The role they play is they work on live scent. They will give a signal, which normally a bark of type, and they will sit in that position so we can identify exactly where the firefighters or the search and rescue technicians then need to go to start their digging. And I can't explain how important that is to families who have people who are buried in rubble overseas, like in Turkey last year. If we can bring one loved one to the surface, our job's worth doing, and Vesper has done this on numerous occasions. So when Neve and Vesper did deploy to um, both Turkey and Morocco, we arrived in country 36 hours um, after the earthquake had initially hit. There was mayhem on the ground and they continued and continued to work with the hope that they was going to find somebody alive. And they was able to make an incredible difference to the team and the people of Turkey. When they work together in very unsafe environments, obviously in quite treacherous terrain, they have to really trust each other and you can see that with Vesper and Eve. The role of a search dog in a disaster is to quickly as possible give us intel into that disaster as where possible survivors could be. What makes Vespa unique in this role is these dogs have to eliminate things quite quickly. Whether that be the odour of decomposition, food, animals, wildlife, they are just searching for the element of life. So she goes through a disaster and identifies the actual unique thing of breeding casualties. She's quite intuitive. She's um, a methodical thinking dog and she's very, very calm. She has a very, very strong nerve strength that doesn't react with stimuluses or environmental factors that most dogs or search dogs would find quite stressful. So she takes all that in her stride and yet has the ability to continue working in some of the most arduous, stressful conditions. Although it is a game to them, to us, it is a life and death situation. She not only gives us those important answers of where live counties are located, she gives me and lots of other people in the world hope.
Hello again to the, welcome to the main arena. Hello again, welcome to the main arena at Crufts 2024. We're getting set for the evening session here. Jim Rosenthal alongside Graham Partridge with the last touch of agility of the day. And we are going to see the uh, Crufts singles final, a three-part competition, this one for dogs in the two highest grades. Grades six and seven, we have seen the jumping, we have seen the agility. Now coming up is the final. It's an agility round for the pick of the bunch. It is a straight competition. They all start from scratch. They will go in reverse order of qualification. And the small dogs will go first. It's been quite a day, Graham, and we're looking forward to uh, something to round it off in style. Absolutely. Uh, it's been an amazing day. We've had all sorts of entertainment, fireball, agility, uh, here worked music. It's been absolutely fantastic. Really looking forward to the Crufts singles. It is one of the highlights of Crufts, uh, whichever year we're at, but it, it's going to highlight some of the best handlers and dogs in each height category uh, this year. Just to get to the Crufts finals is a big achievement. They have to follow shows around, pick up points, and the people with the most points get invited here, and then they've got to go through jumping an agility round earlier today, as you say, and then tonight's final, um, it's all to play for. And over the last couple of days, Graham, even run. us two have been taken aback by the enthusiasm, by the volume of support here in gentlemen. Birmingham at the National Why Exhibition Centre and indeed from viewers well. across the world. Good evening. Welcome. I can't believe the support. I mean, this, this arena has been full for just about most of the day. Uh, ticket sales, I think, are, are, are well up, and you can see why. This is one of the the canine, well, the canine event in the world. Then we have our international junior handlers, the breeders' competition, thanks to Ardria and uh, our dogs. 160 dogs coming in to the big ring here tonight. We have the incredible demonstration by the best gum dogs in the world here, thanks to uh, BASC and the Skinners for the uh, gum dog demonstration. And then the gamekeepers class, one of the founding classes of Crofts all those years ago, back in the 1800s. And, uh, then we turn our attention with our international junior handlers, very much the stars of the future in the world of handling, and we turn our attention then to the uh, gun dog group. So, as you can see, the agility course is all set, and Kate is here to tell us all about it. Lots of cheering, lots of clapping, because it is Fabulous Friday. Good evening, and welcome to Crumps. Nick Brooks Ward getting us all in the mood uh, for this final. The small dogs going first in this agility final in reverse order of qualification. And we welcome our judge, Andrew Dicker. Competes currently with one grade four dog. He's got six dogs in his household. Andrew Dicker lives close to Reading in Berkshire. Starting off then with the small section, first of five small dogs. The winner of the agility that it's Louise Godwin leading in drift. Louise from Gloucester. Mixed Collie Cross is drift. And we'll be looking to set a high standard here as we get underway in this agility final on the second day of Crufts 2024. And we're off. And we'll let Graham we'll have a little look at the course. And the second dog will ask Graham to talk us through exactly the hazards that this course contains. It's a good start for Louise and for Drift. It's a tight turn into the tunnel and out. Tight left hander there. A frame next. Good contact, has to hit the white at the end of it. It's a really technical course, isn't it? It's going to finish off up over the dog walk really quick. Back to an excellent start. 31.6 in clear for Louise and for Drift. Oh, wow, what a great start. 31 62. Well, that's going to take some beating. Five dogs in this category, and the first dog to go has put in a stonking round like that. Follow that, I think she's just said. Talk us through this one then. Jane Chenry, three year old River. Okay, so 
fairly straight line for one and two. You need to make straight line between obstacles because that's the quickest way. They've got a round the back of three. Nice tight turn looking for here. Onto the seesaw. Must touch the ground before the dog gets off. Into the tunnel now. Just straightening the dog up to get the weaving poles. In and out those weaving poles. The dog telling her that she's uh, not going quick enough. Very fast bit of the course now. Now they've got to collect them. Sharp left turn here. And again, another turn up onto the A-frame. And it's going to be now over the long jump. Sharp left turn into the tunnel, and now they're going to head for home. Just the dog walk to negotiate, and one final jump. There we are, what a round that is. Wow! Excellent work from River, screaming her way around the course, and Jane Chenery, 33.2, and clear again. Two clear rounds, second place. Lily Woodford, eight-year-old spider, third in the jumping Earlier in the day, eight-year-old working cocker, fabulous little dog, had made up to agility champion last year. We'll have to scamper a little bit because there's some very competitive times ahead of her. Weaves, weaves, weaves is the instruction from Lily. Next to the tunnel. Picking up speed now in this round. 18 seconds gone, clear, quick and clean. High standard, but sadly, taken a wrong course and that will eliminate Lily and Spider from the proceedings but the rounds will be completed lovely dog lovely sight well done a sadly an elimination Dale. it is and I'm so fond of saying nobody's told the dog it's been eliminated there we are just came inside up over the wrong side of the jump that she was supposed to go over which constitute the crossed arms and elimination penultimate small dog Katrina hands and Sizzle from four far north of the border. Team GB representative came second in the jumping this morning. Time to beat 31.6 and clear. They will have to hustle. The Sizzle will have to hustle. That's really quick. Through the weaves though, making up ground, making up time there as well. It's clear and it's fast and it's clean. Beautiful dog. Great handling as well uh, from Katrina. And this could threaten the best. They are clear at the moment. Let's count them down. 30, 31, 32, 33.0. Second place. Well, a great round. Really high quality. It is. These dogs just seem to float along the, the course. It really is. Shelties used to be really, really popular. They still are, but overtaken now by working Cocker Spaniels, but a great round. Last of the small dogs. Summer, 10-year-old. Dawn Weaver, the handler. Very wild dog at 10. If you saw the jumping, you will know that Summer came first in the jumping. What can Summer do here? A reminder of that time. 31.6 to beat. Oh, and... Uh, elimination and well I don't think Dawn knew exactly what occurred there by the look of her and uh, it, it all it all it all sadly went out of control there and uh, well fun's the name of the game always in agility and look I'm at this stage it's mine for another 30 seconds or so I will make the most of it that is summer's attitude and why not and a generous forgiving appreciative crowd Gives Dawn and Summer exactly what they deserve, Graham. Just, you can never, never predict what's going to happen. I mean, you would never have put money on this. So the dog goes into the weaving poles, just looks up, sees the jump, pops out the weaving <laughs> poles, over the jump and into the tunnel. And, and you could just see Dawn there with her arms out. just to say, what has just happened? Such a shame. So, Louise Godwin and Drift... Fantastic. Only one in the 31s. Little at almost two seconds clear. Winner of the small section. OK, first of five medium dogs. Now you're looking at an endeavour. Laura Chapman, the handler, five years of age. First in the agility and last year's winner. We're expecting something pretty special here from Laura and from Endeavour know their way around this place, know how to handle the lights, the nerves, the new carpet they lay every year at Crofts. And that's a great start to this round as well. Through the tunnel, nothing's gone quicker through that tunnel than Endeavour. And again, loves the tunnel. Good tight left-hander. This is developing into something very, very special. Faultless so far, coming towards the end of the round. This is going to be so fast. Up and down over that dodd walk, over the final jump as well. 30.4. 
for Laura and for Endeavour, last year's winners, and that'll take some beating. Amazing. I love this partnership, love this dog. Uh, it's just poetry in motion. And up and over the A-frame, but the speed of the dog walk on the finish was just phenomenal. Looking at Maggie, four-year-old mixed collie crosslist Carpenter, the handler, first in the jumping. And what quality they will have to show here to repeat that in this one-off competition agility. It's good so far. And again, it is so quick. It That's a tricky section before the A-frame, but Maggie is going so well. 25 seconds and clear. A flying finish as well from Maggie, desperate to get inside it. 31.6, second place for Maggie. What quality and Liz. Really great time. It's, if you just watch here on this third jump, the dog turns the wrong way, and then she's got to bring the dog back into it, and that's where she lost her time. That's agility. It is indeed. Jane Chenery and Harvey, nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel, first Cocker. And now have his daughter and son as well, Jane Chenery and Harvey. This has been exceptional. Harvey over the U move early on. Good work on the seesaw. Tunnel right down in front of us. Got to go into those weaves from the right. And Harvey says that'll do nicely. Through the tunnel. Quick right hander, another tunnel awaits. Headed for the A frame a little bit, but didn't quite do it. Over that Skoda long jump. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Dogs will be dogs, Graham. Yes, Jim. I think, yeah, they, <laughs> they will. Who said that? Who was the wise I, I old boy that, that said that? A couple of times last year. <laughs> um, such a shame. This was shaping up to be a really, really good round. <laughs> nice finish, she's happy, got a smile on her face, off to find the dog's toy. And as you say, there's jumping slightly sort of left to right towards the tunnel, and she just didn't call it off it. Happens in a blink of an eye. Bliss, seven year years of age, border collie. Sammy Pegg, the handler, penultimate medium dog. And knowing they're going to have to do something pretty special. But it's a huge achievement just to underline to be here to take part in this competition to go all the way through the day as well we must never ever forget that we must never forget the fitness of the dogs as well and uh, the handlers have to be pretty nifty too doesn't look exceptionally quick but it's a very 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 good round so far over that Skoda long jump very very comfortably and the dog walk too Good work, Bliss. Good work, Sammy. Clear. 34.2. Third place. Very nice round. Just a little bit wide on a couple of the terms here. Uh, well, I don't think she would have uh, beaten our current leader, Laura Chapman. The last of the medium dogs, Rachel Ward from Colville. Fia Meta, seven-year-old. Little fiery one in Italia, and little Fia Meta will have to be on fire to the tune of 30.4 seconds to win this medium section. Sweet and kind-natured, away from the uh, away from competition, but really going for it here is Fia Meta. And a good time so far. Might just have to pick up a little bit towards the end of the round. Watch the clock ticking down. 29, 30, 31. 32, 33.7. That's good enough for the top three for Fia Meta, the little fiery one, and Rachel. Great effort. And I thought it was going to jump off the dog, uh, the seesaw at that stage, put in another second step, which rescued her. Still, great round. Lovely. Laura Chapman, the winner, last year's winner as well, retaining her title first in the agility and winning here as well well done laura and winning by a good second two from liz rachel and sammy first of five intermediate dogs cosmo and kaylee hewitt from sheffield winners of the intermediate agility too so could be a combination to keep a very close eye on here in form earlier in the day 
quick flow. Very appreciative of those weaves is Cosmo. Goodness me, this is a very, very lively first 20 seconds. The A-frame, good contact at the end of that. Oh dear, again headed for that tunnel, went over the Skoda long jump and headed straight for the tunnel. What a shame, what a shame. Great finish. <laughs> you can never, never count your chickens in this one, can no, you? Just took her eyes off the dog just for a second and the dog hasn't actually got to go through it if it gets any part of it or touches the tunnel, then that is the dreaded elimination if it's not the next obstacle. Zest, eight years of age, Nicola Wildman, the handler, team bronze at the Worlds, runner-up last year. Nicola from Preston. Always admire her work. Over the U move, fine. How's about the seesaw? Good contact at the end of that. Tunnel right in front of us, in and out in a flash. Looking to pick up time through the weeds. Excellent work, another tunnel, not a problem at all. Brilliant jump, really two great jumps there. Gathering time all the time. My goodness me, what an elegant jump a Zest is. Up and down over the A-frame, 23-24. Huge one over the Skoda, now that tight right hander, that's right, through the tunnel, up and down over the dog walk, really sprinting for home. Over the irons at the end of it, fine work from Nicola and from Zest. First place, Graham. 33.540, so that's the first clear round in this section. So that's going to be the margin that everybody tries to beat. But look, there we are, that's that left arm. Go on, she says. And is she please? Yes, she is. Look at her, that's very nice. This is Phoebe, five-year-old border collie. Tony Smith from Nottingham. Last year's winner in the top three in the agility as well. Third Crufts appearance. Knows her way around the place by now. Tunnel and distinctive scream from Tony as Phoebe exits the tunnel. Right on top of it is Tony calling her into that tunnel too. Fine work. Oh, good. That was a real scramble up and just picking up, picking up faults on that Skoda long jump. What a shame that is, but it's going to be a very good time, a really good time. 31.4 and the five faults. It's second place so far for Tony and for Phoebe. Such a shame here, she's a lovely tight turn there. And over the long jump, you've only got to breathe on these long jumps, but you, a year ago they would have been wooden long jumps, now they are all soft and padded. Penultimate intermediate dog, just got a sight of Nara Cuddy there, banana four-year-old uh, border collie, second in the jumping earlier in the day. Seesaw, seesaw, seesaw. it is, through the tunnel now. Oh dear. Oh dear, in and out of that tunnel, and that will be an elimination, sadly. Shaping up really well, and then uh, there was a bleak black tunnel uh, for Banana and for Nara. Yeah, such a shame. Uh, that's what, when you've only got five dogs in it, you've got to go for it. I mean, you, know, you, you don't take prisoners here, yeah. you don't go safe. Um, and as I say, it was just a shame, and I think we're probably going to show you the mistake here on the tunnel off the seesaw dogs goes into the tunnel she never actually moves away from the tunnel and the dog just took it that it was a tunnel tunnel but there we go reluctant crossed arms from andrew dicker so the last intermediate dog otto five years of age border collie the handler is michelle war first in the jumping second in the agility time to beat 33.5 and clear that is the target to get the intermediate title here. Good so far. Oh, missed the, missed the entry point into the weaves, and that will be costly. Traps all over the place, just when you think, well, that's a simple one, isn't it? Just a fraction of inaccuracy. And it's, as Graham says, when there's just a few dogs in the event, very, very costly. On it is go, such a shame. She's been on fire uh, today, the first two rounds. She really has performed out of her skin. Uh, so it's such a shame for her to pick up what's a reasonably easy mistake there on the weaving poles, but that's what pressure does for you. And the pressure here is intense as, as well. So, confirmation, Nicola Wildman and Zest has won the intermediate 
team bronze at the Worlds, the runner-up last year, going one better this time round. Well done, Nicola, and well done, Zest. And we move on to the large section. F four dogs in this. First to go is uh, Nara Cuddy again and Lemon. Nara from nearby Leamington Star, having a little breather there as well. Seven-year-old uh, Border Collie. Good partnership, this one, though. Team Silver in the European Open. Winners of the agility earlier in the day and looking to claim the large title here this time round, barking over the U move. Seesaw, good contact at the end. That's the way to go in and out of the tunnel, and that's the way to go in and out of the weeds as well. Well done, Lemon. No bitterness there at all. All sweetness so far in this round for Lemon. Again, in and out of the tunnel. This is going to set a very high standard indeed. 20 seconds gone, no faults, and quick. Lovely over the A-frame. Excellent over the Skoda, but just clipped it at the end there. What a shame. Fractions. This is being decided by fractions. Look at that time, really quick. 31.3. And the five faults, first to the four large dogs, Graham. Yeah, th this pair are a class act, you say. The dog, look at the go way it goes through those, absolutely powering through them. And then we come to long jump, just on the anticipating the turn there and just clipping that last element of the long jump. You're looking at Gertie and Tunde Bell. Gertie, three year old border collie, third in the agility. Very, very vocal dog, this one. Right on cue. Thank you, Gertie. <laughs> and again, seesaw and into the tunnel. Yep, that's pretty good. Barking away through the weaves. On she goes. Excellent 20 seconds so far for Gertie and for Tundi. A frame is good. That's, they've, two or three have done that. Just clipped the end of the Skoda jump, picking up five faults there. But once again, the time is good. The time is really good, 31.9, and the five faults mean second place for Tundi and Gertie. Such a shame, just anticipating, I think, the turn. These dogs will do hundreds of long jumps in a year and not have one down. You want a calm handler, I give you Alan Bray. Ticket is dog, six-year-old Border Collie. First in the jumping. I'd be very interested to see what Alan's highest pulse rate is very calm human being and that exudes confidence and his dogs deliver first in the jumping earlier what can they do in this agility section 31.6 to be do not rule them out what a recovery what a recovery by ticket there could be an elimination though there could be an elimination i've been told. and a raised hand no, the round continues. In any case, it unraveled a little bit with those with those ten faults. It was a it was a heck of a recovery, that wasn't it, uh, Graham? It was. Look at that. The brakes are on. Didn't go past the jump. The judges already. The judges saying no, nope, no, nope, no fault. And then just coming in from the side of the long jump there, which is a refusal. Got you. Last of the large dogs to go then, Dalton, Meredith and Eclipse. Last year's winner, second in the jumping, second in the agility. 31.3 to beat and five faults. So if they go within that and go clear, it's another victory for Dalton, Meredith. They will retain their title. Eclipse, reigning European and world gold medalist, unprecedented achievement that they want to win here and now at the end of the second day of Crufts 2024 and they're looking really good at the moment until they clip the game but this is not this still could be okay you know despite clipping that jump 30.8 the five faults but it's good enough to win it's good enough to win they've done it again last year's winner triumph again Dalton Meredith and Eclipse the border collie real drama here and Dalton Meredith takes it despite those faults really good time oh just about a second better than the rest well Dalton Meredith last to go and triumphing very very fine effort from Eclipse what a combination these two are Eclipse plenty of running ahead as well of her just five years of age well done Dalton you are the champions again
Please join me in thanking our judge, Andrew Dicker, who's done a wonderful job all day for us today with our Crufts singles. And to do our presentation, Chief Marketing Officer of You Move, Andrew Smith, and I believe he's just hot-footed it down from the Crufts commentary box for Channel 4, Graham Partridge of the Crufts Committee. Give him a round of applause, everybody, as we present our winners and reserves. Firstly, the winner of the Crufts singles in the small with the fate of the furious at Vamonaloo, Louise Godwin. And our reserve in the Crufts singles small with agility champion set the pace of Summer Garden, Katrina Han. And now your winner in the Crufts singles medium height with agility champion, Liebe Dream Come True, Laura Chapman. And your reserve in the Crufts singles medium, agility champion, Mosley Wood, Maggie, Liz Carpenter. And your intermediate singles final wither winner with agility champion Devon Gem, freaking awesome, Nicola Wildman. Thank you very much. Thank you. And your reserve in the intermediate with Cherry Hog, Bright Future, Tony Smith. Well done, Tony. And in the large, the winner of the Crufts single final. In the large, with agility champion, Van Dabby knows the Eclipse of Dust, Dalton Meredith. Awesome job. Well done, buddy. And your reserve at large singles final with agility champion, Little Hayes Dark Pleasure, Nara Cuddy. Well done, darling. Well Thank done, lovely. Well done, mate. Please keep the applause going, folks, because now it is time for a lap of honour.
dogs. Please give a very warm welcome to Sharon Pinkerton, escorted into the main ring by our Crufts chairman, Mr. Tom Mather. The action continuing in the arena, and we are about to welcome over 160 dogs into the main arena here at Crufts. This is the Breeders' Competition final. The competition's been going for since 2009. It brings together the best and the most talented breeders of the pedigree dogs and gives them a chance to show what they're capable of uh, and just to show off their pedigree stock. We're going to see teams of three and four dogs, all of the same breed, bred, bred by the same breeder. Frank Kane is alongside me. And Frank, we're starting here with our team of Lassa Apso. Yes, they're from, they're from the Dementia Kennel, all gold and white, and uh, costumes to match. Well, that's one of the intriguing things about this competition. We will see the, the presentation effect, won't we, of the, the but, handlers in costume to be a team. And here come the miniature schnauzers, the Pembroke Kennel, all pepper and salts, very smart. These are Tibetan Spaniels from the Tor from Torfness. The Torfness kennel. Uh, it's important to say that the costumes don't get marks. They, they're judged on the quality and the even quality of the dogs in the group. Here are the Tibetan Spaniels coming in. Now this is an interesting breed, Frank. It's the Sholo, it's Quintley from the Sangre Real kennel. Yes, a very primitive breed, the Aztec breed, and followed by the Cotton de Tuliars, Cool Cotton Kennel from Steve and Joe Ward in the, in the north of England. Italian greyhounds, the little miniature sight hounds, these from the Art Mace kennel. Very elegant, high stepping, very even in type, these. All fawns with white trim. Our famous kennel here, the Pomeranians from the Lyriva kennel of Avril Corthira Purdy. Now, just to show her that she can get good type in all of the colours, some orange and one little black one, yes. They were the winners last year, the Lyriva kennel. Uh, the pug team of four here from Rodan Ash and Cat Story, the breeder. A very successful kennel. Now striking the Bracco Italianos from the Gunsin Kennel. Italian gun dog breed. And another gun dog breed, the German wire-haired Ponta. This is McC Maxine McCulloch and her Kimax Kennel from Merseyside. And here's another gun dog, the Hungarian Vizlas from the Vizlania kennel, striking russet gold, hunt point and retrieve gun dogs. Ah, yes, Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, real workers. And here, another retriever breed, the curly coated retrievers. Flat-coated retrievers coming in. Uh, Jenny Campbell's uh, the breeder here. People will know her from Dragon's Den. And the flying peak kennel of Labradors. Three black Labradors coming across the green mat now. These are the Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers from the Usenit kennel. The web-footed swimmers. And here the Irish water spaniels rolling in with his wagging tails. These are the Welsh Springer Spaniels. Three generations of handlers here at the Shan Angel Kennels. And a very young handler there as well. Ah, uh, he's striking power. The Alaskan Malamutes, yes, the Sam Joe Kennel, this is Miss Perfect. There are two teams of Canadian Eskimo dogs here this evening from the Atna Kennel. Uh, Rachel Bailey, the breeder. 
Again, the variety of colour shown in this team too. And here's the second team from the Kimukta Kennel. So this one all black, black and white. Portuguese water dogs, unmistakable with those shaved hind quarters. These from the Belleville Kennel. One brown and three black ones. Yes, the evenness of type in all the colours. Siberian Huskies from the Inshuk Kennel. Now, first of the two teams of Bearded Collie. Here they are, the Iris Edition, the BBD's Kennel. Some very excitable Bearded Collies leading the team out as well. You often hear the handlers talking about it can be chaos out in the arena. These are the, the second group from the Iris Edition. A mother and three puppies in this particular team. Now the French herding dogs, the Briards coming in, the Foster Brie Kennel. Here come the Catalan Sheepdogs, a rare breed. It's the first time that this breed has made an appearance in the breeders' competition here at Crufts from the Starwell Kennel. Ah, the Irish Terriers. What a, what a four russet red, the uh, raciest of the terrier breeds. This team is from the Talanors Kennel, the Manchester Terriers. Three of these dogs are brother and sister, and Jill Knight, the breeder. And here are the Scottish Terriers, the Divadel Kennel. Miss Norton, the breeder there. These are the soft-coated Wheaton Terriers. All four of these are UK champions, all well, from the Silkcroft Kennel. That's formidable, eh? Four champions to represent the breeder. Remarkable achievement. Ah, uh, the, the Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudienne. Very lively, very smart, aren't they? That's the Earlian Kennel. For a team of little dogs, these are getting a warm welcome in the arena. The miniature smooth at Dachshunds from the Mumisami kennel. And very smart and all in unison there as they come across. That's a very, very nice style, eh? Here are the Harriers. It's the first time for the Harriers in here. Charlotte Farrar is the breeder and her Hennessy Harriers. It's such a spectacle in this arena seeing all these teams come out and this only adds to it the team of Irish Wolfhounds and three of these four are champions as well from the White Orchard. And two Wheaton ones, the lighter colours, they're the rarer colour in the breed. And now the Prior Park Rhodesian Ridgebacks, very stylish, full of confidence, lovely team means we just have one more team to come into the arena and probably appropriate on International Women's Day an all-female <laughs> team here uh, mum and three daughters and the handlers as well <laughs> yes and very and look the elegance and grace of the whippets you can never miss it can you the whippets from the Tiggs Isle kennel and Kathy Williams the breeder so all our teams are in the arena uh, all taking their position and what a sight that is the, the it, variety of breeds the the colors of the handlers as well just adds to the spectacle it's a great spectacle yes and of course the the judge will have been looking for evenness of type and quality throughout the group that they have to be even not just two good ones and a couple of mediocre ones they want even quality throughout it's what's called keeping the breed type it it stamps the hallmark of a kennel that they have this a special type in the breed so our judge is Sharon Pinkerton. She has had a chance to have a close look at all these teams uh, already. So she does have an idea of who she wants her shortlist to be. So she will be uh, calling these out uh, as we go. Sharon herself, a very, very successful breeder of German wirehead pointers, had many champions and group winners. 
So this is all about sameness of, of type, being able to show that as a breeder, you can achieve consistency in your breeding, but which Frank, we we'll still have a team here, as we're seeing, of males, females, and of different ages. Ab absolutely, but it, it's, the, it's the type which is important, the similarity of type, evenness of quality. And it's worth pointing out that the costumes of the handlers have no bearing on the outcome. It, it adds to the spectacle, it makes you look part of a team, but it's more for the handlers it, and our benefit. It was the Scandinavian dog shows that really got the breeders groups going, and it, it's a great spectacle there, and it's taken on here, the, the handlers getting into the mood with the, you know, the identical outfits, to give this a sort of smartness of presentation. And it really does help to highlight some of those breeds which numbers have fallen down over the years. There's a number of vulnerable breeds in the arena, the Harrier not least being, being one of those, and the Irish Wolfhound, both on the vulnerable breed list. And here comes the shortlist. I think we're getting the shortlist now. It's the Italian Greyhounds, Joe, An Joe Ansel's Artemis Kennel. The miniature sight hound. Oh, Jenny Campbell is being brought out. She's a very keen exhibitor. She's been showing the flat coat for some years now and just become a championship show herself. That's Jenny on the nearest side here with her Rona Vogue flat coated retrievers. Next group out, it's the Stainegate Irish Water Spaniels with Judith Carruthers. So there we are. And the third of our groups, our shortlist there. Oh, and out come the Portuguese water dog are shortlisted here from the Belleville Kennel. Unmistakable with that trim, isn't it? Kathy, the line trim. Kathy Morgan Thomas closest to us. They live in Donca near, near Doncaster. And here's the Foster Brie Briards, the herding breeds from France. Also shortlisted, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Four champions, that's fielding a strong team, isn't it? Formidable, <laughs> formidable. Silk Crofter, a top Terrier breeder over the last couple of years. And look, here comes those smart, miniature smooth Dachshunds. Isn't that good? Perfectly in unison. S steps from the handlers, steps from the dogs. Marvellous. And we've also got the Rhodesian Ridgebacks coming out to join the shortlist. Uh, the African uh, lion dogs, as they were originally they bred were to for do. They were for tracking lion, yes, yes. So we have our shortlist, Frank, and well, there are some wonderful, wonderful examples of the breed there. And in fact, that all these, all these teams, the fact that they've made it to this Breeders' competition final at Croft. It's a fabulous exhibition of and, what can be achieved. And they've had to qualify throughout the year, so it's a great achievement to get here in the first place. Then, of course, the competition is very tough because they've all been winners. Well, now it's going to be time for the judge to take a closer look uh, at the shortlisted teams. And what might we expect to happen here, Frank? Will she ask the teams to, to move and get a closer yes, look I, in motion as well? I think she'll, uh, when, when the ring is cleared from the, uh, the runners up, we'll uh, have the chance to see that the win these shortlisted teams moving in profile and up and down to check the soundness and style of their movement, that it's correct and typical for the breeds. And there, there she's moving around the... Um, Italian greyhounds now to look at them in profile to see the curving lines which are desirable in the Italian greyhound and now look front on she's looking for this deep chest narrow front and fine bone and then she's moving them now watching them go away from her to see the soundness of the hind action and even though this is a team competition, Frank, it doesn't matter. The judge isn't looking for them to be moving in unison, per se, is it? It's not about uh, formation, but it is about the individual yes. dogs. It's not about choreography. It's, no. it's, a, it's about soundness and the correct movement for the breed. High stepping in the Italian Greyhounds, very important. And I think she'll send them round, which is very important. The curving lines of the breed, the slight rise over the loin, the fall away to the croup. There should be a series of curves. Elegance, 
and look at the high stepping very stylish movement on these dogs going in profile well, joanne ansel is the the breeder at uh, the art mace kennels and has been breeding pedigree dogs for some 50 years and has been coming to crufts for the last 30 as well so knows her way around the exhibition center yes. that's for sure and these four started in the breeders competition last year at just six months old but now we move on to the flat coated retrievers uh, these from the roan of the roan of org kennel and of course uh, led by jenny campbell yes the, the stylish flat coats this should be streamlined flowing lines on the flat coated retriever and the ever wagging tail nicely molded heads and again sending them round to see that they all hold their top lines that they've all got a long free striding gait ground covering and economical and of course four black ones here but you can get liver that's right and the flat coated retriever these ones are known for loving life and living life to the full is the way Jenny Campbell describes her team. They're always, always smiling, the flat coats, always happy. Right, the Irish water spaniels getting a run out here. Judith Carruthers, the breeder, the Stainegate kennel. Yes, she's she's won gun dog groups at Crufts before with the Irish water spaniels. So uh, very successful. She's got lovely types. She's used some American bloodlines in her kennel great temperaments here we've got uh, pet names chester aof fraggy and katie so they're real characters and of course most of them spend their lives as pet dogs doubling up at the weekend at dog shows so enjoying this big ring atmosphere i'm sure they are <laughs> bred of course for waterfowling uh, originally and that's that thick uh, woolly texture of the coat and a, and a solid dog underneath them and here's another one with a coat on top and a solid dog underneath it's the Portuguese water dogs from the Belleville kennel of Cathy Thompson Morgan, based near Doncaster, also very successful in Norfolk Terriers. Cathy on this side, again, the, the, this is her second breed in which she's been very successful as well. Here we should brought a team of Claudia, Vidas, Lily and Daisy. So, not very Portuguese names, but they're, <laughs> they're lovely dogs. Again, they were water dogs that could bring in the nets for fishermen. They could also retrieve, and this is a functional cut. They've got this mane of hair over the four quarters, the plume tail, and the clipped hind quarters to allow them to propel through the water. And Claudia, the eldest of the four, 12 years old, leading out. Yes, and she's a very famous champion, so that's a lovely quality group. Well, these are an impressive sight, Frank, aren't they? The team of Briards from Fosterbury Stable. We've got Ethan, Hope, Vega, and Georgia, who are son, mother, brother, and sister. So a family affair for and, the Briards. And this is a kennel which has had a, a, a long tradition of success at Profs and all the championship shows. Here we've got two fawns and two blacks. So it's a very interesting breed, you know, they come from the, the breed that's where the cheese comes from and they were herding dogs. They have the breed peculiarities is that they have this slight crochet hook at the end of the tail and double dew claws on the back legs. And of course the judge will be looking for all of these details in the general type and quality of the breed here. So remember it's about uniformity across the team to show that the, the breed standard is represented in the same way across the team of dogs so the soft-coated wheaton terriers these from the silk cross uh, silk croft stable and these the kennel rather and we mentioned frank that these are all champion dogs one of them very eager as well to get going yes and they, of course it's a, it's a breed which gets its its name describes the features soft coated silky textured coat wheaten the color any shade of ripening wheat says the standard and there they go really free striding very happy breed one of the national breeds of ireland the silk croft mm, were the top terrier breeder in 22 and 23 and had an awful lot of success as a kennel christopher and cheryl sadly at silk croft and here's a little smooth miniature drop it right down in size and literally onto the carpet but, there but, for the handlers but aren't they alert aren't they enjoying the procedures looking around are you looking at me they're saying are you looking at us so yes again we want these dogs to be even in type and that is for the dachshund uh, moderately long in the body 
some ground clearance so they can cover the ground and isn't this covering the ground very well there's a very nice quality group with great temperaments again not phased at all by the occasion these have been very well schooled and the, the Mumisami <laughs> kennel uh, is a very small family show kennel based in the Cumbrian countryside and here we have a very nice team of Roly, Nola, Beth and Reba so what a nice group they are Apparently, uh, Roly loves showing when he's not on the scent of a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, wired to work. <laughs> oh, one's taking a pause. <laughs> the Rhodesian Ridgebacks then the final team to move around the ring at this first time of asking by our judge Sharon Pinkerton. And these really are magnificent in breed, aren't they? Just look at the, the stature of them. Yes, athletic and strong. And this ridge of hair running along the back, a breed feature. The, the hair runs in the reverse direction, which gives them the name Ridgeback. They were for tracking lions, so they should be strong, courageous and athletic. These are very striking. They come in this Wheaton or slightly golden colour. Striding out nicely. Uh, Heidi Parsons has been breeding the breed for 28 years now and has had a lot of champions, so very successful and has kept that line going. Now two are liver nose and two are black nose, which is purposely chosen by Heidi Parsons, she said, just to show that full spectrum of colours across the breed. Yes, the lighter coat sometimes carries lighter pigment on the nose, yes. So, Sharon Pinkerton needs to make her decision now as to who is going to win this breeders competition final well this will be a hard one to call i think uh, ali who will she move towards looking for that uniformity breed standard across the team who will she turn to concentration concentration she's moved forward and well it is the portuguese water dog the Belleville Kells of Cathy Thompson Morgan. That's in a very happy group. And in second place, the Rhodesian Ridgebacks oh, move forward. They're delighted with that. Very smart. And the soft coated Wheatons come forward, the Silkcroft Kennel. But the winners, oh, absolute delight. Uh, Jenny Campbell's getting to the fourth spot here with the flat-coated retrievers, so she'll be very happy with that. She's become a really keen exhibitor. It's the Belleville Kennel. Hello, Frank and Cathy Thompson Morgan, the Portuguese water dogs, including a 12-year-old and a 10-month-old in that particular team. But what a lineup that has been! And it really does highlight you know, what can be achieved as a breeder. And I wonder how many generations of breeding go into that set. Yes, marvellous, from 12 to 10 months. And Sharon, the judge, having a word with them, congratulating them. That's Claudia, Vidas, Laura and Daisy. You just wonder how much time's taken over that clip as well, getting them into tip-top condition uh, to just show... A wonderful match with the breed standard and, and being able to achieve that across all four dogs. Big, big rounds of applause. It's a, almost a full house tonight here at the NEC. Really enthusiastic about the dogs. So big congratulations to Cathy Thompson, Morgan and Ed Morgan as well. And the team of handlers because they work so hard to get the dogs into shape. And it's all worth it, isn't it, when you step out onto the green carpet it's and special pick moment. up this award. A real highlight in any breeder's career. Photo calls <laughs> going on now. Getting them to stand still for a photo call is a little harder, Frank. Breeders, Cheryl and Chris Southerly. So for many of the, the, the handlers, it's their first time in the main arena at uh, Crofts, which is a special experience, but they've all coped very well, made a great spectacle for all of us. It's quite a step up, isn't it, from the, the show rings in the outer to then coming in under the, the bright lights, the 
big stands either side of you, <laughs> the both light. handlers and dogs. And, and there are thousands of audience here tonight, thousands of spectators here. Thank you so here. much to our judge, our fabulous breeders, sponsors. Well, everybody who made it into the final so has done so well here today. Picking up those points throughout the year, qualifying, making it to Crufts, being shortlisted, and then off go the Portuguese water dogs for their lap of honour. And huge congratulations to the winners and to Belleville Kennel, Kathy Thompson Morgan and Ed Morgan. Wonderful champions for the Breeders' Competition final. The excitement continues now in the main arena here on day two of Crufts. We have the junior handlers who could be the professional handlers of the future about to come into the ring. This is the Joe Cartledge Memorial International Junior Handling Final. You're about to see 36 young people who are aged between 10 and 18 when they qualify to represent their country and they have traveled from across the globe to compete here today. The competition is named after Joe Cartledge, who along with his wife Liz was really instrumental in starting junior handling as a sport back in the 1970s. Now these handlers have already competed for an hour and a half this morning and all of them are showing dogs that they only met today. So none of them have brought their dogs with them from across the globe. They've met dogs this morning, had to create a bond with them and we're going to see how they cope with showing a new dog in the final of the competition now. Our judge is going to be coming into the ring shortly. A really well-known handler who's been involved in handling for 40 years, beginning with a Finnish Spitz. This is Roni de Jeans from the Netherlands. Now, he said that the future of the hobby of dog showing is in the hands of these young people that we're about to see. And all he's looking for is a really calm handler who goes about showing off the dog. This is not about showing off yourself. It's about making the dog look the best that it possibly can. But unlike the judging we just saw, where we're looking at the breed standards and how the dogs fit that, here we're not actually looking at the dog's construction, we're simply looking at how well the handler presents them. Here's Rony Dudines just coming into the ring now. He says it's a huge honour to be judging in this competition and he's accompanied there by Liz Cartledge, so the wife of Joe who the competition was renamed after at the end of last year. So we're going to meet all the finalists and give them your support. Fantastic to see so many people here in the arena the supporting these Australia. young people. So we're going to start Diana off with Mussolino. Diana Mussolino. This is our Australian representative and she has an English Springer Spaniel here. 
We have Laura Devos coming into the ring representing Belgium. Standard Poodle was the choice for her. Our Bulgarian finalist is Samuel Bonin. Now all the way here from Canada is Laurence Giguere. Really smart dog she's got there. Another English Springer. It's interesting to see the breeds that these young people request. Sara Malinova representing the Czech Republic. Followed by Sarah De Angelis from Denmark. We then have Gerda Vnush from Estonia showing a miniature schnauzer. Representing Finland. Jonas Sotala is our representative for Finland, chosen an Australian Shepherd. Now coming into the ring, it's France. Our French Sarah representative, Duchelou. Sarah Dechelou. Little shelty there. Representing Germany, Alexandra. From Juno. Germany, we have Alexandra Juno. Chose a Labrador. Representing Greece. Our Greek Epi representative, we have Ektika Senzina. Chose a border collie. And from Hungary. Another miniature Schnauzer Straub. for Greta Straub from Hungary. Hungary. Keeping up the applause, here's Iceland. Our Freya Icelandic competitor, Freya Gundan Stottia. Representing Ireland. And then it's the turn of Molly Milan. A huge cheer here for our Irish finalist. Showing a Bracco Italiano. Representing Israel. Another standard Liri poodle from Israel. Sokolowski. We have Liri Sokolowski. Cecilia De Bella Italy. is here from Cecilia Italy. Dibella. All the way from Japan. The standard poodles Yuha. proving popular Yuha. here. Our Japanese representative, Yuha Tamura. From Latvia. From Latvia, Alice we have Sameta. Alice Sameta. Representing from Lithuania, Lithuania Dia we have Dia Maximovushia. From Malta, Mariah. Followed in Mancaro. by Mariah Mancaro from Malta. Another border collie there. From Monaco, Nicole Zaza. From Monaco, we have Nicole Zaza, another Australian shepherd there. From the Netherlands. Finalist from the Netherlands, Sole Hockershoven. She's chosen an Airedale to show. All the way from New Zealand. Now, Jacob some of these competitors Ashwell. have traveled very far to get here. From New Zealand here, we have Jacob Ashwell. One of the older competitors Coming in the group. Norway. Representing Mimi Norway, Indini we have Nielsen. Mimi Indini Nilsson, another English Springer Spaniel here. And from Poland, Zosha. A Siberian Raboj. Husky for Zosha Raboj from Poland. From Portugal. Maria from Portugal Maria. and another Maria. English Springer. Some great promotion for the breed here. We have Maria Ribeiro. From Romania. Our Alexandra Romanian finalist, Ambrose. Alexandra Ambrus, chosen a pointer in the ring. From Slovakia, Daniela, From Slovakia, Daniela Nemetova. Nemetova. Remember, all of these handlers have only Virginia. just met these dogs Nikita today. An American Cocker Spaniel for Nikita Rehar Fries from Slovenia. All the way from South Africa. Anita, Anita Jane Schumann is here representing South Africa and she's chosen a Golden Retriever. Coming Biggest entry in the Gundog Ring this year. Adriana Sanchez Natividad. Our Spanish competitor, a huge cheer for Adriana Natividad. Representing Sweden. Brought the crowd with her. Nelly Podlinski. Nelly Podlinski is our finalist from Sweden. She's chosen a Whippet. Coming from Switzerland. Closely followed by Nora, Nora Sutter. Sutter. A Swiss competitor, one of the younger entrants in this competition. Representing Ukraine. From the Ukraine, Katrina we have Katrina Velichenko. She's chosen a Whippet. And then it's going to be a huge now cheer because United it's time Kingdom. for the finalist from the United Paige Kingdom. Hughes. Here we have Paige Hughes, an unfair advantage in terms of crowd support, but we'll cheer and her anyway. And our final USA. competitor from the USA, Octavia this is Octavia Stenson. Stenson. 
So as I said, Roni has judged these handlers earlier today. Wow. They were given time to bond That's with nice. these dogs and then he oh, has put them through their paces, looking at how they present the dog, how they move, looking at how quiet they are, how they let the dog come to the forefront. So he's just going to remind himself of the bonds he's seen. And it's so important if you are a professional handler that you can create that almost instant bond with the dog to get the best out of it. They met, the Many of these young morning. people say that they want and to go on to work with animals and potentially to become professional to handlers in the future. Now, if you know a young person who would love to get into Roni handling, we have two uh, organisations in the UK, Street, the Junior the Handling Street, Association Street. and then the Young Kennel Club, which is represented and here at Crufts. Both have websites, so do take a look. So they've got loads of information on how to get started in showing. And you don't have to have a pedigree dog to compete in handling either. We should just say that, yeah, 36 dog breeders and owners have put, uh, brought their dogs here to be exhibited by these juniors. They were here at the crack of dawn, and the dogs are still here now. Do so everyone is always grateful to those. It? But I think we are going to find out now which okay. of these finalists has made it Step through forward. to the shortlist. Denmark. Our first competitor Sarah from Denmark De is Sarah DeAngelis. She's showing a pointer here today. We would like Next Estonia. in from Estonia is Gerda Vanush. She's 17, so another of our older competitors. Showing a miniature schnauzer here today. We'd also like to invite France. From France, Sarah we have Sarah Deschelieu coming stage. in to the ring with, with that Shelty. The fourth competitor is fourth into the shortlist Iceland. from Iceland a Freya huge cheer Freya Gunstofia with the Tibetan Spaniel she chose to show a Tibetan Spaniel we saw them in the utility group now, yesterday we would also like Italy from Cecilia Italy we Bella. have Cecilia de Bella with the Spanish water dog she chose a Spanish water dog to exhibit today we now would like Monaco. Monaco's Nicole representative, Zaza. Nicole Zaza, coming forward now. And An Australian Shepherd for her. Happy to have been selected too. She's 17 years old, has English Cocker Spaniels at home. On to the next one. So who will be next we into the shortlist? The New Zealand. All the way Jacob from New Zealand, Ashwell making that journey please. worthwhile. Jacob New Ashwell New coming in. He's 17, has and pointers at home, as well as Rottweilers and Dalmatians. Zosia Raboy. From Poland, we have Zasha Roboy. Chose a Siberian Husky now, to show today. We would like Sweden, Nelly Next Podinski. into the ring, Nelly Podinski from Sweden. Two spots left. So we have two places left in the shortlist. One of those will one of them be the UK? The it will. Fantastic. Listen to the cheer. Paige Hughes. Hughes coming in to and the centre of the ring, which means Octavia our last Stenson. finalist is Octavia Stenson here from the USA. But a huge honour for However, all of these young people to make event. it to so the finals the here at Crufts. Fantastic social event. They all bring gifts, bring trinkets time. from their home countries and to gift to one another. And they really do make lifelong friendships competing here. A huge thing to do. Some of these uh, handlers, only 10 when they qualify to be making the journey all the way to Crufts. Just incredible. So the judge is going to take a closer look at those 11 finalists so now. Sarah Starting Angelis. with Sarah from DeAngelis Denmark. from Denmark. She has been here so before lovely, and was shortlisted last year. She has Basenjis and Beagles at home. 
And at 18, she's already an old hat. She's been showing for eight years. Her dream is to become a veterinarian one day. So our judge here will be watching to make sure the handlers don't break the golden rule. Now this means that a handler should never get between the dog and the judge. So that's Sarah, our first finalist. Quickly on to our Estonian finalist. This is Gerda Vanush, another of our older competitors, 17. Began showing when she was 11 with a miniature schnauzer, which is what she's chosen here to show in the ring. She's interested in moving to production TV when she's older, so great uh, first step into the limelight here, featuring on the live stream at Crufts. She already competes in dancing outside of her dog showing. So now on to France, we have Sarah Duchelieu. Another here who's no stranger to the big ring here at Crufts and has represented France before. This is Sarah Duchelieu, she's 18. Her grandparents breed Shetland Sheepdogs, which is again the breed that she's requested here. But remember, this isn't her dog. She only met this dog this morning. Outside of dogs, she loves horse riding and hopes to set up her own her equestrian centre one day. So lovely to see her choice today. Judges looking That's for good straight Sarah lines Dushin. and the right pace. It's very important the handler moves each breed at the right pace. Now on to Iceland. On to Freya now from Freya. Iceland. Ruben She's 17 Sosa. years old. Her home has a beach on freeze She's and has 17. been showing since she, she was nine like years old. Unlike the breeders' competition we saw earlier, where outfit is not counted, in handling it's really important that the handler is presented in a way that allows them to show the dog to best advantage, to move freely, and also that the colour complements the dog that they're showing. That's Freya from Iceland there. Now, Moving on to our Italian finest, Cecilia de Bella. She's 16 and chosen to show a Spanish water dog, which is what she has at home. Started showing because it's in the family. Her dad used to show boxers. She's also interested in training for obedience with her dogs and would love to become a professional handler and a judge one day. So this great experience for that for Cecilia. There goes. And again, the red there, a really great choice for the Spanish water dog because it helps to accentuate the dog's uh, outline, as it does for our Monaco finalist, Nicole Zaza, showing an Australian shepherd, but at home she has English Cocker Spaniels. She began showing at seven years of age. And interestingly, she'd like to enroll on a criminology course at university. So again, they're just making dog. sure not to break that golden That's rule Nicole by going Zaza between the dog and the judge. And now it is International Women's Day, but we do have one and of our uh, boy in the finals here. This is Jacob Ashwell Jacob from New Zealand. Ashwell, He's 17. Chosen a pointer here. He does have a pointer at home, as well as the Dalmatians and the Rottweiler. Been showing He's since she was five years old, a third generation of dog and shower, so literally born into this. When he's not showing, he really enjoys going to the gym every day and would like to own a health and fitness business. Well done, Jacob from New Zealand. Our Polish finalist now, Zofia Raboj from. Uh, she is 14 years old. At home, she has Basenjis, but today chosen a Siberian Husky to show. She says she started handling dogs uh, just three years ago, so fantastic achievement to have got here to Crufts. Currently at secondary school and is hoping to look after people or animals one day. She's very good. She says she usually spends her spare time doing her homework. I feel like maybe she just put that on the floor. Moving Sasha on now Rappoy to Nelly Podlinski. This is our Swedish finalist, 18 years Nelly old, so one of the older competitors here. At home, she has a Go Sheltie and Bernese Mountain Nelly. Dogs, but she's chosen a Whippet to show in the ring here. She'd love to work with animals, but she's also considering working in teaching. 
so the handlers can freestand or stack the dogs. It's really important that pace that they're moving back to the end of the line. That's Nelly from Sweden. Now, Paige is a really well-known handler here in the UK, really talented, just 15 years of age, representing the country. At home, she has 17 Siberian Huskies and a Dalmatian. She's been training dogs since she was five, competed as soon as she turned six, which is the youngest you can show here in the UK. And interestingly, as well as showing, she also takes part in rallies and treks with her Siberian Huskies. She's interested in becoming a dog handler in the police force one day. And the final of the 11 in our shortlist, this is Octavia Stenson, the oldest competitor here. She's 19, all the way over from the USA. She's majoring in Mandarin at school and loves learning new challenges and um, languages. It sounds like a, a challenge to me. Would love to become a professional handler one day and has Norwegian Buhans and a, a Welsh Corgi Pembroke at home. There you go, that's Octavia from the She's chosen a Hungarian visitor today. So our judge just taking a final look along his shortlist here. He's kept all of the finalists in the ring because they've done incredibly to get here. And remember, he's not looking at the dog's confirmation here. He's purely looking at which of these handlers is showing the best. And his answer is the Siberian Husky shown with... Zosha Raboy. Zasha Rabo from Poland. Fantastic win for Poland there. In second. In second place, we go to Italy. It's our Italian finalist, Cecilia well Debella. Cecilia Debella. And we have a third. Oh, a huge Hamburg cheer. For Freya from Freya Iceland here. So many congratulations to those shortlisted that got this far, but... Huge round of applause there for everybody who made it. But the competition is here for Zosha Rabov, showing the Siberian I Husky here, just 14 years old and representing lovely. Poland. Remember, she only started competing in handling three years ago, and she has made it here and won from Zosha all 36 from Poland, of these young the people. International junior handling so Liz Cartledge, husband well of Joe, done. who Big the competition is the named off, after, here Cartledge. to present the award to her. And in second place, Italy, it's Second place, Debella Cecilia De Bella from Spanish Italy dog. with a Spanish well water dog. Oh, tears of joy there. Such and a big achievement place, for these young people. Freya and third, Freya from Iceland. I think she brought most of Iceland with her by the sound of the crowd. Huge cheer for her. Well done. Congratulations. So and a huge well done to those dogs who have been here with handlers they've only just met since 8.30 this morning. So you'll be directed by the stewards, please, all the way round. Remember, if you know a young person who would love to compete in a competition like this, it may be in three years' time, could be winning it, do take a look on the Young Kennel Club website or the Ju Junior Handling country. Association. Tears of joy there from our winner in the centre of the ring, just 14 years old. lovely to see all three of the winners there now just taking the time to just pet Handless. those dogs and say thank you for helping them Denmark. to get to the, this position in the final. Estonia, France, Monaco, New Zealand, Sweden, the United Kingdom and the USA. So 
much more to come in the arena tonight at Crofts, including who will win the Gundog group. But for now, the stage is set for these fantastic international junior handling winners to take their final lap of honour as they leave the ring. For over 130 years, we have given advice, protection, and a lifetime of care. Agria, enriching life with animals. Could not go for a walk without a dog. It just wouldn't be worth going for a walk, would it? You know, it just, it just wouldn't. The fully electric Škoda Enyaq SUV and Škoda Enyaq Coupe. With 0% APR now available, jump into electric. Škoda. ...conservation organisation, and it does look after the interests of over 150,000 members. I can remember when it was Wagby, the Wild Fowlers Association of Great Britain. That's how old I am. And if you want to find out more about it, it is uh, basc.org.uk. It is our wonderful gun dog night, and our breed winners are lining up in the collecting ring. We uh, will be having the gamekeepers co competition after this. They've been judged, thanks to Skinners, they've been judged in Hall 5 all day long and run by BASC in the gamekeepers competition competition, as we'll find out in a few moments' time, is all ex or current gun dog working gun dogs. And thank you so much to BASC for yet again running. We move now to something completely different, a display like of gun dog capabilities. So we know the gun dog group gun has dog some of the most popular breeds in, in the UK, the from the Labrador to the Goldie to the Cocker Spaniel. But each of them was bred for a specific purpose. And we are going to see some of those abilities demonstrated here by some of the country's top gun dog handlers. We are going to be joined by a trio of handlers in just a few moments to show us these amazing dogs in action doing what they were bred to do. So we see them in the show ring, but they were bred to aid with gun hunting in the field, and that's what we're going to see examples of. So taking part in the display will be John Bailey, chairman of the Kennel Club Field Trial Committee. He's going to be working his Spaniels and a Labrador in the ring here today. Been competing in trials for over 30 years and has made up 25 field trial champions. He also won the Springer Spaniel Championships with his Springer Spaniel Restmore Fizzy. Joining him with his Spaniels will be Roy Ellershaw, who's made up six field trial champions. He will be showing his Clumber Spaniel Fen, who's the top winning Clumber in field trials this season. And finally, Rory Major, another member of the Kennel Club's field trial committee with his hunt, point and retrieve breeds. These are the multi-purpose gun dogs. He has shown Brittany's German wire Wirehead pointers and his Hungarian wirehead Vizsla Jago won at the Hunt Point Retrieve Championship, which took place in Yorkshire. So, to take you through the display is the Kennel Club's Gundog Events Manager, Katie Bruce. 
thank you all for joining us for our gun dog display, which, as you can see, is sponsored by Basque. We are very proud of our traditional gun dogs here at the Kennel Club, and I hope that you will enjoy our spaniels that we have for you today. I think the handlers are getting ready, so I'll introduce the little dogs. So John will be bringing in Sue, and we are starting with our youngsters. Sue is a very special pup out of John's field trial champion, Fern, who we'll see later. And she's very excited, so she's being carried into the arena. Oh, she's my, meet our VIPs. <laughs> there she goes. She's only seven months old, so she's very excited and right at the beginning of her training journey. Roy is, has got Corrie, who is a Columbus Spaniel, also a very young dog. She is bred by John and Jane Smith Bodden, who really championed this breed over the last few years. And Corrie is a stunning example of a working clumber. She's obviously a lot bigger than Fern, but still also very young. What we are doing here is we're just gonna teach the dogs how to hunt. So the handlers have got very exciting little retrieves. That's a tennis ball in both of their cases. And they're just gonna drop them gently into the brushings. Lots of encouragement. Oh, come on, Sue, where is he? Into the brushings, and then she gets the reward. Lots and lots of praise when she picks that up. Corrie also doing the same. Oh, Roy's got the tennis ball there. Corrie's a little dist... Go on, Corrie. Now, the clumber needs a little bit more encouragement, a little bit more direction. She's very excited by what's been going on on the carpet here today. Oh! <laughs> Fern over here is... Sue, sorry, that's her mother, Fern, is getting very excited. And you can see that John is encouraging her there to put that very wiggly little bottom on the ground before she gives up the retrieve. That'll be used later on in our training as we progress. Ooh. Good girl, well done, Sue. Now, Corrie, what's she still looking for? Has she got her tennis ball yet? She is still a very young, only nine months old, this dog, so this is still a huge environment for them. Has she found it yet? Has Roy actually put it in there? She's going, good girl. And Roy's crouching down to encourage her there. We want lots of enthusiasm, lots of drive for these young dogs. This is all a game at the moment, nothing too serious. Still hunting these brushings. This is to replicate the cover that you might find out in the field. Obviously, we wouldn't usually do our gun dog work in an arena. These dogs will be working cover on the shooting field as they get older. Now, what we might do next... <laughs> oh, well done. Let's give these a round of applause for that. Come on, they're pretty good. They are only babies. Well done. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to be testing our pups on their retrieving skills. This is the next step in their journey. So John's got the tennis ball. Sue knows that it's there. Calling her to him, lots of encouragement, lots of praise, just holding her there, holding her up. She's seen it and letting her go straight after it and Corrie as well, boof, in she goes. Oh, she's missed it. Here it is. Just give her a little gent. <laughs> well done, Sue. I'm also really pleased with that kick, by the way. <laughs> Well done, so that is our puppy. So we're holding them up there. John was holding her up just to make sure that she's got lots of enthusiasm to go and get that. You don't want to encourage them, you know, by forcing them to sit, making it dull. Oh, Corrie's decided to follow. And Corrie's gone back on the lead. And those are our youngsters. Well done. Next, we will be showing our intermediate dogs. So if you were lucky enough to be here on Gun Dog Day last year at Crufts 2023, you would have seen these two as puppies. Now they are fully grown, still only 18 months old though. So they're still on their training journey, not quite yet ready for the shooting field. 
but they're just practicing. But hopefully, they should be able to demonstrate us further skills. So here we have John with Mickey, who is, of course, one of the nation's most loved breeds, a Springer Spaniel. And then Roy has got Izzy, who is a very beautiful chocolate tan white cocker. Look how cute she is. So, so now we've done our excitement and enthusiasm with the puppies, we're now teaching steadiness. So we've got the dogs in a sit, we've walked away, the clap simulates a shot fired, slowly walk back to our dogs. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Wish I could do that with mine. Good dogs. Very well behaved. Lots of praise, gentle strokes to say good, good dogs. Roy's popped a retrieve out for Izzy over there, and he's walking to fetch it himself. This is to teach Izzy that it's not always for her. She's done a really good job there. Good girl, steady. John's done the same over here with Mickey, thrown it out himself, and whilst Mickey really wants to pick that up, John's fetched it, and Mickey gets lots of praise. These are really important steps when training your gun dog. It's all very exciting to have the big retrieves and the throwing and, and lots of you know, flashy retrieving. Really what you need to do is to make sure that puppy is steady. Now, we've gone a bit haywire. They are still young dogs. We're getting them to hunt now and you want lots of enthusiasm. Over goes Izzy, over the fence. Our Basque fencing lining the arena here today. Mickey's getting another retrieve. See, he marks it there. Lots of praise for being steady. Called away from it. So he has to now remember that that's there and do what his handlers instructed him to do, which is to hunt. Is he the same? Hunting on. Another shot fired. Look at that. Beautiful. What's he going to be sent for? Lots of praise for stopping. And sent for the retrieve. Good boy. <laughs> Well done, Mickey. Encou lots of encouragement, lots of love. And Izzy to say, well done, little Izzy. Don't mind about the jumping out. We want to encourage these dogs to have drive, enthusiasm, and a love for their job. As you can see, if you were here last year, this is a lot of progression. So we've got John over here, teaching the dog back into the brushings, hunting up. Hunting that cover next to that Basque fencing. Calling the way into a new one. Let's just make sure we get leaves all over the arena. Stop again, good boy. I wish I had that level of control. Dummy thrown. So we've got one out now here. And a second one. Oh, good boy, Mickey, steady. And he's being sent for the second, picked. Beautiful, well done, Mickey. Oh, nearly took it to our VIPs, but decided to return it to John, good boy. Now, is he gonna remember? Yes, he does, and he picks the second retrieve. Not quite sure about that one. Something more exciting on the floor there. I don't think he's had his dinner yet, just in case you know, we had any accidents, so. Good boy, well done. And Roy, going to demonstrate the same exercise with little Izzy. Over she goes. <laughs> Lots of enthusiasm in these working cockers. Hunting her on. What's she gonna get? Calling her to him. You want to make sure, shot fired, beautiful. Good girl. Where is it? Retrieve thrown. She's getting a second retrieve as well. You can imagine how tempting that is. These are only 18 months old. Oh, she's gotten confused with the white balls. Over she goes. Good girl. Back again. Again, a beauty. Hey, she's found it. Good girl. And great pace as she comes back. <laughs> Da, 
Does she remember that she's got a second one? Yes, she does. Good girl. Very clever. That is, I think, what we finished with our second, yeah? Yep. So that is our intermediate docs. Now, these exercises, so thank you very much, Mickey, and to Izzy. Absolutely wonderful work. I hope we all do remember them from last year, and we'll hopefully see them again next year at the end of their training journey. But what's this? Rabbits are being snuck out into the arena behind the handlers' backs. Hmm. <laughs> Some technical hitches with our fake rabbits, but we'll be fine. If you would like to find out how you can get involved with your Spaniel, because I am sure you are all desperate to know, please do visit the Field Trial pages on our Kennel Club website. You can find lots of comprehensive information on how you could find a Field Trial Club near you or a training session. Or indeed, visit, if you are here for the whole of duration of Crufts, please do visit Hall 3, the dog activities stand, where the wonderful Kennel Club staff will be able to tell you everything you need to know about getting involved in gun dogs yourselves. Obviously, some of these dogs do work in the shooting field where we would be using live game. But as you can see, we also do work on dummies. So if shooting's not your um, cup of tea, please do don't, con not consider using your Spaniel for working. There are plenty of working tests held throughout the country. Indeed, the Kennel Club holds its own working test at the wonderful Cape Thorn Hall in June. And the entries are now open, so if you would like to uh, enter, you'll see us there. Please do come along. We'd love to have you. Even if you just want to visit, we'd be delighted. So, these are our advanced dogs. As you can see, no leads. At heel, we have Smudge, the Springer, Fern, the mother of little Sue, and Ember, the little black one. And over with Roy, we have Meg, the golden one, and B, the black one. Now we are going to be doing advanced work. So, Ember, asked to hunt. But don't forget what we put out earlier, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got two at heel, very impressive. Little embers over the basque fencing there. Hunting through the cover. What might she find? Fern's desperate to get involved. She stopped, and what she flushed? Ooh, nothing, apparently. Watching that hunting, turning on John's stop whistle, which is absolutely fantastic. Good girl. And the rabbit goes very speedily, as you can see, across the arena. Shot's been fired. That rabbit's definitely been shot. And she's sent for the retrieve. And she's picked it. Very good girl. Just building on that steadiness that we saw earlier, so she didn't chase after the rabbit. I know lots of our dogs at home probably would have done, so that is great control. You see why we did the foundation earlier. Now let's see if Roy can achieve the same. He's hunting the cover. Are there any more rabbits left in this arena? Let's just check over here. So we've got B, I think, who's doing the hunting. Yes, the black one, and then Meg, who's walking at heel. Stopped on the whistle there that we saw earlier. Look at those fluffy trousers. I literally love them. Ask to hunt. Shot fired. And she sent for it. Oh. Pardon? What time? Fan. Oh, these are quite big dummies for very little dogs. Good girl. Lots of encouragement. Now, let's see what we've got for our final exercise. Smudge is up next, I believe. Lovely Springer. Springer, uh, Smudge actually won best dog at the Spaniel Championships this year, so we're expecting great things in this, just destroying our <laughs> brashings, hunting on. Roy's gonna hunt his as well, absolutely. So this will be simulating as if we were on a picking up team. There's lots of birds down. 
We need to get dogs out. And a shot's been fired. Retrieve thrown. That's our bird down. Who's being sent for it? And it's little Meg. Oh, she's chosen to go round the fencing. Very smart. Come on, Meg. Over she goes. Good girl. Very good. We're going to carry on hunting. And maybe there might be a retrieve on the other side. Go on, Smudge. Show us what you're made of. Good boy. The hunting power of these springers is very exceptional. And is there going to be a shot fired? Shot fired. Dogs are steady. Retrieve out. Smudger goes over the fence. Beautiful. Oh, overshot. You didn't see it. Hey, good boy. Thank you very much to John Bailey, Roy Ellishaw, Fern Smudge, Ember, Meg, and B for a wonderful display here in the arena. I do hope you enjoy the rest of your evening looking at our fantastic gun dogs and enjoy the rest of your night. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you to John and to Roy. I'm sure we have seen a true insight of the wonderful training that they give to their dogs. Give them a very, very big round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you to uh, Kate. So now, our tremendous arena party, they uh, pick up the debris because we're staying with gun dogs. Of course, with two more items left on the programme this evening. Look at that. As if by magic, we're in to the big ring. And our very, very grateful thanks indeed to Skinners and to the British Association of Shooting and Conservation. life with animals. I could not go for a walk without a dog. It just won't be worth going for a walk, would it? You know, it just, it just wouldn't. Thank you very much, Skinners, and thank you to BASC. So we now come to the six that have qualified, but we do need a judge, and escorted here into the ring tonight by the chairman of the Crofts Committee, Tom Mather. Please put your hands together for Alan Meldrum, judge of our gamekeepers' classes. Very experienced gun dog trainer, Handler, like his grandfather, father, and, and uncle, so well recognised. And here is the world. judge for the Competing gamekeeper classes tonight. It's class Alan Meldrum. Alan's from Scotland, a very experienced gun dog trainer, third generation of a, a, as a gun dog trainer, in fact. And he's been judging field trials since 1998. So our aim in the Gamekeepers competition final, Frank, we're going to be looking for the overall winner across all the Gamekeeper classes. So all the dogs that you're going to see have to have been working on Gamekeepers estates throughout the shooting season. And we're going to see now the six winners from each of the qualifying classes. And the first one in is the winner of the Pointer Setter or Hunt Point Retrieve Reeds, and it's a large Munsterlander. 
This is Pepper, two years of age, and Hannah Foreman. And next one in, it's the winner of the English Springer Spaniel class. And this one is a four-year-old, Condor Rowe, or Archer, as he's known. Best English Springer here in the Gamekeeper classes. And now the flat-coated retriever, the winner of the Any Other Variety Retriever class. Berry, this is Louise Pierce, the handler. First time at Crufts and very happy to be in the big ring here. The, the other Spaniel class was won by the Welsh Springer, Tiger Rock top, top Gun, Ollie, a Welsh Springer. Just 15 months old. And this is Dora, the Black Labrador female, two years of age, who won the class. Any variety of gun dog owned by retired gameskeeper and Sophie Mayer is her owner and handler. And finally, from the Labrador Retriever class for gamekeepers, it's Tweed, a Labrador, a Fox Red Labrador here. So these are the finalists for the overall gamekeepers competition. Each of them has won their class earlier in the day. So Frank, it's a chance now then for the judge for Alan Meldrum to have a, a final look at all these dogs and, and decide which should be the overall winner. And it is some accolade, isn't it, for for these dogs, and some of whom are very much still where they're working. Yes, you will see some differences in the working type as opposed to the show type. and. Uh, Alan will be looking at them from the point of view of their working abilities. Are they fit for function? Do they have all the, that they need in fitness and the head type and the muzzle to uh, to retrieve or pick up? There is the Labrador Retriever, much lighter than we see in the show Retriever. The black bitch, um, just young. And here the stronger male, the Fox Red, which is very popular as a working Labrador. This one. That, it wouldn't be out of place in the showing. He's got nice substance and good bone and a very happy temperament and a double coat that's very important in the breed. Harsh double top coat, yep. So he's going to take his time and ask each of them to move as well. So as you see in the group judging, he'll be again assessing each dog against the breed standard. And again, most of all, he'll want sound movement here. It's, it's no good than being lovely looking but with, if they can't move well sound movement good drive from the hawks good reach in front here's the english springer stepping out yep this is archie who worked 40 days this season does picking up and working in the beaters line as well has been in the main arena once before and now the flat coat retriever and this is a, this is a very typical of the breed very happy built on streamlined outline and first time at Crufts for Berry, that seems very at home in the ring. And here, here is the Welsh Springer, the chestnut and white, the Tiger Rock Top Gun, Ollie. First time in the main, only 15 months of age, just looking a little bit overawed in the, uh, in the main arena here. Yeah, first time experience for Ollie. Uh, this, the, the Black Labrador, and Zora is just two years of age, bred by the handler, Sophie Mayer. And it's a first time at Crufts for both this pair. And here, the very masculine and sound Labrador Retriever, Nith Valley Tweed at Foxhope. Emma Banford is the handler here, the co owns Tweed, with her husband, who's a gamekeeper in the Scottish Highlands. So, representation from uh, across the UK out here on the famous green carpet. Now, He's seen them all in the outside rings and judged them. Final decision now in the main arena. The one he thinks is best from the gamekeeper classes. And this is for the North Esker Memorial Trophy, prestigious trophy in the gamekeeper's world. They've beaten an awful lot of competition. Oh, going for the Fox Red Labrador, it's Tweed and Emma Banford. And he's a very typical Labrador. It just shows dual purpose. He could equip himself well in the uh, in the show ring. He's obviously a great worker as well. Congratulations to Archer and Aaron 
It's the English Springer Spaniel Archer, the four-year-old, who picks up the runners-up spots in our gamekeepers competition final and looking for a third place out of the remaining four. Oh, it's the young Welsh Springer that takes third place. That's a nice win for the young dog. Yes, OK. Well, we have our lineup and a really striking win here for Tweed. Fox Red, four year old Labrador, picks up on grouse, pheasant, partridge, but not bad, Frank, for your first time at Crufts. And for a, Tweed. Gr a great credit to the breed. Real dual purpose dog, sturdy, athletic, obviously a great worker. Congratulations, that's a lo lovely choice by Alan. Yeah. And here is the, the famous trophy. And that will be treasured, absolutely. Emma, as I mentioned, the, the handler, but co-owns Tweed with her husband. She's a gamekeeper up in the, the Highlands of Scotland. And there you go. Tweed is very happy to take possession of that rosette. Oh, well, he was. <laughs> he wants to have a game with it instead. But an awful lot of work goes into these dogs. We saw earlier the, the gun dog presentation, the work to train them up to yes. be working dogs. And, and picking up not only game, but picking up rosettes, rosettes as, well. as well. Yes. <laughs> not sure that was part of the training, maybe it was. <laughs> Lap of honor then for our gamekeepers competition final 2024 and the champion, the winner of the overall classes is Tweed, the four year old Labrador. Still plenty of action to come. We're awaiting, of course, the group judging of the gun dog group in this packed arena. It is, of course, Orca. And we are delighted to welcome to present the painting to the 2023 Best in Show winner. It is the amazing artist Anne Zutos, and Anne is escorted into the big ring tonight by the chairman of the... Well, we're about to see a very special presentation that happens here uh, at Crufts, and it's a presentation of this very special painting by Anne Zutos, artist. A full-time artist, uh, has painted professionally for more than 30 years. It is the painting of last year's best in show, the wonderful orca, the Legato Romagnolo from Croatia, who was the first ever of that breed to win best in show at Crufts. Isn't that a wonderful portraiture as well? And here is the handler, Javier, to come out to receive this painting. He thinks pretty pleased with it, I think, as well. I wonder what orca will make of it. And Anne has very specifically placed Orca in the painting, standing in the area of Delta Del Po, which is where the breed originated. And if you were able to see closely there, round the neck of Orca is a little Orca pendant as well. Now that is real attention to detail. Thank you very much, Anne. fabulous again. work from Anne Zutos. And Anne's work, including paintings of wild animals and dogs, can be found in collections all over the world, including the Royal Collection Trust. But Orca, well, she was just four years old when she won Best in Show 2023, now happily retired. And that'll take pride of place, I'm sure, back in Croatia. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we had two tremendous groups 12 months, uh, two nights ago, last night even. It's been a long week. And uh, now it is the third of the Magnificent Seven. It is, of course, our gun dog group. And to uh, take us through our uh, best of breed winners, it is a uh, great pleasure to hand over to uh, Jenny Shora. 
It's time now for the grand finale of the second day here at Crufts. We're about to see our 32 best of breed winners in the gun dog group and discover who will join Elton, the French Bulldog, and Rafa, the Papillon, in best in show on Sunday night. Now, I'm joined by Frank Kane, our judge here. Huge gun dog lady, isn't she? Yes, Jenny Miller of the Fielding English Springers. She's had many champions in the breed. And uh, her daughter, Kirsty, is following in her footsteps as a very good judge also. Jenny's been judging all of these gun dogs for many years. She's also been successful in Sky Terriers. So she's a versatile dog lady and uh, very knowledgeable and a good eye for a dog, which is, uh, will be well used here. Now, there were 4,528 gun dogs entered this year, the biggest group at the show, and we're about to see our best of breed winners coming into the ring. Here's the first of them, the Bracco Italiano. Followed by our Brittany. First of the setters, it's the English setter. Followed by the first of the German pointers, this, the long-haired variety. Another German breed, the German short-haired pointer. And completing the trio, we have the German wire-haired pointer. Heaviest of the setter family, the Gordon setter. Followed by the sleek lines of the Hungarian Vizsla. Hungarian wirehead Vizsla, just a slightly heavier type. The original setter, the workmanlike Irish red and white. Here's the racy elegance of the Irish setter. Followed by the Italian Spinoni. Look at that noble elegance there. From Italy, the Legato Romagnolo. Next into the ring, it's our large Munsterlander best of breed. The stylish pointer from a huge entry today. Followed by a big winning Chesapeake Bay Retriever here. The curly coat with its astrakhan curls. Now, we saw Baxter win Best in Show two years ago. Could this flat coat follow in his paw prints? Oh, biggest entry in the whole of Crufts, the Golden Retriever. What an achievement. Closely followed by the second highest entry, the Labrador Retriever. Ah, the little tolling dog from Canada, the Nova Scotia Duck Toller. A big winner here, our first Spaniel, the American Cocker. Coming over from Sweden to win this. Heavyweight of the Spaniels, the Clumber Spaniel. Followed by the Merry Little Cocker, ever wagging tail. 410 of them here today. The then we have the English Springer Spaniel coming into the ring. The Field Spaniel, Ancient Land Spaniel. The clown of the group. Here we have the Irish Water Spaniel. Oh, the wonderful Golden Liver, the Sussex Spaniel. Little pause before our Welsh Springer Spaniel best of breed there. The Spanish water dog, very versatile. And another who's no stranger to this ring, this is our Weimarana best of breed. Top gun dog in the country for last year. And then representing the import register, we have the Portuguese pointer. So, Frank, in gun dogs, we're not just looking at one variety of dogs. There's actually four subgroups, isn't yes, there? Yes, we've, we've got several families here. We've got the Retrievers, the Spaniels, 
the setters and pointer and the hunt point retrieve. That's the hunt point retrievers are the versatile continental gun dogs which can do the job of all of them. It can hunt the game, flush it out and retrieve it. So Jenny taking her first walk round, taking in the outline of the dogs, which is obviously often the indicator of good breed type, that they're the right proportions and balance. And all of these uh, dogs, regardless of which subcategory they're in, they were bred essentially to either find or retrieve game in some form. All bred for a purpose, fit for function, beautiful outline on the golden retriever. And we do have some big winners in here, both in the UK and internationally, don't we? It looked a strong group as they came in. So we will take a closer look now at each of our best of breed winners. Now there's the first one, the Bracco Italiano. Comes from a mating of hounds with gun dog breeds, and it's produced this dog, which is an HPR. It can do all the jobs required of a gun dog. This one is actually a veteran dog at eight and a half years old. His pet name is Jeffrey, and he is the male breed record holder. There were 60, there were 57 Bracco here today. And they've really caught on in the show world. Athletic, great scenting powers, thick skin for protection working in cover. And that head is really distinctive in shape, isn't it? The body should be almost square in appearance and really powerful and tiring on the move. Square, cobby, but without heaviness is what the breed standard for the Brittany looks like. This is a breed that originated in France, and we're looking here at six-year-old Toby, who won through as best of breed. French national breed, they're noted for their working ability. They used to be called the Brittany Spaniel, but they're more versatile than just flushing game, so they're now just called the Brittany. They're compact and cobby, this lovely fine chiseling under the eyes, and a brisk gait. They're not as white, long stepping as many of the gun dogs. Moderate angulation gives them this moderate stride. And if you're looking here and thinking the dog has been docked, it hasn't. They are a breed that's naturally born bobtailed like this. The best of breed, Brittany Spaniel there. And here's the English setter, 127 of them t here today, and here's this tricolour winning best of breed. With the development of guns came the desire for wider ranging work for dogs, and the setters were the breeds which fulfilled that role. This is four-year-old Teddy in the ring. He's from Worcestershire, so just down the road, and his owners say he has a great personality and absolutely loves being in the show ring. The setters are all very stylish gun dogs. We see the slashing tail action, which is the hallmark of all of the setter breeds. This lovely quality in the head. This one is a tricolour. It's Belton, which means it's a sort of speckled, almost roan. It's also got some tan points to it. And unfortunately, three of the four setters are on the vulnerable breeds list, and this is one of them. The free, graceful movement there of the English setter. Very stylish and that slashing tail action. The largest but the least numerous of the German pointing breeds is this, our German long-haired pointer. We're looking for a powerfully built, well-balanced dog with an aristocratic head. They came over this country largely not for the show ring, but as working dogs. They're great workers, and they're related to the large Munsterlander, which we'll see later. These only come in this brown colour or trout. It's a sort of speckled brown cover or brown and white. This is a two and a half year old female called Grace, a big winner in Europe, and here today competing from Belgium.
Look at that long striding action, the level top line and really getting its hocks underneath it. That's economical sound action. And here is the German shorthead pointer, a multi-purpose hunt, point and retrieve. Everything about the German shorthead pointer is built for work. A special day for this dog, winning his first challenge certificate and first best of breed. What a way to do it at Crufts. He's called Arnold, hails from North Wales, just three years old. Striding out well. The long muzzle for retrieving the weatherproof coat on the top, the German short head pointer. It's dense coat protection against undergrowth and the weather. A German short head pointer there, really striding out around the ring. This is two and a half year old Arwen representing the German wirehead pointers and here from Italy where she's already a big winner. This is the larger, more rugged version of the German short head pointer. Just seeing the judge testing the texture of the coat, a harsh top coat, softer undercoat, very important. They're not just the a German shorthead in a wire coat. They're heavier, more substance on them. It's thought they, they were they were developed from the Cortel Griffon with some other hunting breeds in Germany. And they should have a deep chest, plenty of lung groom, and those bushy eyebrows and that full beard are a real calling card of the breed. Ladies and gentlemen, your German wirehead pointer best breed number 5128. That's a lovely quality dog, and again, that wonderful coat, top line, and stride. Functional working gun dog. The heavyweight of the Setter family, the Gordon Setter here, developed on the Duke of Gordon's estate in Banff. It comes only in this rich black and tan color. This is a four-year-old dog called Stevie G. He's here from Scotter in Lincolnshire, and he's described as fun-loving and full of life. Interestingly, Gordon Setters did used to have some white in them originally, but that was eventually bred out, and now we have this gorgeous, deep, shining black coal and that lustrous tan. Selected for their black and tan color, they also have this bladed bone, strong bone, Stronger heads, it's a slightly wider skull than the other setters, big ribs, and this short tail lashing on the move. Beautiful free movement there of the Gordon setter. This one is an import from Australia. There were 177 Hungarian Vizsla here today, and this was the best of breed winner, a four-year-old female called Vashta. The hunt point and retrieve breeds, this one would have used um, for retrieving from land and water, and we're looking for a really noble dog, both in its head and the way it carries itself. We see the judge just looking at the coat texture. It should be slightly greasy to the touch and comes only in this rich golden russet color. There's something gaunt and noble about the head. Lovely expression. Remarkable entry today, 177. I can't remember so many at a show. This is the best of breed winner. It's a great entry, and we're looking for a lively ground covering trot here. That tail absolutely lashing as she moves around the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed Hungarian Michelin number 5367. Everything Medium movement there. Medium in build, this gaunt, noble quality. And what a great mover this one is. The breed saw an entry of 81. And best of breed chosen. And now we have the cousin, the Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. Same glowing colour. In the 1900s, he was developed by crossing the Vizsla with the German wirehead pointer, which gives him this beard and these whiskers and the harsh top coat. Wirehead Vizslas are clearly 
This is two and a half year old female called Susie here from Lancashire. And the judge here is looking for a dog that's slightly longer than high, should have a level back, really well muscled over that slightly arched neck. And the resulting two puppies becoming foundation stock. They have to combine substance with athleticism, so slightly heavier in build, but they should also stride out well, a strong muzzle, and again furnished with this protection of the harsh top coat. And the colour can range anywhere from a golden sand to more of a russet colour. And to a wheaten colour, the lighter colour. The beautiful Hungarian wire-haired Vizsla there. The third of the setters is the Irish Red and White. The third of our setters, and sadly another that's counted as a vulnerable breed, this is our Irish red and white best of breed. There were 54 of them here today, and they were originally bred to freeze or set in a field to indicate when there was game. And they were originally preferred to the Irish setter because their white markings made them easier to see. They're athletically built, sturdy in bone. They're heavier in the bone than the Irish setter. Again, this lovely quality in the head, dark eyes giving this soft expression. The colour which defines them is pearly white brown coat with rich chestnut patches or islands. As you said, we describe the Irish as racy, but a red and white should be more athletic, powerful, and that movement we're looking for a long, free stride that's really effortless. This is four-year-old Arthur from County Durham. Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed, Irish and white setter, number five. A big win in the breed, striding out well, full of quality. I'm surprised the breed is not more popular. And from an overall entry of 262, there were two breeds. Now here is the Irish setter, coming from a big entry today. Racy in quality, these lovely raised eyebrows and almond-shaped eyes, giving this beautiful refinement and quality racy in outline i love this owner and handler blake crocker describes him as not the sharpest tool in the box this is four-year-old larry and that rich chestnut coat really is the calling card of this breed they are just beautiful as we see them move out rich 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 red fully furnished coat and of course this should be high on the leg giving it this racy of quality by racy we mean flowing outline long front legs a slight slope from the withers to the croup and this again this slashing tail action a thoroughbred amongst the setters striding out lashing tail and that beautiful expression which we look for from those almond shaped eyes. Gun dogs are usually slower to mature than other breeds, but here we have an 18 month old dog winning through in the Italian Spinonis. This is an ancient Italian breed that's all purpose as a gun dog. It should be robust and squarely built, and that face an almost human expression. And the judge just looking at their head shape, the diverging planes of the head. It said that they have to have an almost human expression. We saw her testing also the coat, the thick leathery skin and hard top coat. I love this, called Banksy, and apparently, although very well behaved here, a bit of a thug at home and known as a lovable rogue. They should have a pounding, trotting action. The top line of the Italian Spinoni, quite different. There's a slight dip behind the shoulders and a rise to the croup before falling away. And we see that top line there on the move. And this pounding trot, there's a lot of substance in that dog. Now on the table, the Legotto Romagnolo. And this is one of the first CC at Crufts ever, the first time they've had CCs here. And this one, following in the footsteps of Orca, the best in show winner last year. Italian duck retrieving breed originally, then trained to hunt for truffles. 
that dense curly coat has a woolly texture and the judge is looking for an attentive intelligent expression a compact body but really that waterproof coat is so important the curly waterproof coat amazing scenting power so they can hunt for truffles when you know they use to be duck retrievers when the lakes and marshes dried up and the ducks vanished, then they turned their skills to hunting truffle. Two-year-old Viva here, the female winner of the Legotto Romagnolo Best of Breed. Here we have a real multi-purpose gun dog, a winner both in the show ring and in the field. This is our large Munsterlander, named after the town of Munster in Germany. It was developed from the same stock as the German long-haired pointer, but some selective breeding led to this distinctive black and white colour. They're a real multi-purpose gun dog, working on land and water. Our judge looking for a strong muscular body and a slightly elongated head here, Frank. And this one is a full champion, which means it's not only successful in the show ring, but it's got its working certificate as well. Great workers. We saw one earlier in the gamekeeper classes, so that is testament to their power. In Germany, they also have a Klein Monsterlander, a smaller size, and also coming in liver, but the, as you say, this one only coming in black and white or a sort of roan colour, as we see here. We're looking for a long striding springy gait in our large Munsterlander. A series of graceful curves is what the standard calls for in the pointer. And here we have our best of breed winner today from 224. This orange and white flowing lines, the concave muzzle, the judge looking now, this upturned nose to give it scenting powers and large nostrils. This really is the thoroughbred of the gun dog group, and this is a female. She's three and a half years old, called Ava, and here from Cumbria today. It's thought that the breed was developed in Spain, but England is the the UK is the country of development. And this is a great example of a breed that is fit for function. It can range over large expanses, and this dog should be able to move all day. And, and they're called pointers because when they scent game, they go into a freeze or point, point in the direction where the game is hidden, and that alerts the huntsman. Clean striding action, the lashing tail, hallmarks of pointer breed type. Our best of breed pointer. We now come to the first of our retriever subgroup, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. There were 65 Chesapeake Bay Retrievers here today and this five-year-old dog called Gus from Lincolnshire won best of breed. This is a water dog, bred to retrieve and it should have a thick undercoat with a harsh oily top coat. Those eyes which are either yellow or amber are a distinctive feature. This is the heavyweight of the retrievers and the ultimate in a dog developed for a job and to survive in the environment. He's a duck retriever working in the icy waters of Chesapeake Bay, living outside and guarding the fishermen's and the hunting huts. And I love the description of the colours that we can have. Sedge, brown, ash, dead grass, all those kind of murky, watery colours. Well, they're camouflage colours, so they, they could uh, surprise the game. This one, very successful. Really good substance, strong bone, web feet, and this thick, greasy double coat. The effortless movement of the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Now the curly coated retriever is probably the oldest of the British retrievers. Its ancestry contains the now extinct English water spaniel and the Labrador. And it was the water spaniel that gave it this curly astrakhan coat, which gives the breed its name. This is a four-year-old dog called Thomas, here from Suffolk today. An owner describes him as intelligent, wonderful temperament, and quite the comedian, so who knows what we're going to see. Again, under that curly coat, there's a lot of substance. Big, well-sprung ribs, 
deep chest for heart and lung room for swimming for long periods in water. Great retrieving breed. And this nicely molded head. It's a beautiful molding and shape in the head. These fairly large dark eyes. Coming also in a liver color. The black is the more frequently seen. And this one's striding out very nicely. The breed has made great headway in recent years in this country. We're looking for an effortless, powerful gait here with that top line and tail flowing beautifully. Again, very nice stride, getting the hocks well underneath it. It's driving power. Could go for many hours working. The raciest of the retrievers here, the flat coat. Now, of course, Baxter took best in show two years ago. Could this dog, Smithy, be the next to take the title? The breed was developed in the 1850s, and they have heritage of setters, spaniels, and retrievers. Their friendliness is demonstrated in that ever-smiling expression. Streamlined of the retrievers, this one built on flowing lines, very happy wagging tail, hallmark of the breed. This one just uh, just trying to get into its stride on the mark, it just feeling the carpet, I think, a little bit here. Well, apparently he likes sleeping and ladies, so he may be able to smell some <laughs> ladies in the ring. <laughs> A beautiful black, flat coated retriever, best of breed there. There were 538 golden retrievers here today. Now, this is a beautiful outline. The golden retriever winning her first challenge certificate today from a huge entry. Huge entry and biggest entry in the show. 538 of them here today. Two judges, one for dogs and one for bitches. And this looks a beautiful winner. The Golden Retriever, developed by the first Lord of Tweedmouth, who crossed wavy coated retrievers with a Tweed Water Spaniel to create a symmetrical, balanced, powerful retriever. The first breed club was established in 1911, and uh, on the Goosecan estate of Lord Tweedmouth, they still hold shows there now. They have a pilgrimage to their place of birth and uh, go there. This one going beautifully. I'm very impressed by this. Lovely top line, great tail carriage, feminine head, lovely quality. This is a breed which makes wonderful family companions. This is four-year-old Lilibet, our golden retriever best of breed. We now move on to the Labrador, our second top entry in this group, just behind the golden retriever, which you've just seen. There were 519 Labrador Retrievers here today, and we're looking for a dog with substance but in no way overdone. They're always popular due to their versatility, but they originated as a fisherman's dog in Newfoundland in the 16th century when they'd helped to retrieve nets and lost lines and also to pull carts of fish. They were brought to this country by fishermen and tradesmen coming from Canada and they were taken up by the uh, English gentry as working dogs and bred with some other retrievers and here now the most popular working gun dog. And they have some distinctive features, don't they? So that otter tail, the really weather resistant coat. Yes, it's a thick otter tail, densely coated, double coat and again this strong muzzle for retrieving power. The Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever from the icy waters of Canada. This is a tolling breed, which means it's a lure dog. It attracts game within the range of the gun. This is a two and a half year old Huey, a dog from the Netherlands. He's won over there and also competed in working competitions. Coming only in this rich red and white color, some white markings are desirable but not essential. We see some white on the feet, the chest, and perhaps the tip of the tail and a little on the head. That high tail action, the wagging tail action, is what is what is said to attract the game towards the lakeside, where they can be uh, targeted by the guns.
the springy, jaunty movement of the Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia Duck Toller. On the table, we have the first of our Spaniels, the American Cocker. The most glamorous the of the Spaniels here. This is our American Cocker. There were 85 of them here today. This is a five-year-old dog called Tango. He's a big winner. And remember, this breed is the real showman of the gun dog group. He hails from the English Cocker, one of them being exported in the 19th century to America. The breeders there took them along a different line with more coat, a slightly different head, and they were bred to retrieve quail, a smaller game bird. So they are smaller with a shorter muzzle. And they have a slightly more domed skull at the top as well, don't they, when you look at them? Now, they are very stylish on the move. They have this sloping top line, which they should keep on the move, and the tail carriage is higher than the English cocker. It comes above the level of the back, striding out very stylishly. This one has campaigned in America, and it's actually won a gun dog group in America under me, and he is a very good dog. Lovely to see him winning the breed here today. The smooth, effortless movement of the American Cocker. Ian Layfield is our club of Spaniel judge today and from an entry of 60. Now one of the heavyweights of the Spaniel family, the Clumber Spanley Spaniel. The breed takes its name from Clumber Park in Notting Nottinghamshire, the home of the Duke of Newcastle. One theory is that the breed came to him as a gift from a French duke, worried about the French Revolution and sent his dogs to the Duke of Newcastle. This is a two and a half year old dog called Brune from Somerset, a big winner here already, five group wins under his belt. Coming only in this white color with lemon markings or orange markings, they are, should be long in the body, substantial, but not over heavy. They have to retain their working ability and they were bred to go through thick cover. They could, with their substance, they could get through deep cover. But despite that size and substance, they should have effortless drive, move straight fore and aft. And they have a lovely dark amber eye when you see them close up as well. This slight rolling action which comes from the deep body and shorter legs. Our third largest entry in this gunfall group is the Cocker Spaniel. There were 421 Cocker Spaniels here today and the breed has won best in show at Crufts seven times before. Could this two and a half year old female, Adriana, be the next to do that? This really is the Merry Cocker with an ever wagging tail and a happy temperament. The name comes from its original function this is a blue roan, uh, one of the many colours. The judge, just looking at the rib cage there, they have to be big ribbed and short coupled to give it this bustling action. And this clean head with soft muzzle and a really endearing expression. These are great little movers, these dogs, really covering the ground despite their size. And the tail should be carried level. And of course, it should always have a wag. With this cobby body, I have this bustling, busy action, as we see here. Very happy to be here, raring to go. This one is an import from Ukraine. The Mike Masters here handling, the co-owner, has been very successful and has had champions in many colours in the breed. Very skillful and clever breeder. She's very keen to go. Gentlemen, your best of breed cocker spaniel, number 846. The Merry Cocker there, our best of breed winner. Now the English Springer Spaniel, the highest on the leg of all the land spaniels. They get the name Springer Spaniel because before guns were invented, they were used to flush game into nets. And then when the hunters sent them forward, they sprang forward, hence the English Springer. Now you may have seen this dog before if you're an avid viewer of Crufts because it has won the Young Kennel Club Stakes final here two years in a row. So could she take it one better and win the actual gun dog group today? 
She's had a long, she's had a long show career and still loving it. This long striding action, they should have a forward stride, forward swing of the front leg to give it this distinctive action. And this is a liver and white, the most popular of the colors. The four legs there swinging straight from the shoulder, really Next unique gait of the English Springer. Panel. There was an entry of 70 for Judge Anne Harvey. A noble sporting dog built for activity and endurance is how the standard describes the field spaniel. This is four-year-old Walter from Portsmouth, our best of breed winner. And that head should convey the impression of high breeding. Now, this is a breed which is a story of survival. After two world wars, they were almost extinct. And they needed an, uh, to cross with a cocker spaniel and a springer spaniel to keep the breed going and that was as more recent as the 1960s so a story of survival here now we saw the cocker really powering the field has more of a long unhurried stride with the level back and the tail carried relatively low yes it should have a sort of dignified action okay and there's wonderful nobility in the long fine muzzle clean oval shaped almond shaped eyes and a very happy one here the long and hurried stride there of the field spaniel. And here, the Irish water spaniel, coming from the famous kennel, the staining kennel of Judith Carruthers. This one is a big winner, top winner in the breed last year, best in show at the club show. Great success, and again, continued here today. In fact, this is her 17th challenge certificate here and only four years of age. The judge is looking for a wide dome skull, a relatively long muzzle, but always a really alert dog. It's thought that there is poodle in the background, which is where, where it gets its head shape from and its coat texture. This curly, slightly oily coat, which gives it protection in the water. Underneath that, big barrel ribs to give it flotation. And that hairless tail, it is rat-like, isn't it? That is how it's described. And that's the natural pattern of it. it. There's no hair on the end of the tail, yes. They're great clowns as, as a breed. They, one of the books written about the breed is called A Bundle of Rags in a Cyclone, and that captures their rather wild, wild, effervescent temperament. The clown of the group there, the Irish Water Spaniel. Here we have five and a half year old Rodders here from Cumbria, tri triumphed in the Sussex Spaniels, beating 60 other dogs today. They were developed to work in dense cover, so they're low to the ground, thick skinned, and powerfully built. And you'll see a characteristic rolling when they move. They come only in this rich golden liver colour, the, the coat going paler at the tips. Strong head, soft muzzle, and this long rib cage. And they have a you know, unique bark, don't they, that helps their handler to keep track of them when they're working. It's a big winner. Top Sussex in 21, 22, and 23. There is a theory that there was some basses in the background of it. It's called the Sussex Spaniel because it was developed on the Rose Hill Estate near Hastings. Mr. Fuller, the patriarch of the breed developed it there the Sussex Spaniel judged today by Patsy Hollings whose gun dogs are famous worldwide especially her Weimaraners we'll see one later in the group and here is the Welsh Springer best of breed winner today coming from an entry of 150 dogs and a remarkable victory because this is owned by the same people who have this Sussex Spaniel. So they've had best of breed in both of their breeds today, a great achievement. And this a big winner despite a relatively young age, two and a half year old female called Tilly, but already has 18 challenge certificates to her name, 10 of them with best of breed. Very stylish, coming only in this chestnut and white. We saw the English Springer earlier. The Welsh Springer is a little bit smaller, slightly lighter in its head. 
and again a great worker for flushing and retrieving game it was once known as the welsh cocker and it's thought that this color the welsh springer spaniel contributed to the orange and white and lemon and white color in breeding cocker spaniels smooth powerful movement there of the welsh springer spaniel really covering the ground one of the lesser known of the gun dogs, this is the Spanish water dog, a really multi-purpose gun dog with a woolly coat. This is Sancho, a three-year-old dog who's here from Poland where he's already a big winner. That distinctive coat has to be clipped regularly. And they are not only a gun dog, but they're versatile breed and used for fi with fishermen bringing in the nets and also on the farm as a herding dog. So that's versatility for you. And the judge really getting the hands under the coat to feel the planes and the construction of this dog it should have a level back, a short muscular neck and a really deep chest. And this density of coat, very important. But again, a solid dog under the coat. The brisk driving movement there of the Spanish water dog best of breed. Now we talked about Patsy Hollings and the Gunnolt Weimaranas. Here is the best of breed winner today from 107. And this one is the top gun dog in the country last year and a best in show winner, all breed. So he's got great form here, great track record. He's five years old, a dog called Hendrix, and he has 43 challenge certificates to his name. They were known as the Grey Ghost because of that distinctive colouring, and their eyes are shades of amber and blue-grey. Coming from the Weimar Republic, it's something a dog owned by the nobility, and it uh, was kept retained for the nobility and not for the working classes. We now come to our final Very stylish, striding out well, this gaunt, noble head. And finally, representing the import register, this is a Portuguese pointer, so a breed you may not have seen before. Their heritage dates back to Iberian hunting dogs, and they're a hunt, point and retrieve, so multi-purpose. They should be almost square. That head's very distinctive with a well-defined stop and a square muzzle. Only coming in this rich golden colour with some white markings. They were a heavier build than the pointer we saw earlier, but they also have this concave muzzle which tips the nose up with big nostrils to take in the scent. This is a three-year-old dog called Zanti from down the road in Worcester. Our judge has seen all of the best of breed winners in the gun dog group, but who will make her shortlist? And so here we go with our gun dog group shortlist. Now, shortlist, she's a lady of decision, she's calling in her shortlist. The first one in is the Bracco Italiano. In comes the Hungarian Vizsla, the Irish Red and White Setter and the Irish Setter. The large Munsterlander coming in there. And also the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Big winner, that one. The Golden Retriever, yes, very oh, popular. That your eye, didn't it, Frank? And the Nova Scotia Duck Toller. Now, where's she going? In the Spaniel family now. Who's getting called in? It's the She's English there. Springer Spaniel, her own breed. And the Weimarana, Top Gun Dog last year. Some big winners in that shortlist, Frank. So this is uh, shortlist time, time to see them go again. This is where it could make the decision. The handlers have to stay calm as well, so it doesn't travel down the lead to make the dogs a little bit nervous. They have to be at ease. And showing the longevity of the gun dogs, we have two veterans in here, starting with the Bracco Italiano, eight and a half year old Jeffrey. 
and this athletic, stylish action which has made the breed so popular in the show ring all around the world. A noble dog. The Hungarian visitor coming out now. Moderate in build, lighter, gaunt, this lovely russet coat, full of quality. This is four-year-old Vashta, a female, described as a diva by her owner. The first of our setters, this is the red and white setter, Arthur, a four-year-old show champion. Coming from County Durham, he's been a big winner, he's won at Crufts before. And sadly one of the vulnerable breeds. Now the raciness of the Irish setter, this one also a big winner, a lot of challenge certificates won by this one. This is four-year-old Larry and we're looking for a dog that is racy, balanced, full of quality. So this is our dual purpose gun dog here, a full champion, our large Munsterlander. And nice to see it making the group. Find this. It's, it's not a glamorous dog, it's a real functional working dog. So good to see it making the final cut here. And here's one that's a real worker too. It's the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Everything built for work and survival. That substance, that coat, and this strength throughout. This one already has 20 challenge certificates to his name, a five-year-old Gus from Lincolnshire. Now, Frank, this caught your eye, I think, yeah. a golden well, retriever. Well, it's a breed I'm very fond of. My family owns one. I know what wonderful characters, but this is a picture of symmetry and balance, the two essentials for the breed, and this softness of expression. I like it very much. This is four-year-old Lilibet from South Wales. I think she's definitely caught the commentary box eye there. And so is this one, because it's a lovely Nova Scotia duck toddler, really striding out, the higher tail carriage wagging, very smart, this lovely colour, it's full of quality, and this wedge-shaped head, this alertness, and obviously devoted to its owner, going really well. This is a two-and-a-half-year-old Huey here, showing from the Netherlands today. Now, we said that this dog has twice won the Young Kennel Club Stakes Finals here, but this is our English Springer, Nancy, our second veteran in the group, Frank. Yes, indeed. She's had a great career and she'll be very used to this main arena because she's had lots of successes there. She's just tiring a little bit there, I thought, but let's see. And, of course, to be picked out by an English Springer specialist as the judge, a great accolade. But here's the form dog, the Weimarana Gunnolt Hendricks. A really big winner, 43 and challenge certificates to his name. And looks in really fit, muscular condition there, and a gleaming coat. So, Frank, aside from the Goldie. <laughs> so, well, I think, uh, I love the Golden Retriever. I think the, the Varm Runner has gone very well tonight. I like the Vizsla, and I like the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, too. That's it. Ah. Have we got a winner? But our winner of the Gundog Group is Hendrix, the Weimarana. Show champion, Gunnold Hendrix, five-year-old dog. And Frankie's won so much. <laughs> and here's another big winner coming up second, the Irish setter. You'll be pleased with that one, Laura. I am. I'm absolutely thrilled. Blake there showing in the ring. This is four-year-old Larry. Look, look, oh, the golden yay. retriever, marvellous. Getting a massive cheer there for that gorgeous Goldie coming in third. This uh, is Lilibet. A great debut into the big time, yes? And the Irish red and white oh, setter brilliant. takes fourth place. Fantastic for the breed there. One of our vulnerable British and Irish breeds, the red and white setter. This is four-year-old Arthur. But there we have our champion in the Gundog group at Crufts going through to best in show on Sunday, Gunnolt Hendricks. Very relaxed, very happy there, standing beautifully and wagging its tail for the owner, David Olcorn. And the breeder, the Hollings, they are top breeders for the every breed, aren't they, this year? They're uh, for the 18th time, yes, very clever breeders. <laughs> They've let lots of good stock go to other owners, and uh, here's one of them.
Second there, we have Larry, the Irish setter. Blake Trotter, the handler, right, looking very happy. Larry looks very, very happy with himself, doesn't he? Third, that beautiful golden retriever, Lily Bet. And great, great cheers for that, and what a marvellous day she's had. Fancy bringing your pet dog, your pet golden retriever, and beating 500 others to get here. Fantastic. Look at that happiness. That's what it's all about. Look at that. And fourth, of course, still incredibly impressive. It's our Irish red and white. This is Arthur. We're going to see a lap of honour, so please let's have a big cheer. So Hendrix is going to take a lap of honour. He will be joining Elton, the French Bulldog, and Rafa, the Papillon, in best in show here on Sunday. So the competition is hotting up for best in show. We'll see you back tomorrow for Super Saturday here at Crufts with the working and pastoral groups to be decided.